Welcome to Sewing Parts Online, the family-owned business that has been providing quality sewing machines since 2008. Our mission is to help you bring your creative visions to life, and we believe that starts with having the right sewing machine. Quilting, embroidery, serging, crafting, Sewing Parts Online has got you covered. You supply the creativity, we supply the sewing machines. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day three of So Creative Live National Sewing Month celebration. Sadly, today is the last day of our event, which is a bummer, but it's okay because the last day of our event also means that it's the biggest day of our event because we are giving away a $10,000 sewing room makeover. And for those of you who have been joining, you already know all about that, but if today is your first time tuning in, Yes, we are giving somebody a total sewing room makeover. So let me show you what's in that. We're super excited. All of our sponsors donated some really, really good prizes. Uh, we have, first of all, we have to talk about the 16X manual long arm machine. So if you're somebody who has dreamed of getting a long arm one day, but it's just outside of your reach, you might win one today. And you can't have a long arm machine without a frame. So our good friends at the Grace Company donated a QD frame to go with that machine. Our friends over at Arrow said, hey, why don't we donate a Bandicoot sewing cabinet and a sitting chair? Sitting chair, sewing chair. Everybody loves those Arrow sewing chairs. They have storage. They're great for lumbar support. Our friends over at Baby Lock donated some Madeira thread and a stabilizer kit. And then we also have a pair of Chris's quilt blocks. So I think it's a pretty great prize. But you're probably wondering, well, how do I win the prize? Well, this is how. With an Orifil So Creative Live thread kit. So every hour, we're gonna be giving away one of these thread kits. And if you win the thread kit, we're gonna put your name and a number on the thread kit. At the end of the event, we're gonna raffle off all those numbers and whoever whoever's name is on the number that was picked wins the grand prize. So in order to win these Orifil thread kits, you're gonna watch the segment. And at some point during the segment, a surprise sewing word is gonna pop up on the screen. You're gonna run over to the chat and you're gonna type it in. Now, people have been asking, do I have to have it in all caps? Do I have to do it multiple times? And the answer is no. The words just have to match. It doesn't matter if it's capitalized and you only have to do it once. But if you want to do it more than once because you're just so excited about it, we are totally fine with that. We think it's fun. So with that said, I'm going to uh, pop up my co-host, Alex. Alex, are you ready to come up? Okay. Let me get her up on screen. So this is my co-host, Alex. She's been helping me run the back end. She's been watching all your comments. She has been working with all our educators to get them on screen at the right time. She's been making sure the audio works and she has been killing it because she is a rock star. So Alex, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling really great, Brian. This has been so much fun. And I've said it 10,000 times, but you've just, you've been killing it up there. Oh, thank so you. We're, we're both just having a blast back here. Well, I have to thank Alex for uh, putting up with me in the morning because yesterday so the first day i you know this is my first time hosting these events so i wasn't prepared for the amount of talking i didn't realize how strenuous it was going to be on my voice so i came in yesterday at like six o'clock i was like alex are you gonna feel weird if i do vocal warm-ups and she was like no go for it and so i was like okay so i typed into youtube i i, I typed male vocal warm-ups and i just started wailing like i like a ghost or something. And I kept thinking to myself, this poor lady, like she has to put up with me in my madness. But I am so grateful to have you by my side, Alex. And I think we're going to have a fantastic day. I agree, Brian. And I don't mind the vocal warm ups as long as you don't mind the treadmill that I'm on every day behind the desktop. <laughs> I don't mind it at all. Okay. So, Alex, why don't we pull up our schedule so everybody can see what kind of classes and demos we have today? Okay. Okay. Let me make it a little bit bigger so I can read it. Okay, so the first segment of the day today is one I'm really excited about. It is going to be a free class on how to make polar fleece fingerless gloves with our friend, Trisha Camacho. She has joined us a few times. She did our social circle. She did So Creative Live, Spring Social, and uh, we had her on our podcast. And we love working with Trisha. She's an incredibly talented educator and pattern drafter. She's done some really, really cool things with costume making. So I'm excited for you guys to spend an hour with her and learn how to make some stuff. And 
she actually has her own uh, pattern making class. She has a website called creativecostumeacademy.com and she'll tell you some more about that. So if you like what you learn from her and you wanna learn more about pattern drafting, then you definitely wanna check out her website. After Trisha comes on, we have a new friend, Kelly from Juki. She's gonna be showing us the DX4000 QVP, which if you were here yesterday, you heard me talk about that machine. It is like a spaceship. It is so advanced and it is so cool and the deals on it are amazing. So. Definitely tune into that one if you've been wanting to see, even if, you know, if you're not looking for a machine that fancy just yet, and you just want to see, you just want to see everything that it can do, feel free to just pop in and hang out with us. After Kelly comes up, we are going to have another new friend, Hannah. She is from Modistra Sews. She is a garment sewer, and she is going to be giving us her tips and tricks for sewing collars. We all know that when we're sewing garments, some of the more finicky parts can be frustrating, especially for us beginners. So collars and sleeves and stuff like that. So uh, she's gonna be giving her best tips for sewing perfect collars. After Hannah comes up, our friends from the Grace Company are gonna be back and they are showing us the Cunique 13 Little Rebel. And if you have been seeing anything online about that Little Rebel machine, you know that it's pretty unique. So the Little Rebel is not only a piecing machine, but it's actually also a sit down quilter with a built-in stitch regulator. And it's also a long arm machine that you can put on a frame. So that's really cool. They, I, I don't know many machines on the market that can do all three of those things. And it's got a huge 13 inch throat space uh, and it's throat space is eight inches tall, I think. It's, it's pretty cool. So they're gonna come in and they're gonna show us all about that new machine. After the Grace Company, we have our friend Amanda Mateo, who is a small business owner and TikToker. The name of her business and her TikTok is Uniquely Mateo. She, she is the queen of jelly roll rugs. She actually offers some free, uh, free content online, and she has a private class that you can sign up for, a month-long class on Facebook. And she does different classes each month. So one month, she'll do the jelly roll Christmas tree skirt. One month, she'll do the, the giant jelly roll circle. This class, since it's a free class, is gonna be how to take your existing Jelly Roll rug and split it into two. After she comes up, we have our friend Chris Marchini with Rose City Originals. He is an extremely talented quilter and builder of community. Uh, if you've seen any of his content online, you know he likes to do community quilts and he just is has a very unique perspective on the art of quilting. And he's gonna be coming up and showing us how to manage your scrap pile make crumb quilts and be more sustainable and resourceful as a quilter. I'm really excited about that event because I, I have not gotten too much into my scrappy quilts yet. I'm, you know, I'm still building up my stash in general. So I'm my, my mount scrap more is slowly, slowly piling up. So after Chris Marchini comes up, we have Richard Tharp from baby lock. He's going to be showing us the baby lock Sashiko machine, which if you know anything about Sashiko, it's a, it's a Japanese hand embroidery technique. Um, it's really popular, uh, especially in quilting. I saw a bunch of it at QuiltCon. Uh, people were using it left and right, and it's a truly beautiful uh, element that you can add to your quilt to give it some more texture and dimension. Um, the Sashiko machine is specific to Baby Lock. There's no other machine in America uh, that that can do the same stitch as the Sashiko machine. Um, and it, it looks pretty close to the regular hand. In fact, I can't tell the difference. I'm sure some people who have been around a lot longer than I can tell the difference, but I, in general, it, it is such a beautiful stitch and it looks almost exactly like the hand stitch. So after that, of course, is the moment that we've all been waiting for. We're gonna do a wrap up at the end of the day where we're gonna go through all of the pricing from the entire event, kind of recap on what we learned, and then we are going to do our dream sewing room giveaway. So that's all very exciting stuff. And let me put myself back on screen. And I'm super excited for the day. And uh, I'm super excited for the weekend because that means that I get to go home and uh, sew a little bit and put all the knowledge that I learned from all the educators like Stephanie when she came on yesterday uh, and uh, Ellie the Quilter. All the people that have, that have come on have inspired me to do some sewing this weekend. So I'm going to try out some of their techniques. With that said, I have a couple people to say hi to and then we're going to pull Tr uh, Trisha up. So I just want to say hi to the people who have joined us for quite a few events. I can't say hi to everybody, uh, but I do wanna say hi to a handful of our, our regulars. Uh, Pamela Tinkle, good morning. We are so excited that you're back. You have been coming onto these events for I think about a year now. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do remember seeing your name at almost every single event. 
Heidi Varden, good morning. We're super excited that you're back and we're we're happy that you won one of the thread kits. Maybe you'll be the one that wins the uh, Dream Sewing Room giveaway. Uh, Rita, I have to say a special thank you to Rita because she's been coming to this event specifically and she's been very encouraging in the comments and I'm so grateful for all the positive feedback that she has. It, it helps me keep going to hear her saying that we're doing such a good job. Um, so I'm gonna say hi to one more person and that's Quilty Katie. Katie, we're glad that you're here and we see you on Facebook, we see you on TikTok and we're appreciative that you come to our event. So we hope you're having a good morning. All right, so maybe I'll say hi to some more people later this later today if I get a chance, but I think it's time to bring Trisha Camacho up. What do you think, Alex? Yeah. All right, let's bring her up. Hi, Trisha. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but we need the table. Oh. So uh, we forgot to message you. We figured out a way to do it. We, oh. <laughs> we'll give you a little behind the, uh, behind the scenes tea for the viewers. Trisha uh, and us have been meeting together to do like these tech run throughs and we've been having trouble with our audio. But this morning, Alex did some research and she figured out how to make it work without having to bring both cameras up at the same time. So oh, amazing. Anyway, with that said, we are so excited that you're with us. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell people a little bit more about you? Sure. Um, my name is Trisha. I call myself your pattern nerd friend. <laughs> um, I really love pattern making and pattern drafting. That's mainly what I teach, but why would we make patterns without sewing? So um, my sewing knowledge is I've been working professionally for over 20 years in the entertainment industry, making costumes for big theatrical productions. So that's where a lot of my knowledge comes from. Um, and so I have kind of a different approach to a lot of things, but I love creating and I love sharing it with others. And so, yeah, that's why I love working with you guys and making fun stuff and sharing, sharing about how to do some cool things. And my thing is, it doesn't, I, I know a lot of people when they hear pattern making, they get scared and they're like, oh, that's like too intense for me. And so my whole mission in life is to bring fun and joy to learning about pattern making because I feel like it's such a superpower um, for everyone to learn that it helps you with fitting. It helps you with creating things. We're going to do simplistic um, pattern making today, you know, in making these gloves. So uh, yeah, I'm just excited to be here. Well, we're super excited to have you. And of course, I, I want you to know, <clears throat> excuse me. So me and my my friend, Deb, we are making uh, button up shirts out of quilting cotton um, mm -hmm. for, for me to wear on camera and stuff. Because, you know, I, I feel like there's not a lot of really cool, unique shirts. So why not just make one that's fit specifically to you? And yeah. we are, she, we, we, she finished one and she did a fantastic job. <clears throat> Deb, if you're watching, the shirt looks beautiful. But we were looking at the pattern and we we're like, what are all these marks mean? And I'm like, that's a dart. And Trisha says it's all about the dart. So I know that this is important. <laughs> I know we have to put this in the pattern. So thank it's you. It's all about the dart. <laughs> you were there with us in spirit while we were trying to figure it out. So thank you very much. That makes me happy. <laughs> all right, Trisha, I'm going to let you go ahead and take it away. And if you need anything, just holler my name and I'll come up, okay? Okay. Thanks, Brian. Well, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to have you here today. Um, so I wonder, I wonder why it's like that, Alex. Um, I thought I would be able to fill the whole screen. Interesting. Um, anyway, hi guys. So I'm here today. I'm going to share with you how to make these fingerless gloves, which I've been calling them, but they're actually kind of like fingerless mittens. We don't have, <laughs> we don't have fingers, but they're super warm and cozy. I actually made these uh, for some gifts for Christmas one year, just cause I had another thing that I made like these cozy vests that I made and I wanted a little something to go with them. So I made these for some friends. They were really easy to make and I make them with fleece and like just that polar fleece that goes on sale this time of year usually. And then I thought to trim it and edge it with the fabric that matched their, their little gifts that I gave them besides this. You don't have to do this like edging like this. It could all be one same color of that same color fleece, but um, they're really fun. So that's what we're gonna be making today. And that's what I'm gonna show over on my camera. I don't know why I'm trying to see if I switch it the other way. Maybe we can we can see it better like this. Um, so 
we're going to start with looking at our polar fleece. Yeah, and we can make that bigger. Thank you, Doug. Um, so I just have enough here. It really doesn't take tons of fabric. The first thing is you don't need a whole lot of this. So, so it takes about half a yard of the main fabric. So let's just look at my little example again. So if you're going to do a contrast color like I have here where we have the contrast at the wrist and the contrast along the top, then, um, you know, you really only need like less than a quarter of a yard for these contrast pieces. And then I would say you could probably get away with a quarter of a yard with the main pieces or at least a half a yard um, or at most a half a yard, I should say. So and the reason I say that there's a little bit more for the main, this is two layers of polar fleece. I just wanted it extra cozy. I wear these, like I said, they, they're great for gifts, but I also wear them like when we go see hockey games, <laughs> you know, anytime you need a little extra warmth. And the great thing about them is that they don't, you know, have the fingers in the way so I can still play on my phone and do all of that, but I'm nice and warm. Um, and if you did want to make fingerless gloves, the last class I taught when the spring social for sewing parts, um, the, the spring event that we did is I taught how to make gloves with fingers. So if you wanted to do a true fingerless glove, you could uh, visit that class and just not do the, the fingers all the way out. So looking at our main fabric, this is our polar fleece. You want to make sure, you know, polar fleece kind of stretches in two ways but it definitely stretches more in one direction so you want to make sure that the most stretch is going around your hand and that's kind of a general rule for any time you're working with stretch is that you want the stretch to go around the body so when you're cutting out things and when you're doing things that's what you want to make sure of i'm using the back side of this polar fleece and i can tell that because it's a little bit like nubbly more more nubbly is that a real word i don't know <laughs> it's it's got that kind of more pilly texture on the back and it's more smooth on the front um so we're going to start very much the same as we did with the gloves if you were a, if you joined us for that class and we're just going to trace our hand remember you know thanksgiving back in grade school where you trace your hand we don't need the whole full feathers um we do that for the regular gloves so you can just kind of like the shape of what you would want your fingerless mittens to be um, and we're just going to trace around it i love using this chalk pencil for this kind of thing and i know they sell it at sewing parts online and the great thing about these is they come with all these different colors um, which helps out a lot depending on what, what color fabric you're using so i love these little chalk pencils and i know they also sell these at sewing parts online too this is another kind of chalk so any kind of chalk that you find helpful i might try this one i think it might show up better but we'll see so you want to have your hand where the stretch is going around your hand and just lay it down and i'm going to have my thumb kind of pointed more out and i'm just going to trace i don't want to get like super up close to my hand, I want to give myself a little bit of room, but not, you know, too far away. So I'm just tracing around my hand the shape that I want. And guess what? If you've been afraid of pattern making, you are making a pattern right now. I mean, <laughs> it's a simple pattern, but you know, that's all it is, is creating shapes that fit what we want to create, right? So just pointing that out since I am a pattern nerd and all. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if you guys can really see this. It's it's hard to to have it show up, but hopefully, let me see when I take my hand away if you can really see. So I'm really only because remember with this example, I have this band that's going on the bottom. And even if you were doing this all in one fabric, I would still do that band as a separate piece. So really, I only need this main piece to come to like right at my wrist because then I'll make that band that goes beyond that. All right, so what I do when I'm tracing this out too, and I don't know that you guys can see it because it's so dark, but I give myself like little hash marks where I want that glove to stop. So I know when I take my hand away, you guys can kind of see it, right? Um, where I'm gonna stop, let me, yeah that glove oops 
And here's the cool thing about this chalk is I just broke that tip off. And it's like a mechanical pencil, but with chalk. <laughs> I just add a little bit more chalk and then I'm good to go. All right, so I've kind of got the shape there and I just kind of finish it up with my ruler and then connect those hash marks, if you will. And whenever I make these, at least on my hand, and your hand might be different, it seems like it always kind of grows a little bit longer on this side. So when I trace it out, it looks like it's kind of uneven, but I'm going to leave it right now because I think that actually will work better for me. But you'll learn. They're so easy and fast to make. You know, you can make a couple and kind of test out what really is going to work for you. But I just draw in the shape just like this. And then because this is what I want the finished shape to be, I need to add a little bit more for seam allowance. And you could get very technical and add like a quarter inch is probably all you need with your ruler, or you can just eyeball it. The great thing about having something that stretches is you don't need to be super duper precise. And since this piece is gonna basically match to itself, you know, it's not like it has to match into a different shape and the seams have to align, this is all going to align with itself. So I just kind of added, I didn't add seam allowance to the top and to the thumb, just because that's where I want it to finish. And I'll add that trimming if you want, or I'll show you where we don't have to add that trimming. So once you've got it traced out, then you just cut it. And if you are a scissors person, you can totally use scissors. I like rotary and this is a self-healing mat table. Love it. So that's what I'm using. And you just cut that out, that shape out. So this is, this is the shape of my glove. And then because I want two layers, so you would actually wanna cut out four glove shapes like this. Um, so I'm gonna do two layers. So I need, two layers for the top can we see okay <laughs> I saw my camera froze maybe it didn't freeze for you guys but um, you want two layers for the top of the glove and two layers for the bottom of the glove so make sure you cut two the exact same way and then the other two you cut the other you know the other direction the We've got, we've got a hand cut this way. Make sure you cut the other one that way, right? Um, so you've got the right sides on the right sides. But I'm just, I'm not even tracing it. I'm just going to cut around what I have here. Super easy and fast. Like this. And then... So we've got those pieces and I actually already have the other side cut for me. So if you were doing this, then you would want to cut, you know, the other direction, like I just mentioned. So let's talk about now we have the main body. Let's talk about this cuff that we have. So this is actually a wool that doesn't have a lot of stretch, but I, I think I would start with these with having the stretch. This is just what I had left and because I made it for me and it wasn't a gift, I just work, worked with it. <laughs> but if you wanted to do your glove all out of the same fabric, you can totally do that. But um, I made mine about two and a half inches long is my band here. So I'm thinking of that and it's folded. In this case, I used another piece of uh, fleece just because I, I was running out of fabric. But so if it's two and a half, where's my measuring tape? Show, I can show, oh, it's on my neck, of course. So I can show you my measuring tape math. So if this is two and a half inches long and I need it to fold on itself. So instead of doing math, I'm always a fan of using my measuring tape instead. So I'm gonna fold this in half. So that means I want five inches so that I can fold have a finished cuff that wide. And then I'm gonna add another quarter inch for seam allowance on both sides. So I'm gonna do five and a half inches, like long so that I can fold it up. And then how wide we make it um, depends on not so much what the shape of your glove is, but I would measure around your wrist. 
and you don't want it to be or you don't need it to be super tight like seven and a half inches would be good maybe i'll cut it at eight for myself that's what i've been cutting them as um, because i'll have that seam allowance again that i want so the shape i'm looking for is five and a half inches wide by eight inches long so i can make this piece um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out of my contrasting fabric. So I have this fun, this is actually like a sweatshirt material um, that matches a hoodie that I made. <laughs> so I love it. Um, so I'm going to use this. And so I will just draw right on to this fabric. Luckily, this ruler is eight inches long. And again, we want that stretch to go around the wrist. You know, there's more, there is a little bit of give going up and down, but we want that to be our eight inch measurement. So my ruler's eight inches. I can just mark eight inches here. Again, I don't know that you guys will be able to see this too well because it's such a busy print, but I'm just drawing that right on there. And then I want it to be five and a half inches long. So I'm just going to draw five and a half here. And if I, you know, I'm, I don't, I want you guys to see everything. So I don't want to take the time to like switch to a different color and do it from the backside might be easier to see, but I'm just drawing that eight inch by five and a half inch rectangle. That's all that is. So you guys probably can't see, but let me cut it out. So there we go. That's our little rectangle. So you see what I mean? This will become the cuff. Like, like so. Um, so we've got that cut and we have our hand cut. Next thing we want to think about is the edging. If you're doing the edging, you don't have to do the edging with this. And I will tell you, edging that thumb is the most trickiest part. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you don't feel up to doing that contrast along the top, you don't have to. I'm going to show you how you can finish it off without having to do that. So, but if you are, I want to show you how to do that. So I would measure, and maybe we can go with this one so we can see where I added that extra seam allowance. So I'm just gonna measure where I would be sewing it minus what I'm gonna use to close this up with the seam. So I'm measuring with my measuring tape, why? So I don't have to do math and I can just fold it because we need that edge to go all the way around. So that gives me about seven inches is what I need to put the edge all the way around. So seven inches and sometimes I have like little notes off to the side if you know I'm throwing out a bunch of numbers but I just make notes okay seven inches for the top um, and then you can measure your thumb hole which me measuring it's about an inch and a half so what is that times two it's three inches so I need seven inches for the top and I need three inches for the thumb and then I'm gonna add a little bit for seam allowance so let's try this I'm just going to cut those pieces. And as far as how wide I make this, you really want to think about how much you want to see showing. This is about a half inch showing or three eighth inch showing. Plus also remembering we've got to get that under the machine. So having it be a little wider is, is maybe a little bit easier. You'll see when I, when I put this together, what, what you think will work for you. I've been cutting my pieces at an inch and a half. So those measurements times an inch and a half is what I would do. So I'm gonna draw with my ruler again. I'm gonna go seven and a half because I said I needed seven inches and I'm gonna think I need a quarter plus a quarter of an inch for seam allowance. There, you guys can see that, right? And because I only needed an inch and a half wide, and you do so want that stretch to go around. That's very important. That will make your life a lot easier. So I'm just drawing it on just like that. Oh, you can kind of see it, right? <laughs> so again, I had three inches for the thumb. I'm going to add, you know, a quarter inch and a quarter inch. So I'm going to do three and a half inches 
by an inch and a half and draw that on. And you would need two of each of these. Um, I already have the other one cut for my other hand so we could speed this along and you could see every step, but you would need two of, of each if you were doing the full pair of gloves. So I'm just gonna cut those out right now. Just a bunch of rectangles and your hand turkey. <laughs> Nothing too complicated, right? There we go. So we've got our two, our top and our bottom double layer of our body. We've got our finished, you know, finishing off little bias, if you will. It's not really biased, but that's the great thing about using a fabric that stretches is, you know, you don't need to worry about bias because it already has the stretch in there for you. So we have the top and we have that. And where did my cuff go? Here we go. So here we have my cuff cut out as well for your gloves. And like I said, th this and this can be the same fabric. You don't have to do these. So there's lots of different ways you can mix this up and really make it your own. So now we're going to go to sewing. And if you don't mind, I don't want to make you guys dizzy. So I'm going to ask um, Alex or Brian if we can not, I don't want to make them dizzy as I re-angle for the machine. Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> improvise. But we can still <laughs> hear you. We can talk. Okay. So uh, I want to I want to talk really quickly about uh, the So Inspired podcast. So Trisha joined us for the very first episode, and she did it with Trisha, uh, with Trisha, our Trisha, who used to be here, and Alex, um, and they talked about Trisha Camacho's. I'm going to call her Camacho because it makes it easier. We don't get mixed up with the Trisha. Sure. We talked about Camacho's, uh, how she got into uh, the costuming world. And she talks about how she worked on costumes for Cir Cirque du Soleil. She shared a pretty funny story about uh, how she was making leggings for one of the dancers in one of the shows. Uh, Trisha, do you want to just tell a, qu a quick reiteration sure. of that story? Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> yes, it was a costume that we had to, she had nude. She was supposed to look like she had nude legs, but, um, you know, we made it out of, fabric so that it was a little bit more protective but she the 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 trick that she did was actually sliding down a pole <laughs> doing these crazy acrobatics and she would rip through <laughs> her leggings every night and so we tried to do we do different fabric do we you know um try make it a little tighter a little looser um to try and make it work for her so every night it was trying to re figure out a new solution to that problem and um finally we did get something that worked but it was it was very stressful <laughs> every every um every night for dress rehearsal it was like well that looks okay but it didn't work again it ripped through or you know then we try a different material and we're like, mm, that doesn't really look as great, you know, but it works better. So yeah, it was a lot of figuring out on the fly, which is what kind of costuming is. But yeah, it, it's always fun and exciting. Say, I was just about to say, that's kind of what sewing is all about too. You just kind of figure, you Absolutely. make it work and you, figure, and you collect knowledge along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think like working in theater is kind of, I don't want to say like boot camp, but it's intensive. <laughs> it's yeah. like there's no time to uh, give up or say, well, I don't know what to do. You know, you just got to keep trying until it works. So that's kind of been my approach to sewing and pattern making. And that's why I'm like, come on, guys, we can all do it. Right. Um, so but thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I've got lots of stories like that. <laughs> I know you do. Maybe we'll sit down and have another conversation like that again someday. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. Let's get back to these gloves, though. I want to be able to show them all the good stuff. Um, thank you for buying the time. I just didn't want to make anybody dizzy as we got into the sewing part because I had to re reposition my camera. So we're going to start first, the first step we want to do. And I do just want to add a little caveat. Um, I am not in this room by myself. Uh, we still make costumes. We're working on some Disney stuff right now and some costumes for the um, Charlotte Ballet. And I have my girls uh, working. <laughs> so if you hear little noises, people at the iron, people um, sewing, that's what's going on. Um, 
so you don't think I'm doing like a million things by myself, but just to give you a little clue. So the first thing we need to do is flatline these two pieces. Like I said, if if you're doing two layers, so flatline or mounting, I think they call in the UK, um, is just making the two pieces become one piece. So you can do a basting stitch and I'm just doing a straight basting stitch for the along the sides in this little hook here at the top and along here and then for the other edges that are going around the body around the hand we may switch we'll switch to a zigzag so right now i'm just going to do a quick basing six oops i'm on zigzag sorry i was testing out stuff but i'm just catching kind of an eighth so i've got you know the seam allowance or the edge of the fabric just right there along the inner edge. So I'm trying to just do the very edge of it, like about an eighth of an inch in. Again, this is gonna be inside of your seam allowance, so you're not gonna really see that. And you don't even need to worry about back stitching. We're just kind of holding it in place. So we're gonna do this. And then in this little thumb side of the hand situation here. Then for the top, the thumb and the wrist, especially if you're not gonna do the contrasting, um, you can finish off that edge so we don't have the separating. Cause the great thing about using polar fleece is it's not gonna fray out on you. So that's a really great material. In fact, most stretch materials will not fray out on you. But if you wanted to, have this as your finish and not add the the binding the extra binding then you could finish it off this way with a with a zigzag stitch and it will still stretch and it will hold those two fabrics so i'm almost like overcasting um you know holding that together with a zigzag and what the zigzag does is it allows it to stretch so i usually start with like a stitch length of two and a half and a stitch width of two and a half so hey trisha that's just yeah donna wants to know if you could use your serger for this you absolutely could i you could use it for the top here and and like what I, this step that i'm showing you now i would still do the straight stitching for the flat lining part just because you're going to have more control um but when we get to sewing these two pieces together you absolutely could go to us to a serger we wanted to try and keep it simple in case some of our friends didn't have sergers out there, but definitely you could. Like, especially this edge, if you wanted to do like a marrow edge, I know some um, domestic machines, in fact, I have a domestic machine just for that. Um, you can do like a pearl edge, a marrow edge on, on the end. That would be really nice too. So you could do that as well and, and use that as your finish. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Brian and I talked about it. We were like, should we? I, I didn't want to, you know, throw, I want to make it so that everybody can do these, you know, even if you only have a sewing machine. Most sewing machines will have the zigzag and the straight stitch, um, even the more simple ones. So once you've got, oops, sorry, hit the camera. Once you've got that flat lined, is what I call it. Um, so this is just one piece now, right? And you would do that to both your top and your bottom. So ta-da, look at that. <laughs> I already have the other piece done. So I've done the same to, so this is also two pieces, um, flatline that together. So once you've done that, you want to put your right sides together. And remember the pilly side is the underside. This nice and smooth side is your right side. So you put those right sides together. This is where you could get in there with your serger might be easier or you can just um, use a regular machine as well. And I've been using um, Wonder Clips, new to me, thanks to um, Sewing Parts Online. They, they made sure we got some. <laughs> that works great with this fleece because it's nice um, and thick. So if you wanna just, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew, and you could just use a straight stitch for this because remember the stretch is happening in between you know, the sides. So you can use a straight stitch for this or you can serge it if you want, but 
see how thick this gets. So it depends on your serger and whether it's going to like that or not. Um, but you can also just use the straight stitch. So I'm just clipping this right now. Like so. I'm going to make sure this time I switch back to a straight stitch. And for this straight stitch, you want to make sure you're on a regular stitch. So I usually do about three, two and a half or three on mine. And I'm now going to line up the edge of my fabric with the edge of my foot. So it's more like a quarter of an inch. Again, it's it because we have that leeway with the stretch, you don't have to be super particular about your seam allowance, you know, as long as you've given yourself enough room. So I'm just stitching that together. I have to say, Brian, I do like these wonder clips for these kinds of projects. Thank you for turning those, turning me on to those. Of course, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Last time when we did the gloves, I said I, I never got around to getting wonder clips, so um, they made sure I got some. If you don't have them already, I, I've always been a pin girl and I've gotten by just fine with pins, um, but, but the wonder clips are nice. Have you uh, had a chance to check out sew tights? They're, they're little magnets, almost like the magnets oh you have on a magnet. Oh my gosh. Yes. Everyone's talking. I heard, I think it was your podcast. Did you guys do a podcast? I heard a podcast with the, the owner um, and how mm -hmm. she came up with the idea. And um, they sounded really interesting. And then my new pattern friend that I met at American Sewing Guild <laughs> conference, <laughs> she's been sharing about them on her stories and stuff on Instagram. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why do you want me to spend all my money? Because they look so cool. I have not really had a chance to look into them and try them for myself, but I'm very curious, especially because I use the rotary mat. Like I can mm -hmm. see that really working well for us. Yeah, they uh, they sent us their new rotary mat system, the magnetic one, uh -huh. and it's yeah. we we got it like a couple of days ago, so there's been no chance to unbox Check them and it stuff. Out. But you better believe the moment we're done with this event, we are unboxing and playing around with them, and yeah. we will let you know what we. Such a great okay? idea! Yes, please do. I'm I'm curious. They keep popping up. It's like the universe is telling me I need to check these things out. <laughs> so once we've got our hand stitched together, now we're seeing that we have a glove, right? Um, so we want to turn that right side out. You can try it on if you'd like. And test fit. You know, look, it's not too long on that side. I told I told you, I don't know why it ends up being that way. So See if it's nice and cozy. Um, hopefully it is. And now, like I said, if you don't want to add the the edging, like this is a very nice, you know, finish at the top. So you could you could leave it like that and not get into the trickiness that we're gonna get into here in a second. But before we get into the trickiness, let's look at our cuff while we're here. Oh no. I may have oh, it's on the floor, I see it my my long bias but it's okay so so for this cuff right this is going to be the finish of it but we need to sew these ends together so when i was saying this before it's like you want to fold it like a, a hamburger not like a hot dog <laughs> so fold it like a hamburger and we're just going to stitch and this you can also do on a serger this step here remember we gave ourselves about a quarter of an inch seam allowance or whatever you gave yourself. I'm just going to stitch along there. And then while we're here doing this step, we want our little bias pieces to be tubes as well. So I'm just going to stitch those into being round tubes as well. So with my right sides together, I'm just going to Stitch it about a quarter of an inch there. And this is something I do to speed it up. Like this is my thumb one. So I'm just gonna, without cutting, <laughs> just keep going. This is how I get things done fast in the costume world. There we go. So now all of my tubes have been created. 
then let's go back to our cuff here for a second. And we can see now starting to become a cuff, right? There we go. And just to make life easier on myself, I'm going to go ahead and baste around this. So it, you know, again, becomes kind of one piece that I'm working with. And I'm going to go back to zigzag for this just because that's where I want it to stretch. It's not that you can't do a straight stitch. It's just, um, and certain threads will help you. Uh, and if you stretch it as you go along, you can do that too. It's just, I find that a zigzag is more reliable as far as allowing things to stretch. So I always go to a zigzag. So I'm just closing that up so that it's one piece because we've already done that on the body of the hand. So it just makes it easier when we go to put those two together. Look, you guys, we're already, do you already see? I mean, we're already seeing this thing come together. We're really almost done. So the last couple things I want to show you is once you've got your cuff, um, you could add the cuff, but I want to talk about if you are doing the binding and how that works. So how I do this is I kind of, because again, we're using a stretch material that doesn't fray so i don't need to worry about the edges but what i do is i just kind of put it around the edge like so and i like to do it a little bit longer on the inside and this is again where your wonder clips will become really helpful so let me grab some of those so i line up my seam with this inside you know by the thumb with that seam there because i feel like it'll be less noticeable noticeable than being on the outside over here so I'm going to, and I'll show you what I mean by being a little uneven. So I'm just gonna set that up over here. Just like so, and you can put as many in and you could also use pins for this too. But because we're, it's so thick, you know, these, these little clips really work a lot better. We lose me for a second. <laughs> Technology's fun, isn't it? It's great because we can always connect, but sometimes we just got to let it do its thing. So I'm just glad I, I didn't come up. I, I was going to say, I'm just glad that I didn't pop up while I was doing something embarrassing, like picking my nose or something. <laughs> Hey, we're all human, <laughs> but yeah, I get it. So I have this clipped on here, but I want to show you, see how much is showing. It's about three eighths, you know, just shy of half of an inch on the outside, but on the inside, see how it's much longer inside there. And the reason for that is so that I make sure that I'm going to catch that on the inside and I'll show you what I do about that. Um, so I'm going to just start this. I won't do the whole thing, but, uh, so I usually like to start and to get in here, you know, like I said, this is the trickiest part. So this part is optional. You absolutely don't have to do this part, but to, you want to get that under your foot and you want to kind of think of it like you're laying this part flat where you're stitching. So it's kind of takes some maneuvering, but you know, in theater and costuming, we just make it work. <laughs> And I would use a zigzag again for this stitch. And this it cannot be done on the serger. If you had a cover stitch, you might be able to do it, but it's so fiddly this part, I would recommend doing it. So what I'm doing is I want the zigzag to kind of go over the edge of you know, this fabric here. And that's why I wanted it to be longer on the inside. So you just kind of, you're finishing off the edge. It's not going to fray out. So if you don't quite catch the edge, as long as you catch it, it's not going to fray out. So we're not worried about that, but it just gives it a nicer look. And that's how I was able to use the woven fabric for the gloves that I made. But just kind of maneuvering it like that. So I won't do the whole thing because I want to show you quickly. And it's, it's hard to get it to be really nice on camera. But you see how I'm finishing off that edge and then I'm catching it 
on the inside. I'm making sure I'm catching it on the inside. So the thumb is the same deal, only it's a lot smaller. So it makes it a lot harder. So you would do the same thing. Let's see how well I can do this on camera. <laughs> you can stick it in there. And so another thing to note when you're making these, when you're drawing out your hand turkey, you might wanna make your thumb a little wider just to make it easier on yourself for this. It's still gonna be cozy and you know cover up your thumb, but you know you stick it kind of in there and then you can fold it over like so, get a couple wonder clips in there. And then again, this is just so fiddly to show you guys on camera, but if you're up for it, it is possible. Obviously I just did it, but um, for my other gloves, but you kind of got to get in there enough to like hey, Trisha. get it to be flat. Yeah. Donna wants to know what width and length you're using on your zigzag. Sure, sure. Yeah, I usually start, every machine's going to be a little bit different, but I usually start with a two and a half length and a two and a half width is where I start with my machine. That seems to be at least a good place to start, but every machine is kind of different. So you got to do a little test. How you test out zigzag is, um, you know, try it on some scrap and, and stretch it. You know, if you're able to stretch it and it doesn't pop on you, then you know you've got it close enough together. You don't want it to be really long in between because the whole point of using a zigzag and why we use a zigzag is that the thread is going up and down like this in the same position. So as it stretches, that, that zigzag is able to straighten out and there's the room to do that. Whereas a straight stitch is like this and it's like, it only has so much room to pull. So your zigzag kind of allows it, the fabric to stretch without popping the thread. So if you can stretch your fabric after you've sewn your stitch length, um, then you know that that's good, you know, and it, and it doesn't pop on you. If it does pop on you, then you might need a tighter zigzag. And the reason that we try to keep it kind of narrow in the width is not so much for the popping, but just so that you're not taking up such a wide space for your seam. And so that really depends on what you're working on. So getting in this thumb piece, it's going to be really hard to do it on camera, but if you're up for it, that's kind of the idea is you want to do that. You have it longer on the inside and then you like get it under there and it takes some fiddly like to get around that thumb. That is the trickiest, hardest part. But look, just like on the cooking shows, I've already done this for us. Um, and you can see it's longer on that inside. So once you have it all sewn all the way around, you can go ahead and cut that extra away so that it's nice and clean on the inside as well. Let's do it a little bit, but I just wanted to show you. So just like that and cut that away. Again, this part is optional. Don't have to do this part if you want to make life a little easier on yourself. There's still a lot of fun. You could finish it off with that. But it does give it a really fun, you know, finish and a nice contrast. And the thumb, I did exactly the same, you know. So I just would cut that extra bit away and it's nice and finished. And I have noticed like on the thumb, you know, your binding might slide off and that's okay. You know, whatever makes it easier on you to get that thumb in there. But that part is the trickiest part. So once you have... It's at this point, like we pretty much have gloves here, right? So you have your hand part and you have your cuff part. And so I would just, you know, there's really no right side to this cuff. So if you're using a design like this, it's like, what, what do you want to have on the outside is really what you're asking yourself. So I kind of like this on the outside. So I'm going to call this my right side. Um, so you want to put right sides together. So I want to put this, that's what I want my right side inside of the glove here like this i'm gonna line my seam up with the inside of my thumb i'm just always thinking about you know how is it going to look when it's finished and again you can use your wonder clips to hold that in place or your pins that works too you don't need a whole bunch because this is going to be wide enough for us to get in there thankfully not like the thumb and still using a zigzag, but you want to go a little farther in because remember you did that flat lining and that helpful holding it in place. So you might want to 
really make sure you've got that quarter inch and you're just holding it flat onto your machine and doing that all the way around. So I am gonna do this one. So as you're sewing in the round, you just it's easier if you can, when you stop and make sure your needle's down and then you can kind of like move the circle around and reposition it, trying to make sure that whatever's in front of the sewing foot is really flat, that's gonna help you as you're doing this. So I've, I've kind of gone a little bit and then I can reposition and move around. I'm showing you this on this part because this is kind of what you do for the thumb and for this edging up here, but it's so small, it's hard to show that on camera. But yeah, you just go all the way around. And this also, this is a part where you could use your serger, but again, it is really thick. So I would, I'm a big fan of testing everything, you know, <laughs> testing everything out on some scraps and making sure your, your machine's gonna be performing how you want it to perform and make any adjustments that you need to as you go. That's, that'll, that always helps me. You know, I'm always working with different materials in my work. Um, so I'm always testing out different fabrics and materials, but you could absolutely just do this with a zigzag too. And look, my friends, and I'm using, I have a hoodie out of this, so I'm super excited to now have gloves that match. Is that not fun? And that's it. You've got yourself some gloves. That was that quick. That is so awesome, Trisha. I, there's a lot of people who really want to make these for Christmas gifts. I think this was the perfect segment. And, you know, it was your idea to do this. And I, when you first brought it up, I was like, you know, I wonder if it's too early to do Christmas gloves. And I couldn't have been more wrong. It's starting to get chilly out here, which I'm very excited. I was like, ooh, I can actually wear, like, a long sleeve today. <laughs> I know, um, right? So these are great. Like I said, this came about because I was wanting something quick and I'm like, what could I do that would be fun to wear along with this thing? But yeah, super cozy. If you use different fabric, you don't have, you know, make it as simple as you want. Simpler is complicated, get creative. Um, you could even, you know, some of you I know are big into embroidery. You could embroider something fun on the edge. You could also not use fleece. I think I may have used a, another like stretch woven as my top layer and the fleece as the inside um, to make it still cozy. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do, but super simple, right? So I, hope you guys I, I think that these would be perfect for upcycling too. If you have yes, some old sweaters that you, you know, don't, they don't fit anymore. So is there any materials that you would not recommend doing this out of? Um, if you, you want to stay away from anything that doesn't stretch because yeah. it's really the stretch that gives you more leeway um, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, I did, you know, on my original gloves, this is just a wool, you know, so I use that in the cuff, but I don't remember now it's been a couple of years. <laughs> if that's why I put the fleece on the inside, I think it may have mm -hmm. been more for warmth or the fact that I was running out of fabric, but um, it's going to restrict you a little bit more. And especially in the hand part, um, if you have something that doesn't stretch. So you really want to use you know, something with some stretch in it. And depending on, you know, fleece has quite a quite a bit of stretch, but it's not like spandex stretch. So um, really think about that when you're tracing out your hand. If it doesn't stretch so much, maybe you need to go farther away. I would probably go farther away on this edge, you know, give yourself more room when we're drawing that hand turkey um, because, uh, you know, this is gonna be tricky. And then, like I said, to help you, if you are doing this this part, um, give yourself a little bit more room here when you're tracing that handoff. Awesome. We have a couple more questions. Uh, Angela Dixon, sure. I may have missed this, uh, but does Trisha use a fleece needle in the machine or what uh, machine needle does she suggest? Is there a fleece needle? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, it's honestly, I don't remember within this machine. I, I used it the same as uh, what we did with our glove. Tutorial. I think it's mm. just a normal universal needle, but that that's where it goes back to testing again. Um, yeah. Different fabrics will react differently. I am a huge fan of testing. So I would with some scraps, even before I get started with any project that I do on anything, um, I always kind of fold up like four layers together, you know, m with my cutoffs, I would like fold this up and see and, and then stitch a little bit and make sure that it it's you know, gonna work with that material. Fleece is pretty forgiving yeah. though. Um, some spandexes are a little hard um, to get that 
so that you're not skipping stitches. But I think I just have a universal needle. I, I like the stretch needles a lot better than the ballpoint for most of the mm. stuff that I do because I don't use an, um, like a jersey most of the time. You know, a jersey yeah. fabric is woven differently. Um, so a ballpoint needle is dulled at the end so that it can push through the fibers. And um, a stretch needle and even a microtex needle sometimes for, for spandex, because the weave on spandex is so tightly woven um, that a ballpoint needle doesn't make it through. So that's gotcha. where sometimes it's a stretch needle, a microtex needle, or, or a, a universal needle that actually works better for that. So it really, it depends on what you're working with. But I think for this fleece, this is just a universal needle. Word from the wise, do a test strip first. Test, 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 always. <laughs> because okay. the last thing you want to do is you're working on some expensive fabric for some high profile client and you mess up and, you know, have to take everything out or you mess up the fabric, God forbid, um, have to figure that out. Now, I promised Irina that I would put her question up. She asked it while you were cutting your fabric out and I told her I'd put it up at the end. So sure. she wants to know, uh, about your cutting process? Um, you could do two layers. Um, I I was thinking about it when I cut this out a little differently because I was half doing some of it so that we could skip ahead. Um, I would do two layers. I probably wouldn't do more than two layers. And I wouldn't do more than two layers, especially if you're using scissors because that's mm -hmm. gonna shift on you, um, especially working with stretch fabrics. Um, and, and when you've got thicknesses, you're pushing and then it's growing. And so you could end up with varying shapes. So I would probably, you could probably do two layers at once. Um, but I wouldn't do more than that with the fleece. Ellen wants to know that in place of a zigzag, could you use a stretch stitch? You could use a stretch stitch. I'm not a huge fan of stretch stitches hmm. only because they're hard to take out they're, oh. because a lot of times it's like back and forth. Um, yeah. so if you make a mistake, um, in the theater, <laughs> in the theater world, we're always having to make alterations and make little changes to things. So anytime anyone uses like a really tiny stitch or those stretch stitches, you're like, ah, oh, now I have to take this out. So that's just ingrained in me, <clears throat> yeah. but you absolutely could use a stretch stitch for this. Awesome. Uh, we have time for one more question, it looks like. So Robin sure. wants to know if you want to make this for somebody that's not nearby, how would you go about that? So, I mean, you just have to be mindful of like, like I have pretty big hands, so I knew that this was going to work fine. You know, if you were doing it for some kids, then, then that you might want to grab a kid if you've got one close by, um, or just be mindful of who you're making it for. But because of the stretch factor, it's really lenient on sizing. Um, and, you know, so just be aware of that. Um, if you have, you know, to smaller than average hands, then I would, when you're doing that tracing out, I would just kind of add that extra space where I was saying like on this side and on this side of your pattern. Um, or, you know, see if you can borrow your spouse, spouse's hand or a good friend that might have a hand that, that you need. Yeah. But I made these for, um, you know, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law and, and I, I know they have smaller hands than I do. So I wasn't worried about it and the fact that it stretches. So just keeping that in mind. So, um, I'm going to put this question up because it's going to lead us into talking about how people can find you. So sure. there's not a pattern that you can purchase for this, but if people wanted to, a, if they wanted to make this, they could watch this back again, but also if sure. they wanted to learn more from you, how would they find you? Absolutely. So yeah, this is a very simple pattern. So no, I don't have a pattern for this because it was just kind of something I made up on the fly, which I encourage you to do, you know, and you to try, which I've just showed you how to do that. Um, but if you do want to know more about pattern making where we do have to um, pay a little bit more attention to the measurements, we're maybe not doing stretch. That is what I specialize in teaching about. But we take it in a very similar approach where it's like, you can do this. Don't be scared of, the, oh, I have to do it just right. Um, 
I have a very fun approach to how I teach, but you can find me at hello, um, creativecostumeacademy.com is my website. I'm very active on Instagram. That is my main platform. I love chatting with people in the DM. So if you're on Instagram, I'm at creative.costume.academy. I share lots of tips and tricks on there daily in my stories and also on my feed. Um, we, we talk about fitting, like fitting your your clothing to yourself and how pattern making actually helps you with that um, a lot of times and uh, you know and then there's some sewing tips in there too because like I said they go hand in hand um, and you don't need to be that's the other thing you don't need to be an advanced sewer advanced sewist to learn pattern making as long as you know what a pattern is just in case you don't that that's a pattern back there <laughs> As long as you are familiar with what a pattern is, you know what a grain line is, you've sewn, you know, some straight stitches before, you have the knowledge that you need to jump into pattern making. It is different, a different skill. I have people who are very beginners and people who are very advanced in their sewing years and um, everyone learns something new. Um, I'm also on YouTube and I do a tricky Thursday. Every Thursday I share a tip or trick um, on my longer form on YouTube. And then I have a short version that I post to Instagram. So that's at Creative Costume Academy as well. And uh, yeah, we have a free class also um, called the Free Pattern Masterclass, which is linked in my bio on Instagram. It's also on every video that I post in um, YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, and then we have a membership right now um, open right now that's available in partnership with Mimi G Style. If you know her, she's the DIY queen. Um, but that's at learnpatternmaking.com. That's called Pattern Making Academy. And we start at the very beginning learning about the amazing aspects of the dart and how that can help in so many ways. It's all about the dart. Pattern making is it's all, about, all the about the dart. dart. <laughs> We're going to make t shirts. We've decided. We should we have merch. <laughs> it's like my tagline. So, um, we focus on learning it's really can be simplified down to just understanding what the dart can do for you in, in fitting and making new designs so we start at the very beginning it's step by step it's self-paced um and it's very affordable as well so if you're ready to dive in and you thought it wasn't attainable for you you know check out my free content but you can also start learning right away awesome i'm gonna put this last one up before you sign off uh, sure. Hi, Trisha. My daughter has been a cosplayer for many years and really oh. admires your work. Y'all, if you have granddaughters, children, cousins, friends, or you do cosplay, or you want to learn how to make your own costumes, or you want to be a better sewer, go support Trisha. Go sign up for one of her classes. Sign up for the free one to check it out. She's an amazing yeah. teacher and amazing person. Trisha, we are so grateful that you spent time with us today. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. I always love coming on here. All right. You have a good rest of your day, Trisha, and enjoy your weekend. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Good luck to the winner. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, that was fun. I, I knew that people were going to love that segment, and I can tell that many of our community members are going to be making those for winter for their friends and family. I think I might even uh, try to make a swing at it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that thumb cuff. I might have to phone Trisha for some help, but we'll figure it out together. Together. Excuse me. Okay. So moving on, we have a giveaway to do, and then we're going to bring up our next educator from Juki. So Alex, do you want to go ahead and pull up the giveaway tool? Yes, I do. Okay. So this is for Aurafil thread kit number 19. So if you win this thread kit, you are entered into the grand finale of the day today. So uh, if you've been watching, you know that while we do the giveaway, we all have to drum roll. If you are watching from a place where you can't make noise, put a drum roll emoji in the chat so we know you're doing it too. All right, Alex, ready? Set, Let's go. Go. Who's it gonna be? Brigitte Field. That's awesome. Brigitte, you have been watching for quite a time and you used to come on our social circle hour. So I'm so glad that you won this segment. Okay. So let me put your name on the thread kit. Brigitte. Yeah, you're always in the comments. We love seeing your name. So this is exciting. Very, very exciting. Okay, so we will do that at the end of the day. Uh, pick one of the thread kits, but we got to get our next educator up. All right, let me pull her up. Hey, Kelly, how's it going? Good, how are you doing today? I am doing fantastic. So uh, you are, this is the first time you joining us for So Creative Live, but you have been teaching for quite some time. Do you want to tell everybody a little bit about who you are? 
Oh, absolutely. I love the sewing dis industry. I'm a garment sewer, a bag maker, and I'm learning how to quilt. So you quilters out there, bear with me today. Uh, I taught uh, quilting and textiles years ago in Wisconsin, and I've worked for many uh, reputable sewing machine companies. And uh, I love Juki because we are the largest industrial sewing machine in the world. And you find that durable, good sewing machine in our home machines too. So I'm thrilled to be with Juki as a trainer and educator. I always tell people that, you know, every, every brand has their own thing that they kind of own. And Juki owns that they take the knowledge and the experience from manufacturing the industrial machines and they apply it to their home sewing machines. And they make such fantastic machines. I personally own two Jukis. I love them. I'm super excited about the machine that you're going to show today. I've been telling everybody it's practically a spaceship. It's so fancy. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away. If you need anything, just shout my name, okay? Sounds good. Thank you, Brian. All right. Good to be here today. Thank you for having me because I'm excited to talk about the Juki Kokochi. The Juki Kokochi is our top-line computerized sewing machine that is second to none. And as you know, Juki is the largest industrial machine in the world. And we do take that technology, like Brian was saying, and put it into our home machines. So get ready, get comfortable, get a good cup of coffee or tea or whatever your drink of choice is and follow along because there's a lot to this machine. We even have wireless technology on this machine. So get comfortable because I have a lot to talk about. So this is the Kokochi. I have the extension table on it right now because it comes with a machine and I love sewing on a large flat surface, especially when I'm piecing or doing freeform quilting. I can take it off to convert it to a free arm. And I also have the accessory table that I can put on if I don't want to have on this wonderful extension tray. So you get all of this included and we'll take a deeper dive into what's included with the Kokochi. But let's first take a look at the machine. Kelly, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, something's going on with our mic settings in the StreamYard uh, and people okay. are having a hard time hearing you. I just wanted to let you know, for some reason we can't bump up your volume. Would you do us okay. a favor and uh, just try to talk loud? Absolutely. Uh, Thank you, sorry about that. No worries, thank you for letting me know early on. Can you guys hear me now? Give me a thumbs up in the uh, chat if you can. All right, let's talk so you can <laughs> let me know. So this is the Kokochi. I was saying that I have the extension table on the machine. This comes with it, but it also can be converted into a free arm. And it also comes with the free arm accessory table that you can put on too. That all comes with it. But let's take a look at the machine. There are categories of stitches and all right, we're going to try both. Okay, sounds good. Let's continue. The Kokochi has 368 stitches built in on the machine. And that sounds like an a lot, but it's super easy to navigate to get to all the stitches. It's as easy as your phone. So right up here, I have some functionality buttons I'm going to start with. I have the thread cutter. I have a built-in needle up down. I have the button that raises and lowers the feed dog. And I have the presser foot lift button. Now on this machine, I can raise a pet presser for it several different ways. It comes with a knee lift. I also have the back handle and the back handle can extend that lift higher. And I also have this fantastic button and I love using the pivot button. So when I'm turning corners, it's an easy, easy thing to do. So Kokochi in Japanese means good feeling. So I'm gonna tell you when you sew on this machine that you're gonna get a good feeling because every project's gonna be successful. I have a built-in needle threader and a drop-in bobbin. I also have 
if I have the foot control unplugged, I can actually use the button and so I don't have to use the foot control. So let's take a look at the foot control a little closer because it is one special foot control. I have a piece over here next to the foot control that I can program to do seven different functions. I can pick one, needle up down or raising my presser foot. There are several and I'll show you where you can change that setting. And then the power is over here. The Kokochi can do 1,050 stitches per minute. However, I do have uh, an adjustable speed control on the machine. So whether you want to go fast or slow on this machine is your choice. Okay. So that's kind of a tour of this part. I also have a smart feed built in. That's a built in walking foot that is actually adjustable and can work on more than just straight stitch. So we'll uh, dig deeper into that in a bit too. Let's take a look at the seven inch screen. Uh, the seven inch touch screen is wonderful and I'll tell you why. First of all, it has all the information you need about the stitch, what presser foot to use, but I can touch the stitch and I can go from right to left or up and down to choose stitches. And it takes me to the different categories too. So if I want applique, if I want buttonholes, practical sewing, I just go there and it's right at my fingertips. I love that, it's so easy. So I'm gonna exit out of this one and show you more about the main screen. Now, when I have the blue highlights on, those are gonna activate. So I can choose to start sewing with an auto lock or reverse stitch. I can choose to end that way or I can choose to do nothing. I can turn those off. The thread tension is amazing on this machine. Now on a Juki sewing machine, you really don't have tension issues because our tension is very balanced and you get a perfect straight stitch. But what if you're sewing different weights of thread or want to adjust the tension? Watch this. With my finger, I can adjust the tension and visually on the screen, I can see what's happening to my thread. So I can tighten it or loosen it and see how it's going to be affected. I love that. So that is the tension adjustment. Take a look at the stitch length. If I lengthen my stitch right on the screen, you can see visually it changing from long to short. You're gonna see every change you make, which makes it easy. The needle position, I can touch that and I can go to right needle position with just the touch of a button or left, or I can do it incrementally. And I like to do this when I'm top stitching on different bags and garments because I can put that needle exactly where I want it to be and top stitch. So I put it back on center. Over here, I have some functionality that I love. The smart feed, we talked about that earlier. The way you pull that is you just pull it back and down and it's gonna be engaged on the machine but I can adjust it for different fabrics. I can actually adjust the walking foot to back off a little bit or to clamp on more. So if I'm sewing a knit and it's stretching it out, I can move it back so it, it's feeding in more evenly. So it is so nice that that's adjustable. I'm gonna pull it back out and it's that easy to move in and out. And while I'm on the walking foot, I want to show you that the feet are snap off, but anything that has a U on the back of it is going to be capable of using that smart feed, which is nice. So you can use it in more than just your basic straight stitch. Okay. So the snap on feet just snap on, go on very easily. And let me show you how many come with that U. There's a very a big selection of presser feet for that smart feed alone. So we'll get back to the accessories in a second, 
but a little more on this screen. So I can raise and lower my presser foot here and it'll do it automatically when it's engaged. I can also engage the thread trimming. Uh, a couple of things, I'm gonna go to a zigzag so you can visually see that now I can adjust the stitch width and length and every change I make, you can see right on that screen. So it's very nice. Let's talk about the feeding system because a Juki gives you that wonderful box feed, which doesn't push or pull your fabric, but feeds it through in a box like, so you get a professional feed every time. Couple of things about that feeding system. Stitch number three, stitch number three is a quarter inch from the edge of the presser foot. So if I want to use the full set of feed dogs when I'm sewing a quarter inch seam, I can. I just use the standard presser foot. However, quilters, let me give you a tour of the presser feet you get with this machine because everybody's different and everybody's going to pick the foot that works for them. So this is a quarter inch foot with a guide. So if you like the guide, you get it with a Kokochi. If you don't want a guide, this is the piece or the patchwork foot. This is a quarter inch foot without a guide and has quarter inch markings for turning. And then I love this foot. This is the straight stitch foot. This is also known as the scant quarter inch foot. So that comes with it too. Uh, the other thing quilters love and, and I know a lot of you may have the Haruka or one of our straight stitch machines to get that perfect straight stitch. Love that machine. But if you can have only one Juki, I can also deliver that perfect straight stitch. This is the needle plate that comes with the Kokochi. It is the straight stitch plate. See that little dot? So if I look at my machine, I'm just going to raise the presser foot. Let me just take the presser foot off so you can see it. It looks like a little oval, and that is to accommodate zigzag stitching. So when I'm piecing on my quilt and want that perfect Peruka straight stitch, I can do it on the Kokochi. The way I do it is I change my needle plate. Also, I can change my feed dogs. And these snap on and off. It's easy to do. But most companies give you that straight stitch needle plate. However, what about the feed dogs that are spaced just to deliver that perfect straight stitch? And that's what the Kokochi comes with. It's very nice. It also comes with a one-step buttonhole foot that you plug in, and it gives you the perfect uh, buttonholes every time. And it also comes with overcasting feet, a zipper foot, a narrow hem foot. You get all the accessories with the Kokochi. You're going to need to be successful. Okay, so let's go to threading and then we'll do some sewing. Ah, but I want to show you one more feature on this. I'm going to uh, put the presser foot back on. And many of you have probably heard about the floating foot or the micro lift, it's on the Kokochi too. So if I take my pressure to a negative number, look how much room, and I just raise that presser foot, look how much room I have under here. That is to get heavy fabrics underneath that foot, and it's for uneven heavy fabrics. So when you're hemming denim, if you're quilting and, and binding a quilt, if you're putting on buckles on bags, this is spectacular because what it delivers is an even straight stitch. You're not going to get a little stitch and then a big stitch. The Kokochi is not going to fight the feeding system because of this superior add-on. So that is called the floating foot. And what you do is take your pressure to a negative number and it raises that foot up. Okay, I'm going to take it back down to zero, okay, and let's go to some other categories. I'm going to touch history. Everything I sew, I have in my history, so I can go back. So if I'm top stitching, and I have my needle position set, and I have a different stitch length, 
the machine's going to remember that. And so the next day I can just go to my memory and uh, locate the last stitch and keep on sewing. That is really nice. Support. How do you use the machine? Well, Juki makes it easy. You can go on YouTube for videos. And uh, I'm sure Brian and Alex support you well with lessons after the sale. Let's look at the support. So there's operation of the main body. So I can get instructions on specifically different subjects. Okay. Or, let me to touch that. I can look at the whole instruction book. And this seems little. I'm amazed at how much I used it. So I can, I flick through the instruction manual and I can see all the accessories. I can go to techniques. I can do whatever I want. And what I'm stopping on is important. How to set up this slide on table because you want it perfectly balanced when you get it. So make sure that not only do you flip out the feet that you adjust them so they're balanced, okay? So that's all right here at your fingertips. Uh, the operation panel, how to do the history, everything at your fingertips. So it's easy to use. But here's the exciting part. I am going to go to settings. And you can personalize the Kokochi to your sewing habits. I can uh, adjust things. So if I'm going to stop with the needle position, I'm going to have it stop up. You can change that. If you like the needle to stop down, you can adjust that. I can adjust the pivoting. I can adjust how high that pivot goes from two to six millimeters, which is great. I can adjust the sound. And you think, why do adjust the sound? Those little beeps and things, if they're annoying to you, you can adjust that up or down. I can adjust all three things. I can adjust the brightness on the LCD screen. I can adjust the LED lights. Look at that. If you see the lighting right now, I can go from warm to cool easily just by sliding it, okay? And then the LED screen is changing too. So the temperature can be changed, the lighting can be changed, and it's all up to how you want your sewing room. Uh, you can adjust the speed, low, medium, or high. I like to go fast, so I'm gonna leave that on high. Uh, the presser foot lifting height you can adjust. I can adjust the bobbin detection. It, the machine's gonna let me know when I'm almost out of thread, but Harv, if you wanna know a little bit earlier, you can go to 200 stitches, 100 or 30 stitch stitches. Clearly, I like to wait till the end. Uh, so uh, foot functions. Earlier, I mentioned on the foot control on that piece on the right that you can have seven different functions to choose from. So I can do needle up down, I can do thread trimming, presser foot auto lift, the lock stitch, the reverse stitch, one stitch, which is really nice when I'm doing top stitching. That's what I love the most. So right now I'm gonna keep it on presser foot lift and I can connect to a wireless uh, and I just uh, reconnected it yesterday. So right now it's connected to my sewing office. And then there's a machine log, there's a software version, you can change the language. So this machine can be customized to what you wanna do, okay? So we're gonna go to sewing.net. I'm gonna touch home. So once you have your Kokochi set up at home, you can connect it to your wireless connection. And I've done that. So look what I have in the Juki Sewing. I can go to our website. I can have a digital tutorial. Again, I can look up the manual. And I pref if I prefer to look up the manual on my phone, I have a QR code here that I can just, you know, put my camera on and then I'll have the manual right on my phone to refer to. Uh, so I'm going to go to the Juki website. Again, I could use a QR code and look at it on my phone. But if I touch the website, it comes up with our machines and we're right at the website. Okay. 
Also, I love the instructional movies. And again, that QR code is there. But I'm going to go right on and I'm going to choose setup. Okay. So notice where that took us. It took us to YouTube, commercials and all. So right now, um, you can go to anywhere on here. I'm just going to go to that bobbin preparation. But if you're watching, for example, this show, you can watch it right on your Kokochi. Crazy fun. And I thought, oh, that's silly. I'll never use that. I use it all the time because I love YouTube for learning a technique or learning how to sew with a different foot. It's very, and so now this one's showing how to wind a bobbin and the tops that come with it. Pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to touch home. Go back. There we go. And I'm going to go back to sewing. Okay. And we're back to practical sewing. This machine has 368 stitches and four fonts. So let's get back to the basics. Let me show you how to thread it because everybody wants to know how easy it is. And uh, congratulations to the person that won the Orofil thread. I love Orofil. So the nice thing about the Kokochi is that it's numbered. So I'm gonna start at one, and then I'm gonna go around to two. Uh, I say always have your presser foot up when you thread a machine so that the tensions are open. And I'm going to engage that take up lever right there. I'm going to go down to five. Now this is six. Okay. And number seven is my needle threader. So the last thing I'm going to do is put it in number seven. Okay. And actually back here, number eight is the thread cutter. So I can even thread, but that is ready to thread the needle. So I'm just going to push this lever down and look at that. That threaded the needle so quickly. And what I like about this needle threader is I don't really have to know how to thread the needle. I just use it. I don't have to see the eye. It works every time. So that's a nice, reliable thing. So I'm just going to pull my thread back. I have a little door here for the bobbin case. So I'm going to pull that out. You can see that I can just pull the bobbin out. It's easy. And again, I am going to just sh watch the path and thread my bobbin case. And it, it's numbered. And there's a thread cutter there at the end. So it's pretty easy to thread. Okay. I want to point out some things on the needle plate. There are markings for quarter inch and five eighths inch, half inch. So they're all there for you. And let me start out with that quarter inch seam that I was telling you about, because I really like that feature. All right, so I'm going to grab some fabric here, and I'm going to place my fabric right on the edge of the foot, okay? Because I'm going to go in and select stitch number three. Now, stitch number three is the quarter inch foot. So I'm just going to start sewing. And it does go 1,050 stitches per minute. And I can lower and raise that speed with a speed guide. So now I'm going. And I'm using the full set of feed dogs when I'm doing this, folks. So I'm getting an excellent feed. Okay, so when I get to the end, I can auto lock, I can reverse, or I can just cut my thread and I'm ready to go. Look at that beautiful quarter inch seam. Very nice. And the stitch I hope you can see the quality of that stitch because I am most impressed with the Juki stitch formation. It is beautiful. So let's talk straight stitch. Let's talk quilting. So earlier I showed you that needle plate. I'm going to snap off the presser foot 
Now you can see those really nice box feed dog system. With the machine, I get this multi-purpose screwdriver, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this presser foot up and I should turn off the machine just for safety purposes, but I'd like to show you that it's telling me exactly what's going on. So it knows that the throat plate is off right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lift the feed dogs until they snap out. These are very easy to snap on and off. So I'm just gonna snap those out and I'm going to put in my straight stitch feed dogs and they snap in. So I'm gonna go behind this piece and it snaps right in. And honestly, I think I made that look hard because I'm not in front of the machine, but even then you can see how easy it is. And then, oops, it would be nice if I did it front. So I'm putting on that needle plate, okay? And then I'm just snapping it in place, snapping it right down. And let me check my feed dogs. So to get it back up, I can just use that screwdriver again. And I'm going to make darn sure those are in and they look good. Okay. So now I can take this plate and snap it into place. It's that easy. Okay. So now the machine, if you look at it, if I try to select a stitch, it's going to only give me the options for that straight stitch. So let's try that straight stitch again and this time i'm going to use what's called the patchwork foot now this is a quarter inch on the edge so i don't have to worry about moving my needle and let me just put this on and we'll get sewing there we go So now I'm going to use the edge of that presser foot as my guide and go. All right, so let me get back to the stitches here. And notice the screen. The screen is telling me that I'm on straight stitch and it knows that I have the plate changed. So it's good to go on this side, okay? So let me show you how to change it back. I'm gonna take off that patchwork foot and I'm gonna lift this. So when I wanna go back to a zigzag stitch, I can take this off. It's very easy to do, okay? So I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna snap off my straight stitch feed dog very carefully. And I'm gonna put in the larger feed dogs again. So it was that simple. So now I'm gonna put in my other plate and make sure it's going forward this time. I'm gonna snap it into place. Okay, and now the machine is now reading zigzag and all the other stitches that it can do, okay? So I'm gonna go back to sewing and let's uh, try some other things. Let's talk about combining stitches and decorative stitches and what the Kokochi has to offer, okay? So I'm gonna put on a different presser foot. I'm gonna put on a decorative foot that is, there's a couple of them. And again, this machine comes with a lot of nice things. This is the eye foot. I like this for satin stitching, doing applique because it has this guide. But if you want a better visual, it also comes with that open toe foot that has a guide out here for heavier sewing. So let me put that on and there we go. Got that all set. And I'm going to show you something I absolutely love about the Kokochi. 
and it's in the tapering grouping. So uh, what I'm going to do is go to tapering. I'm going to swipe on over there. And I love this for applique. I love doing applique. So I have selected the 301 stitch in the tapering. I'm going to take the stitch length a little closer. And I'm going to use a three stitch width, a kind of a narrow one for an applique. But now I talked about this gear. So when we touch this gear, I have new settings on the side. The, this is the tapering settings. So I'm going to touch that and I'm going to choose tapering on and I'm going to choose the 45 degree angle. So now you can see that 45 degree angle right at the top. So I'm going to turn on the length. I'm going to put it to 60 millimeters just so we have a nice long um, size. And I'll show you that 60 millimeters is just to show you how it's going to work. You can set it at any size you like. I'm also going to taper the bottom. So I'm going to turn on tapering the bottom. And I'm going to select 45 degree again. Okay. And then I'm going to touch the main screen. So when now what that's going to do is it's going to sew for me. It's going to taper miter that corner. Let's just sew it so you can watch it. And my needle came unthreaded. So I'm going to use that needle threader. I'm going to raise the presser foot so I can get a little slack out. Put it in the needle threader. Come on. There we go. Perfect. It's always easier when you're in front. But let's get started. I'm going to put this under the foot. And we'll miss a couple of those taperings, but we can do it again. Okay, so let's just go. And you can see on my screen exactly what the machine's going to do. It's going to sew until it gets to 60 millimeters. And then it's going to taper the end of that stitch. And it's going to stop and tie it off. So now I'm going to lower my needle. And I'm going to turn this. And hopefully I'm turning straight. And then I'm going to start sewing. And what it does is it miters that corner. Beautifully. And you can see I can adjust that speed up and down. And again, it's going to lock that stitch. This is when I should be lowering my presser foot. So I would probably set this up a little different in setting. So let's go. We're going to do it one more time. Hopefully, again, I'm perfectly straight. And the thread is gone. All right, so we get to re-thread. But let me show you how that worked. You can see that it tapers that end beautifully. And it's one of my favorite things on the machine. So I'm just going to re-thread here real quick. Pull that thread out of the top. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to pull it out gently. There we go, it came out. See, when we're on our studios, sewing studios, anything can happen. So I'm putting on my thread, okay? I am just going to start again at one and follow the path. Very easy threading. Okay, and back, 
going to touch the flow of that and then back to that needle threader. Okay. We'll pop it in. And I'm going to lower the presser foot and put it back in. Nice. All right. So let's talk about some other functions on the Kokochi. There we go. All right. So we can combine stitches too. So that was from the tapering section. And when, again, when I touch a stitch, I can go to the quilting. There's a lot of beautiful quilting. I can go to one point sewing. And if I go to combination, I can actually combine something. Now you're seeing something that's in my memory. But what I can do is go to whatever grouping I want. So let's start with lettering. I'm going to go to lettering and then just select J, U, K, I. And I do have, if I swipe, I have the upper and lower, and I also have different styles to choose from. These uh, rectangles here are spacing, so I could put a space in there, and then I could put, uh, let's put Kokochi. So we'll just go to the lowercase letters, and I am just touching these to go in. Okay, and then I'm going to just save them by selecting the key, and I'm ready to sew them. So it's just going to start sewing. And it gives you a beautiful result. I'm going to run into my zigzag here. It does beautiful lettering. It does script lettering. It does uh, outline lettering, which is really nice for labels. Uh, so whatever style you like, you can create beautiful lettering for labels, for school, for quilts, all kinds of things. The Kokochi is a heavy-duty, versatile machine. Beautiful. Beautiful stitching. I think I've got to change my thread now. That's the second time. I'll use my thread cutter up there. But let's take a look at that lettering. Beautiful. Beautiful. Great job. So now I can put that. I have that in memory. So I can do that again and again if I so choose. Okay, some other things that are on here. If I'm sewing decorative stitches, I have single patterns, so I can stop at the final one. I have mirror image, so I can flip over my scallops if I so choose. It is such a versatile machine, and everything you need to know about the machine is built right in. So I love this. I use this all the time. Lately, I've been making jelly roll uh, rugs, so you can know that it's heavy duty and it can sew through lightweight fabrics to very heavy fabrics without a problem. And if you want to change settings, for example, what I would do is stop with my needle down for applique and then I can change that pivoting if I want so that I could go have that needle go down when I'm doing that miter. But I love that tapering section of the machine. I also have uh, heirloom stitches built in. And let me show you how the buttonhole works because it is a fantastic buttonhole foot. I am going to, the nice thing uh, is it is a snap on foot and the gauge for the button is located in the back. So I just slide it back and forth and I'm going to grab a button put in there. 
So it's going to measure your button. So you're going to get the right size every time. So this is going to snap on. And I'm going to raise my presser foot and just lower it and it snaps into place. Then on the side of the machine, I plug it in. Excuse my reach here. I'm just going to plug that into the side of the machine and we're ready to go. So let me just thread my top and we can make a buttonhole. Professional buttonholes are so nice to have and the Kokochi makes 20 different styles of buttonhole, which is great. Okay, get all threaded. So much thread here. All right, so I'm gonna raise the presser foot and I'm gonna grab a piece of fabric. Let me excuse my reach again. I'm going to put down this beautiful blue. I'm gonna raise my foot a little bit. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a stitch just to get that. Go back to sewing. And I'm just gonna do a needle up down. Lower that presser foot, put a needle up down. There we go. Okay, so I just wanna pull all that thread to the bottom and it's in my foot here. Let me just cut that. We'll get started. It's just like my sewing studio, folks. Okay, we're on a roll now. Let's do a buttonhole. Okay, so again, I am just going to go to the buttonhole and put my fabric underneath the foot or in the foot. If it's heavy, you can put it in underneath both pieces. But I'm just going to put it up here, lower my foot. Now, these 20 buttonholes can also be adjusted. They're one step. And again, the screen is showing you exactly what's happening. And it's going to tie that buttonhole off and we're done. I'm just going to cut the thread and got a beautiful buttonhole. Absolutely beautiful. So this is the Juki Kokochi. It means good feeling. It has 368 stitches, a large seven inch screen that is touch screen. So you can even though there's so many stitches, you can find what you're looking for easy. That's what I love about it. So if you've been thinking about the Kokochi, now's the time. It's an easy, strong and sturdy computerized sewing machines. And I'm gonna check in with Brian to see if there's any questions out there for me on the Kokochi. Wow, Kelly, I, uh, I knew some of the features on this machine. Like I knew about the built-in walking foot, I knew about the huge throat space. I knew about the uh, temperature control on the lighting, but I had no idea when I told, when you first came up and I said, you could watch, you could practically watch TV on the machine. That was a joke. I didn't realize <laughs> that you could actually watch YouTube on this sewing machine. That's wild. Yes, you can. And I've used it when I'm doing a, a tutorial on YouTube. It's great when you're sitting at the machine. So it's a nice feature. Well, I hope somebody out there watching right now, I hope they get this machine. And then when we do our next event, they watch the machine while sewing at the machine. So we do have a couple of questions. Um, some people join in late. So these are going to be a little bit of a repeat. But how big is the throat space? The throat space is 12 inches. That's an excellent question. Wow. Okay, and then um, let's see, how big is the screen? Uh, you said seven inches for the whole screen, but when you're watching Correct. YouTube, how, I think that's what she was talking about. 
Oh, that's a good question. Let's just go there and find out because it's just fun to watch. So I'm going to just touch one of ours. But it's so funny because it'll come up with the commercials too. Uh, so we'll get through this commercial. It looks like a good movie, but I'm skipping that. So now the screen is about, I don't know, two by three, would you say? Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah. That's awesome. And then um, I have one more question for you. Linda Keller wanted to see the example of the lettering that you stitched. Could you hold that up to the camera? Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, where is that one? Here it is. I, I My apologies. The Kokoshi crashed into my zigzag, but you can see the Juki right there. It does a beautiful job lettering. Awesome. Well, I can't tell what my favorite part of this machine is. The other thing that blew my mind was the interchangeable feed dogs. I've never seen anything like it. So I, kudos to Juki. This is a very impressive machine. And Kelly, you did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, showing off the Kokochi for us. Thanks so much for having me, Brian. Have an awesome day. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. That was a lot more than I was expecting. I did not realize that that machine could do as much as it could do. So hopefully somebody out there is like, I'm going to get that machine because we have amazing deals on it. So let me pull up my overlay really quickly. So typically the MSR, uh, MSRP on this machine is 5,999. Uh, we have it on sale on the website for 3,999 right now. But uh, as you guys are aware, the way So Creative Live works is if you call in, you can get a, a lower price than that 3999 Now, we did want to mention that we do have a couple of other options for you, which we'll touch on later, but I would recommend calling and finding out what those other options are because I can't say what they are, but what I can say to give you a hint is for the normal price of the machine, what you pay for our, our sale price, you could get this machine as well. You can get two machines for the exact same price. And that's all I'm going to say. If you want to know more about it, give customer service a call. Tell them Brian sent you and said, hey, he said that there was a very special deal in the Kokochi. Let me know what it is. Um, I do want to let you guys know we also offer free financing with credit approval, but we, also, we have a few financing options. So whatever your situation is, if you have to have this machine or any other machine that we carry, our customer service agents are prepared to walk you through that process and help you get that machine of your dreams. So with that said, we have a giveaway to do. So this is going to be Aurifil thread kit number 20. And I'll go ahead and put it on the screen, Alex, if you want to get ready to roll. All right. Y'all know the drill. When we put, when we hit draw, you have to either, either actually drum at home, or if you can't make noise, put the drumming emoji in the chat so we know you're doing it with us. All, All right. right. Ready, set, go. Congratulations to Nancy W. Nancy, you are entered to win the grand prize finale at the end of the event, and you also get this Orphil uh, thread kit. So let me talk really quickly about how to claim your prize. So if you were one of the winners of one of the previous segments, or if you are the lucky winner of the grand prize, you're going to go to www.sewingpartsonline.com forward slash live. You're going to click the giveaway tab or just scroll down to the giveaway section and fill out and submit your form. We will, uh, at the end of the event, Alex and I are going to take a short break and we are going to, when we get back, we're going to start working on the giveaways. So uh, give us about a week or two to start shipping them out, but you will get them pretty soon. So um, with that said, let's see what we have coming up next. Yeah. Hannah. Okay. So, up next, we're going to have our friend Hannah from Modistra Sew. She's going to be giving us tips and tricks for sewing collars, but we still have about 10 minutes until her segment. So we're going to find a quick video to play for you. Alex, do you have anything on hand? I do. Okay. Um, I've got, um, got Diamond troubleshooting a machine or a blade saver video. Do we have uh, the acorn video by chance? Um. Well, let's do, let's do, um, Dennis troubleshooting the machine and then we'll find the acorn video because Bernie and Shelly didn't get a chance to talk about their, uh, light hold seam glue. And I am a huge fan of that product. 
So at some point today, when we get a chance, I would like for us to show that video because I do think that that glue is something that everybody who's looking to have precise points, perfect quilting would like. So go ahead and uh, we, oh, well, we start it. So at 10 minutes, go ahead and play uh, Dennis's tech video and then we'll pull Hannah up after. With skip stitches or your thread breaking, well, today I've got a treat for you. I'm going to go bug our technician, Dennis. He's going to walk through it with us, show us what to look for and how to fix it. Let's head down there. Hello, my name is Dennis. Hope this video is helpful to you. Let's get started. Today, what we're going to talk about is thread breakage, skip stitches, and some of the possible causes for those. The first thing we want to do is pull off this bad spool of thread. And I know people want to save money, but a good quality thread means everything. Make sure that on all of your thread guides, anywhere that the thread comes in contact with, that it's very smooth. And especially when you get down to your, your thread guides, but before you go into the needle, because you have a lot of tension right in here on this uh, thread guide, then make sure that there is no rough places in there at all, because you don't want any hanging. If you hang, it will cause thread breakage, skip stitches, and even needle breakage. These needles can get rough places on the uh, tip of the needle that's called a burr, and that will hang your thread and cause skip stitches and thread breakage. Go ahead and take that needle out and put a new needle in. And also, removing of your foot to always check and make sure that there's no rough places inside this foot because the thread comes in contact with this foot in all directions. You want to make sure that that is very smooth and clean from any burrs at all. The next thing that we go to is your needle plate. Usually everybody carries a nickel in their pocket. It's a good tool to remove your needle plate screws. And to remove these, we'll do this. and. Uh, check for some rough places in the, uh, the needle hole. If you've got a needle plate that looks like this, you've got a real good looking needle plate. And I'll just show you an, an example of uh, some burrs in this plate. If that thread comes in contact with these rough places, it will break. To get this burr out, I use an abrasive tape. We sell those here. But what you can do is put this plate in a vise to hold it secure, and then you can put your abrasive tape, this is a coarse tape, and you can take it and pull it back and forth to remove those rough places. It doesn't take long to smooth this tape out. And so you can use that smooth tape that you wore off the abrasive from and use that to polish this on the inside. Use caution not to take too much out of this needle plate hole. Next, you want to check your bobbin. Sometimes from the manufacturer, they get a rough place in the mold from each side, from here to over here. Just go ahead, instead of sanding them off, just go ahead and get you a new bobbin. And that's the uh, best way to do that. Next, after the bobbin, we'll check the uh, bobbin case. You want to just take your finger and run across the edges around and just check for any rough places at all. If your bobbin case has a rough place on the edge, sometimes you can feel a rough place here. What I usually do, if it's just a, a scratch, I'll take my fine sandpaper, just a little bit of pressure, and sand it until I get it smooth out. You don't want to take a any shape off of this bobbin case at all. But if you have needle marks that's going all the way through the bobbin case, throw the bobbin case away and get a new bobbin case. Whenever you install your bobbin case, be sure that this part here is against your bobbin case stopper. If it's not against that stop, it'll be positioned in a place that it's not supposed to be and then your needle will come down and go through the bobbin case. Whenever it does that, throw your bobbin case away and install a new one. Next, we will go to our sewing hook. You want to make sure that this part of this point is free from burrs. I should be able to run my fingernail across the end of this sewing hook without hanging. 
and if your finger slides off smoothly, you don't have a burr. If I have a hang this way or coming around this way on the back, I will need to get that rough place off with a uh, piece of sandpaper. I use coarse sandpaper and take it to the back of the sewing hook and I will go work it back and forth until I feel like it's smooth and then what I will do, I'll run my finger on the back side and it's already smoothed this one up. So now I go to my fine piece of sandpaper. You can tell that I've used it bunches of times. It's wore out. Need to get some new. <laughs> but anyway, same procedure. You put your sandpaper around the back side of that hook. You probably won't be able to see it that well, but you just put it behind the hook and go backward and forth till you feel like it's uh, going backward and forth real smooth. And then remove it, take your fingernail and feel and I don't have any hangs, and I know that's good. And your thread will appreciate that as well. Before I go back together with it, I would want to make sure that all of this hook area in here is clean from all lint. Now that we've checked all of those things, we can do the fun part now, the exciting part, is putting the machine back together. Now we will, we will go to a different hook system, which is a shuttle hook. And uh, all of the other things that we talked about, checking everything, all of your guides for rough places, burrs, it's the same applies to this machine. And But just a hook system is different. Flip this cover down and remove your bobbin case. Just take the wing, take the latch, and pull it out. Take these wings and flip them to the side. And which what that's going to do, that's going to allow us to remove the hook and the, uh, the raceway and everything out together. Take the middle of this shuttle hook and pull it out and all of it comes out together. On this shuttle hook, you want to make sure that you do not have any rough places on the back point of this hook or on the front, on the front edge. Make sure that there's no rough places all the way around it. And if you do, just like the previous video shows, get you a piece of sandpaper and smooth off the rough place. Now we'll go to our race. Your thread, as it's flopping around while it's sewing, it will come in contact with these edges. And you want to make sure that all of these edges do not have any rough places on them. If there's a burr on the bobbin case, it usually it will be right in this groove where the needle goes through. Some people go ahead and take a piece of smooth sandpaper. They'll buff this and get the rough place out. But usually, if I have one hanging like that, I will just replace the bobbin case. Next, we will check our shuttle driver. The way that I've got the machine turned now, your needle is all the way down, and this is where it will come in contact with the uh, shuttle driver. If your needle has hit that shuttle driver enough, it will cause it to have a few burrs on it. You do this the same way as you would a hook. From this area to this area here, you would kind of lightly sand that until you get all the burrs off till it's very smooth. And that's about the only thing I know. Dennis has been a technician for over 30 years. Talk about a lot of information stored in that brain of his. Just a little reminder, although this information is going to be very helpful for you, it doesn't take the place of bringing in your machine for scheduled maintenance. Continue to regularly bring your machine in every six to 12 months, see that sewing doctor and keep your machine running smoothly. Until next time, happy sewing everybody. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for Dennis for showing us all those tips. Um, and I just want to say a special thank you to uh, Donna Haskell. Donna, we've noticed that you've just been really fantastic in the chat. You've been interacting and commenting, asking great questions, being really friendly and encouraging. And we really, really appreciate that. So, all right. So next up, we have our new friend, Hannah from Modistra Sews. She's going to show us how to sew a collar. Um, I'm going to let Alex do all of the tech stuff. She said there was something specific she had to do. So Alex, go ahead. Hey, Hannah, how you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you today. Can you hear me? Yes, thank goodness. <laughs> if you don't know, guys, so yesterday after we went off 
uh, off the air, I met with Hannah in the, uh, in the studio and we could not figure out our audio. There was something going on. And so finally it was like, listen, I gotta, I have to go because I have homework to do. And she was like, okay, I can meet you in the morning. So I was supposed to meet her at seven o'clock this morning, five o'clock her time. And I slept through my alarm because I stayed up all night doing my paper. Hannah, I am so sorry that I did that, but I'm so hey, happy that you're here. We got it worked out. It's okay. Yes, we did. <laughs> Everything is figure outable. So now that you're here, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about, a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do? So I am a, like a part-time sewing instructor. I teach a sewing class like once a month here in San Diego. And I really just teach beginner sewing. But my what I really like to do is clothing and bag making. I started sewing when I was in my mid-30s. So if anybody is feeling like, oh, it's too late for me to learn how to sew, you can start sewing at any time and become become good at it. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, I know yeah. you're gonna you are our newest sewing parts online ambassador. And we haven't gotten much further than, hey, do you want to be an ambassador? So I'm excited to see how our relationship grows and seeing you on the Sewing Parts Online stuff, how we can support each other. So guys, please in the chat, give Hannah some support. Ask her questions if you have them. Hannah, I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away, okay? Okay. okay. Let me set up my camera real fast. Okay, go ahead. You guys just let me know if it's good. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Looks perfect. All right, so today we're going to go over how to install a collar. And specifically, we're gonna be installing it on the Cali shirt from Closet Core Patterns. I should have probably showed you my shirt because I'm actually wearing a version, but we can show that at the end if you want. Now, this, in, uh, this way of sewing a collar is, even in the instructions, it says it's like kind of unconventional because usually what you would do is you would construct the entire collar into one piece and then you would add it to your shirt. But here today, we're going to do it step by step, adding it onto the shirt. I find that you get more of a precise um, placement, especially when it comes to the collar stand, which is this piece. So we have the collar stand, we have one that's going to be interfaced. The other piece is going to go on the inside. This is uninterfaced. And then we have our collar. This is our top collar. And then we have our under collar. So with Closet Core, what they do is they cut this collar piece is cut slightly bigger than this one. And the reason why they do that is you want, once you sew these two pieces together, you want the under collar to roll under so that you don't see the seam on top of this one. If you have a pattern that just says to cut two of these out, what you would do is you would take one of these and trim it down by like an eighth of an inch all the way around. So that way you can get that nice roll under your collar. So we're gonna set these aside because we don't need those right now. We don't need this piece. We're gonna start with our, um, this is our uh, collar stand, the interfaced one. And we're going to take our shirt and we're basically matching up all of our notches. I have marked uh, right here is our 5 8 inch seam allowance. And that is important because we need this edge to hang off of our collar band over here. It has to hang off by 5 8 of an inch in order to have the seam allowance to actually sew the collar on and attach all the other pieces. So we're going to lay this, uh, let's make some room here. We're going to lay this right side up. And we're going to place this piece this way. So we're going to find the center. And I know a lot of, I, I'm assuming a lot of people maybe here, they might be quilters. So if you're new to garment sewing, you do want to keep track of your seam allowances because they will be different if you are a quilter. Um, usually with this pattern, they use five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to take clips today. I actually usually use pins, but for the sake of time, I think it's going to be faster if I clip. So I'm clipping in the center and then I'm going to find that, uh, my collar band, uh, my, um, yeah, <laughs> 
I'm losing my uh, memory here. The um, front of the shirt, I'm going to find that, and I'm going to match, I'm going to find that mark where I measured the seam allowance. I'm going to line that up exactly at the edge here, and we have one notch right there. It really should be in the center of your placket. That's the word I'm looking for. So we're going to mark that with our, we're going to clip that on, find the other side. We're going to do the same thing to this side. Clip that on. And then you have to ease this in. Some patterns are going to tell you if you want to like clip some of this, you can. Um, what I just like to do is I like to like just very gently stretch it out a little bit, find the center between these two clips now, and I'm going to clip there. Hey, Hannah. Donna, Donna wants to know what kind of interfacing you're using. Can you hear me? What just happened? Can everybody hear me in the chat? Let me know. Test, test. You can hear me? Okay. Okay. Hannah, can you hear me? Hold on one second, guys. there's product out there that helps you achieve precision piecing and essentially eliminates the need for pins? Stick around and I'll tell you all about them. Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So today we're going to talk about the Acorn Precision Piecing products. The first one that I want to mention is the kit. So this little kit actually comes with a four ounce bottle of the Easy Press fabric treatment, the one ounce bottle of the seam align glue, and an Easy Press pen. Now this is really all you need to get started with doing some awesome piecing. This little combo seriously is fantastic. So let's take a look at the Easy Fabric treatment. This is considered a refill as it's the solution that's in the pen, which I'm gonna show you here in just a moment. However, it can also be used in a misting bottle and used to treat your fabric. By treating your fabric, although it's similar to starching, there's other benefits as well. The solution strengthens the fibers. It also helps reduce stretching. You can also do several applications if you need more stability in body. Now let's take a peek at the seam align glue. This is considered a light hold fabric glue. The bottle has a convenient metal applicator so that you can apply a controlled amount of glue on your fabric. Lastly, the kit includes the Easy Press Pen. It has a reservoir that holds the Easy Press treatment. It has a reusable tip 
or otherwise known as a nib, that once depressed will dispense the solution onto your fabric. This will result in flat, easy to sew seams. Now that we know what's included, let's see how it works. To begin, we're gonna use the Easy Press Fabric Treatment. As previously mentioned, I'm going to use my misting bottle. This works great to evenly apply the treatment over the fabric. Now I'm just gonna press the fabric. You'll be able to see and feel a difference. This makes for more accurate cutting and less fraying. Let's move on to the glue. This is the fun part. When applying the glue, you wanna make sure that it's within the seam allowance. About every half an inch or so, place a small dot. Place your other fabric right side down and line up the raw edges. Once you have them lined up, grab your iron and press. Lift and repeat. Holding it for three to five seconds should be sufficient to dry the glue. One important thing to note is this is a light holding glue. If you make a mistake, you can easily pull your fabric apart. It's just enough to hold the fabric stable while you sew. The next step is just head over to the sewing machine and sew your quarter inch seam allowance. Once you've sewn your seam allowance, set your seam. Press your seam towards the dark fabric, open it up, finger press, and then just press it with the iron. This is where the last part comes in. I'm gonna grab the Easy Press pen. Depress the pen nib and then evenly apply the solution on the high side of the seam. Now you're good to press one more time. Look how nice and flat that seam is now. If I don't use it, see how even after pressing the fabric still sits up a bit? This product makes it so much easier to patch. I also want to mention a few other helpful tips when piecing. First, the quarter inch foot is essential. I'm going to include a video so that you can see the benefits of this foot. Make sure that you use the correct sewing machine needle. You can use a quilting needle or a sharp needle. I myself prefer the sharp needle because that very sharp point will pierce the fabric instead of pushing the fibers to the side. Because of this piercing versus pushing, the fabric will shift less because it has less resistance, resulting in a more precise outcome. Ideally, you would also use a straight stitch plate. Because there is a small opening for the needle and there's support all around the needle, the fabric will only meet a little bit of resistance. Whereas if you had a zigzag plate, there's a wide opening. This would allow for more movement in the fabric. I will also include a link for our video on the straight stitch plate. If you find that you use it frequently, there's other ways that you can get this product as well. So the actual fabric treatment, you can get it in either the four ounce bottle, the 16 ounce bottle, or the gallon. Then you've got the seam aligned glue, you can get that in the four ounce bottle or the small one ounce bottle. The one ounce bottle has the metal tip, the little dispenser. Then you also have your little replacement nibs or tips for your pen. And you can also individually purchase the, the pen. I didn't have one handy other than the one in the kit. So just so you're aware of that, that also comes individually. Although this is primarily used when quilting, know that you can use this in other applications as well, such as raw edge applique and just regular sewing. I hope this information provided you with encouragement, just knowing that there's something out there to help you with your precision piecing. Until next time, happy sewing everybody. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> can you guys hear me now? Oh, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> All right. I can hear you. Sorry yeah. about that. That's we'll okay. let, we'll let you go ahead and get back to doing it. Okay. I did get a little tuck here, so I have to seam rip uh, some a portion of this out and then resew it. But I do have the collar stand is now on the shirt, so let me just rip this out a little bit, and then we'll get it fixed. I had a feeling I was getting something kind of tucked in there. 
but hey, that happens with sewing. So straighten this part out. Just slip that back in there. So we got this all uh, sewn on, and now we're going to press it, get our pressing ham. You want to press it so that the collar, the seam allowance is pressed up toward the collar stand. At this point, you can trim this down a little bit. Sometimes I, le I leave it just because I like to be on the safe side with having enough seam allowance over here to be able to tuck everything in and under when I am going to uh, uh, sew on the other piece of our collar stand. I like to get those edges real nice and crisp. All right, so we got that all pressed into place. Check this side, see if we need to make any pressing adjustments because we'll end up top stitching this so we don't want it to be wonky or anything. Are there any words that you all use? When you're sewing, I guess wonky is one of the words I use all the time, especially when I'm teaching students. All right. We got that all nice and pressed. Okay, so this piece we can set to the side. Now we're going to take our collar pieces and we're going to stitch these together. With this one, it's like it's the same way as the collar stand. You're going to have an interface piece and an uninterface piece. And we're going to sew these right sides together. Okay. Matching up all those notches. If I can see them. <laughs> Use our clips. And you can see how this doesn't really fit in with the, these two pieces don't fit together. We're going to make them fit as best as we can. And that's what's going to help it have that rolled effect. this over here. I also used rayon uh, chalet on this so anytime you're cutting that out it does tend to shift on you so sometimes you get um, your pattern pieces can get a little distorted so you have to like manipulate them a little bit to get them to fit. All right we are going to Exactly where I want it. Okay, we're going to stitch from here up around and then down the other side, leaving this portion is going to be opened. Okay. 
And we're going to sew a 5 eighths of an inch for this pattern again. As you get closer to this corner, you can turn your stitch length down just on the corner and it's going to give you um, more security when you're uh, poking your corners out so that you don't like uh, slip and you know accidentally go through your stitches or break any stitches. So I'll turn this down a little bit. Went slightly too far so let me go back one. Okay, then you want to turn it back. All right, I'm going to pivot. Constantly working this so it's fitting together. Try this again. <laughs> Isn't it like that? It's going to be live on YouTube and you got to jam in your machine. Let's try this again. So we're going to keep stitching. Don't forget, you get to that corner, you want to lower your stitch length just slightly. Go a little bit more. A little more. And then set your stitch length back. And we'll get this to fit. And back stitch. Thread. All right. So here is our collar. And you can see it's kind of like wavy on this top part. But when we flip this over, it's going to cause this seam to roll under, down under. So that is going to keep it from like coming up 
on the side, uh, on the top side like this, you want it to roll completely under. So before we do that, we're going to trim the corners. Okay, so you want to trim everything up real good. both sides do this to reduce all that bulk you want the bulk in the corners okay and then we're going to flip it over or turn it right side out and then press it real good all right so and we do want to poke those corners out, and I actually forgot to get something to poke these out. Let me grab that real fast. You poke your corner out. Poke the other corner out. All right. We're going to grab our pressing hand one more time. And we're going to, I like to press these open. I don't know how you all like to press, but I got to press it open and then press it flat on the one side. Just so it lays nice and flat. Sometimes I'll turn it back out. I should probably have done that first, but. There we go. Give it a nice press. Okay. Now we'll flip it back and poke the corners out. <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself there. All right. And then we're going to give it a good press and we're going to top stitch once we get this all pressed at like an eighth of an inch around or quarter inch around. So let's lay this flat and roll that uh, collar under. Now I'd really like to match up the edge, the raw edges here, because I want this collar to roll under. So we're working from the uninterfaced side and pulling it toward that raw edge and giving it a good press. I'm going to go to this side and press it. I always tell students if you sew a seam, you got to press a seam. I know everybody probably knows that here, but that is definitely going to take your garment sewing definitely up to looking a lot more professional. Alright. 
So this is the top side of our collar. This is what's facing out into the world. <laughs> That's what I like to say. So um, that is definitely, we want to get this nice and crisp. So I'm going to just fix this one spot right here. Give it a nice flat press now. Just press this side one more time because I'm not liking how it's rolling to the wrong side. So let me press that. All right. Okay. All right. Now we got it where we want it. We're going to take it to the machine. We're going to top stitch it. I always like to up my top stitching to about a three. It's, on my old saw machine, it was like a three or three and a half. And I think I've been using about a 3.2 on this uh, shirt. So to make it consistent, we're going to keep it there. We're going to just top stitch all the way around at a quarter of an inch. One thing I love about this machine, I have to say this, is the pivoting feature where the presser foot just automatically lifts up and I can just like kind of swing it without the needle ever coming out. So that is probably one of my most favorite features of this sewing machine. So now we have our collar done. We're going to take our shirt back over here and we are going to lay this out like so. Again. Sorry about that. <laughs> now we're going to match up um, the collar on top of the collar stand. So traditionally you would have already done this all together in one piece. You would have taken this, sewn, you would have sewn your collar pieces together, then you would have laid this on top of your collar stand, put this on top, and you would have sewn it all completely together. But I do feel like this process gives you way more precision when it comes to um, attaching it and lining up with collar uh, with the shirt placket. So that is why I just, even if a pattern says to do it another way, I do it exactly this way all the time. We're going to match those center um, notches up again. We can use our clips. Okay, and this is not going to reach the ver very end of our collar stand either, so, and that's okay. We want to match it up to that end. There is a notch at the end here, so we want to match it up there at least. And match it up over here. Oh, and I wanted to add the interface side of your collar should be facing upward, so we can see that it is here. I'm going to match all these notches up. All right. And now we're going to sew 
it in a straight line just across. We're just attaching the collar at this point. Remove all this stuff out of the way. Lining that up. Don't forget to change your stitch length back like I just didn't do. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Remember to smooth all this out as you go. Sure, everything's matching up underneath, but everything is laying flat under your pressure foot. So, constantly move all of this around. Keep moving it, keep adjusting it. Now we're gonna take <laughs> we're gonna take this piece. This is the uninterfaced piece of our collar stand, and I have already pressed this up five eighths of an inch. You can see here. And one little trick I do to help with that, instead of using a seam gauge, is you stitch a line at the seam allowance, and then you press it, and it's automatically gonna roll onto that stitching line. So that's what I did here. I used that. Um, that little tip to help me get that nice crisp fold. You want to keep this pressed up, okay? It's key to getting it to lay um, perfectly on your collar piece. So let me move this again. All right, so we're gonna match everything up here. Both of these sides are gonna be, the um, seam allowance is gonna be folded up. So you can see it's folded there, folded there. You wanna keep it like that. That's gonna help you when you're turning your collar. And at this point, I think I'm going to switch to pins because I want to get precision with this. So I'm going to pin it here right at the edge of the placket because that is key. We have to um, make sure we're stitching very precisely at this point. All right. And I'll go to the other side and do that. We're sandwiching the collar in between the collar uh, stand pieces, okay? We're matching those notches back up. I'm going to check the computer, see if there's any comments or questions people have. Okay. All 
All right, we're gonna pin it. I have to say, I've never, <laughs> I haven't really uh, sewn standing up, so that is a little of an awkward position for me. So hopefully you guys are seeing everything and like, uh, <laughs> this collar does come out good. It's coming out good so far on my end, so I'm not too uh, worried about it, but all right. Okay, so we have the collar pinned into place. Now at this point, we're gonna start stitching right next to that placket. You're not stitching on the placket. You want your needle to hit just on the outside of that placket. That's gonna give you the crispest finish. And that's why I like this method because I've tried to attach collars before where it was like I made the whole entire collar and then tried to put it on and like start tucking things under and trying to top stitch and I just never got the precision that I've gotten with this method. So we're gonna start in here, place our needle right down next to the bracket. And we're going to back stitch. Try hard not to catch that placket. All right. I'm going to start sewing forward, making that round corner go slow. Smoothing out your fabric underneath as you go, just go as slow as you need to. You're stitching the whole entire collar together at this point. to do my best to avoid tucks. So I'm smoothing it out as best as I can. Okay. that side you want to match up the placket on this side as well so you want to be careful where you're stitching and come straight down next to it okay now like back stitch all right we got one little tuck there but that's okay all right so now we have this all stone on into place. At this point, you can trim all of this uh, away, but you'd want to keep this section untrimmed. You need that in order to tuck in properly on the edge. So let's see what it looks like tucked in. So if you start rolling it, you're going to be tucking it all up. You want to have enough to be able to tuck up and under. And see how that came out nice and crisp and it just perfectly lines up. Let's look at this side. So you tuck it all up and under and how it's lining up nice and crisp there. That's what you want when you have when you're sewing in a collar. I've had collars where I've done it the other way and I've had the 
collar stand sticking out a little bit because I couldn't get it quite to match up. But with this technique, I find that I get a little bit more of a precise um, finish on uh, my collars. So you just tuck it up under and you can see that the collar is now going to lay nice and flat. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to press this again. We're going to press this down like this. And then we're going to top stitch all the way around our collar. And then our collar will be finished. And all we have to do is add our buttons. So let's get our pressing hand back over here. We're going to try to tuck all of this up and in. I don't always trim the inside of this. If it's like a lightweight fabric, I'm not too concerned about trimming it. But if you have a heavier fabric, you're, you're probably going to want to trim inside. So we're going to give this a nice press. Especially on this corner is going to need to be really pressed down because you have to tuck all that seam allowance in. Just remember, that's the part you don't want to trim if you're going to trim the inside. When I get this all pressed, we're going to pin it into place and like press it again. I like to use, remember to use glass head pins. Get all your threads clipped. If you're going to press with your pins. Flip it to this side so I get a nice press on this top part. Poke all that out in the top here. Sometimes I just go like this, poke it all out, get it nice and round. All right. So at this point, I'm going to pin this into place. And then I like to give it one more press. I do have a YouTube channel. It's uh, Modistra Sews uh, on YouTube. Um, I don't have, I have a couple of videos up there. I definitely have, I always have to do a full bust adjustment. Um, so I do have a demonstration of how, how to do the pivot and slide. That's my favorite way to do a full bust adjustment. Um, sorry if I haven't been looking at the comments because my computer's across the screen, uh, it's across the room. <laughs> I'll try to look some more. Let's see what we got here. Um, Uh, 
I don't. Oh, somebody asked if I can have a step by step handout for the instructions. I don't know if I can give you the instructions because it is closet cores um, pattern. Um, I don't know if I could like write up my own version, but um, this specific one I can't give out. I don't think I, I don't think I'm allowed to do that. Um, so, okay. So I have this pin in the place and this is the part that I always get. This is the hardest part for me because you know, when you're trying to top, top stitch something and you need it to line up on the underside, I am not about hand sewing if I don't have to. So I'm going to try to stitch it. So it's always trying to catch this edge is always the hardest thing for me. So it's just one of those things you gotta, <laughs> because if you're going to top stitch, I do like to stitch it from the top. Um, so we're going to give it a go and see how it goes. I'm going to, uh, adjust my stitch length again. I like to also start, um, I kind of start in the center of the, of the neck and then work my way around. So that's where I like to personally start. Be careful if you're sewing over pins, you don't want to break a needle. We're going to sew about a five, uh, not five eighths of an inch, uh, eight, an eighth of an inch. I'm sorry if I've missed comments. This is my first live. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just winging it at this point. All right, so let's get this top stitched and then we'll see how it turns out. All right. Okay. I'm going to constantly flip this up to make sure I'm catching that portion on the, um, the collar stand. As we come to the edge here, that's where you need to make sure everything's really tucked in nice and smooth. You can't see it from the right side because you want to catch all of that to get it tucked into your collar. Okay, so I'm tucking everything back in as best I can. Carefully. I don't always recommend sewing over pins, but at this point, I kind of have to because I can't see them. I'm going to go one more stitch, pivot. All right. And all your shirt's going to come through here. Okay, so you're going to line this back up and start going around. There's going to be quite a bit of bulk on that corner too. So go slow and try to do the best you can. Hopefully your sewing machine can sew through the bulk and you don't get a jam. Okay. Always smooth out your fabric. go. Careful of any loose threads. You're not going to sew them into place. All right, it comes to that other side. So we're going to make sure everything's tucked in again. Nothing's coming out. Coming around that corner. Go slow. All right. Just turn it. Turn all your shirts gonna come out. And then we're on the home stretch. Get 
rid of this one pin. All right. All right, now let's clip our threads. Check the underneath side. It came out just a little bit, but hey, it's on the inside. When I'm doing this for myself, I have a lot more precision. But here is our collar finished. Now we're gonna give it another press, one more press. So we press the collar down into place. Very nice, look at that. Okay, we got our collar sewn on. We have everything matching up real nice with the placket here on the edges. I have it top stitched. And there is our collar to our shirt. And we're all finished. I really do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry for all the technical problems in the beginning. But yeah, this is the easiest way I've ever found to sew on a collar. It's great for beginners if you're just starting out with something like a collar. Hannah, can you hear me? No. Oh, no. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Test, test. Well, I don't know what's going on with the audio, guys. Let me know in the, in the chat if you can uh, hear me. Give me a thumbs up. You can hear me? Okay. Well, Hannah, hopefully you can hear me. We're so grateful that you joined us. I'm sorry that we had all the tech issues. We'll definitely have you back, um, and we'll get it all figured out for next time. I think that you have you are a wonderful resource of information for garment sewing. And if anybody is interested in learning more from Hannah, definitely check out her, her YouTube. Um, and, and she's on TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. But she is uh, Modistra Sews. And we'll put it in the chat so you guys can find it. So really quickly, we have a giveaway to do. And I can't remember what number I'm on. Alex, do you know what number I'm on? Oh, that's not good. That is not good. We got it. I believe the last one that I did is over here on uh, on the chair. Nothing like live, right? Over on T's old chair. I set it down somewhere. That's okay. Um, I'm going to... 21. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I did 20 before. Okay, so we're on number 22. Okay. Oh no, that one was 20. That one was 20? Oh, so we're on 21. Okay. We'll make sure. We'll make sure before we do the finale giveaway. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us, guys. It is Friday. So anyway, Alex, go ahead and pull up the giveaway tool. You guys know the drill. We're going to do the drum roll. Oh, sorry, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> it just won't stop. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Alex, let's do it. Ready, set, right, go. There we go. Jody G, congratulations. All right, Jody, you are thread kit number 21, and you are entered to win the grand finale giveaway at the end of today. All right, so we're just going to move right into it. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Grace Company, and we they are going to show us the little Rebel sewing machine, which I am super excited about because it is a very unique machine that is going to shake up the system. All right. Grace Co., how's it going? Great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm excited that it's Friday. I'm excited that we're yes. giving away a huge grand finale at the end of the day. And I am stoked to see the little Rebel in action. Are you guys prepared to show us everything? We, we, we have ready. everything. We've got the yep. machine. We've got the frame. It's, it's going to be super fun. Cool. Now, um, I've, been I've been telling people about the little Rebel that it's, it's really unique in that it does three really amazing things. It's a it's a piecing machine. It's mm -hmm. a sit down quilter with a built in stitch regulator. And it's also a frame. Now, is this the first time the Grace Company has had a piecing machine and a sit down quilter? 
Yeah, so um, well, we've done a sit down on a f the 15 before, but it was strictly okay. um, quilting. It wasn't right. a stitching machine at all. So this is our first uh, straight stitch machine. Yep. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm We're having excited. lots of fun showing yeah. it off to everybody. <laughs> now, can I ask you, what was the, if you guys know, what was the inspiration behind the name? Um, it's, it's, we're, we're breaking out between stitching and quilting. It's, so it's that little rebel, like right. before it's like you have your domestic machines that can kind of quilt and you have your quilting machines that maybe you could do some applique stuff, but this can they do didn't both. Mix. You didn't yeah. mix quilting and sewing. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you had your stitching yep. for your piecing and then you had your quilting. And so this is the breaking out between. So it's rebelling against right. both those stereotypes and getting into that you know, just need one machine. Right. Well, we love it. We think that the name of the actual machine and then the name of the packages you guys have is really cute. So kudos to you guys on that. With that said, I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and take over. If you need anything at all, let me know. I'll I'll probably turn my sound on because I'm gonna go eat a salad really quickly. <laughs> just call me and I'll be here, okay? Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> thanks so much. And thanks everybody for joining us from Sewing Parts Online. I hope you guys have enjoyed this whole week We've had lots of fun being here. We have. It's it's great. I love this whole month of sewing and quilting. I and know, everything. right? This is the month. This yeah. is the month, yeah. So of course, we're kind of like giving you yeah. a peek of it slightly, but we're kind of hiding it on purpose. But first we want to ask, what would you do if you could quilt or sew or piece leather? Right. What would right. you do if you could do a um, canvas? Right. Or let's see, what else was there? Um, denim. What would that do to change if you could sew that right. all the time, right? And let me give you an idea. So I just sold a pre-order of a Little Rebel to a gentleman, which, you know, we love it <laughs> when the gentlemen are using the machines and the quilting. So it's a great way to be creative, mm -hmm. right? And he wanted the Little Rebel because he wanted to quilt on leather and then he turns it into motorcycle seats right. and the saddlebags. It's, it's fantastic. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, that yeah. whole world opens up. Now, the reason you can do that, so we're going to step apart so you can see the little rubble. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we this. Now, when you look at it right away this way, you can see automatically it seems smaller than it is because right. this harp is so, so high. Big. It gives this um, length. It kind of hides It's an illusion length. that yeah. it's smaller than it is. Yeah, so we have 13 inches. So from the back of the needle here all the way to the inside, 13 inches, and then the harp is eight and a half. So that means wow. right away when you're quilting or sewing, all that extra fabric can sit here, right. no You've got problem. Plenty of room. You're not trying yep. to like go from another direction so that it goes out this side here. Right. You've got all that different stuff. But 1,600 stitches per a minute. minute. Yeah, that'll go through any. So much. Be right. careful, it could go through a hand. <laughs> I've heard some horror stories. Let's be very careful. Right. So someone's asking faux fur. I think so because it will do minky really well. Yeah, it does minky. Yeah, so if it's so. doing denim and leather, it's going to have that. Now, the reason that it can do that is partially because it comes with a couple of different needles. So right. it's not just quilting needles. It has a size 18, size 16, 14, and 12. It comes in that pack. So right. you get a pack, pack of 10, 10. Yep. each one. So that's going to help you right away. Right. Um, also, when we were talking about like what makes this machine different than others, well, mm -hmm. this is our first um, foot pedal here. Right, right. <laughs> our very first one. Oh, isn't that so cute? It is cute. So you the can colors. see here the color matches, yeah. right? We always love a matchy color. But also it has this um, variegated design um, that's also on the back in the vent area of the machine. Yep. It's got this like Slip little... roof, right? Right. So your foot yep. isn't going to slide on it. It has grace on there. So it just kind of helps you. And then on the back, it's got these great little rubber pieces so it's not going to slide, right. whether you're on carpet or mm -hmm. linoleum. And then you're... I love little that. Wind here. Instead of me having to wrap it around the whole foot pedal, yeah, I can do just this. Just wrap thing. it right around. Because it's very long. I just want to show you, it is seven, seven feet. feet. That's super long for a yeah. uh, foot pedal. So no, no matter what machine. cables needed, yeah. Right, yeah. So if you're putting it on the back, you're going all the way through, you've got this foot pedal, easy to do. And then it just clips in right back here into your uh, little rebel. Okay, so <laughs> other than that, we're also going to talk about the bobbin winder, right? Okay, yes. 
right in the back here. I think you tell it so well. Okay. I've heard you on the phone with people <laughs> talking about this bobbin winder. Yes, yeah, so we are amazing so happy about it. with this. So first of all, the bobbin winder has its own motor. So we've Ooh. got two motors, the motors that runs your sewing area and then its own winder, or sorry, motor for the winder, mm -hmm. right? And so in effect, with the dual um, thread mast, you can keep everything the way it is while you're sewing and you can wind that bobbin at the same time. You don't have to unthread everything, do that bobbin and then thread everything back up and go. You are ready. So, and it's a simple stick it on. You have a button here that just says go. It has optical sensors right here so that it is going to gauge when that bobbin is full. Now at any time, you don't want your bobbin all the way full. You've only got a little bit left. You have a pause button. You can stop it at any time or you can set these optical encoders back a little bit and it will always do your bobbins at half full, quarter full, whatever you would like to do. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that you're not having to get a separate bobbin winder. Right. I also love that you don't have to take it off yep. of the, like you've got your machine threaded. I don't right. have to then be like, oh, I'm out of a bobbin. Gotta hurry and thread it. Yep. Oh, take it all out, mm -hmm. put it back on, get through that whole thing. Right. So fantastic. Right. Uh, I want to talk a little bit too about this um, back here on that thread mast. It comes with three end caps for your, um, thread. So the one we have on here right now is for our finesse thread. It's that 50 weight, 100% right. polyester, 1500 yards per uh, cone, so which is great for a king size quilt with bobbins. Right. right. But um, if you're using smaller thread, mm -hmm. it comes with different, uh, these little white end caps. And so these white end caps, there's three different sizes. So depending on what mm -hmm. thread cone, or thread spool that you're using, you can easily put them on there. Right. So it's versatile with right. whatever you're And you're not doing. just leaving it empty where that thing's spinning around. <laughs> You've got one that will fit. Yes. yes. So it's, it's easy, diversi diversified for mm -hmm. whatever you're using on your machine. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was when we were saying about this eight and a half inch throat, mm -hmm. I mean harp. Sorry, the yes. The 13 inch throat is it fits on the Evolution hoop frame. It, the, right. Now the hoop frame has those larger clips in the back to hold mm -hmm. that fabric. If you have other quilting frames that have just a little bit higher, um, you know. Things stand up a little bit, right? right? And so this it's space gonna right clear, here, right. so much mm -hmm. better. And besides the fact that when you're push quilting, you can get a king size quilt in there very easily, not having to worry about all that right. extra space. How am I gonna or, get, yeah, or I'm or done. I have to do it really Turn tight it around. around. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so we've kind of talked about some of the pieces on the machine and stuff. One thing I like is it comes handle. with the handle. So I right. can just pick it up, yep. take it with me. So I can pull on one hand, put my arm through the the whole the, harp yep. section. 28 pounds, it's not. 26 pounds. Oh. <gasps> 26 pounds. You guys, pounds. even better. Exactly. So it's just <laughs> only 26 pounds. So when you're moving it from piecing or you want to do quilting over onto a frame, you can right. easily move that over. It's not going to be a big thing. You've got to get with someone, someone to help. Else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about now what comes in the box. Now you get lots of fun stuff. You do. In the box. You get lots of little things, right? So one of the first things that you get, of course, is your welcome book. Um, your welcome book is going to have your instructions in it, your warranty in it. It's got QR codes in it for more instructions. Mm -hmm. Special um, projects. Exactly. Um, you also get a, a reference card mm. that's easy. It that has most of the things that you're going to need right away, right on that card. Yeah, because you can put that instruction book maybe in your instruction book binder mm -hmm. or safe place wherever you put it, and then that right. card can just be there, easy access. Right. I also love that it comes with the new tension book that we've done. Right. So most machines, you're going to have to do something with you your have tension. tension issues. It's yeah. just sewing life, and, right? <laughs> and when you're changing out thread, you're changing out fabric, you're right. going to be wanting to check that tension. So there's like tools mm -hmm. and tips and tricks with that tension guide that will get you going. And then you also get a quilting panel. It's brand new. It's yep. going to come with Beautiful. a little rebel. So right away, you don't have to think, well, what fabric am I going to test out on this? Right. It comes, comes with, with that. It. And some sample thread. Mm -hmm. There you go. You guys are going to try it out with all these samples, right? Yeah. See which one works better, mm -hmm. which one you like. It'll be our finesse, but also some other ones as well. So you can see, oh, what, which one do I like better? Which right. one? Yeah. I'll, I'll use it on some different fabric. Right. Yeah. 
Um, also, you'll get the handle control box. Right. Now, we'll show that a little bit later on the QD, um, but it's a start and stop button that when you're on a frame. right on your handles when you're on a frame. Right, because right. even though it has a seven inch foot pedal, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about the foot pedal. Yeah. You can just push Use the your button. Fingers. Or instead of pushing your foot and right? like trying to figure out uh -huh. how to do it. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. so, and then, of course, um, sometimes people are like, well, this base seems really big, right? But, but I just need, need some bigger, extra space, right? Yeah. I need some room to spread out so I see where I'm going next, yes. right? So it comes with an 18 by 24 base that attaches on the side here. It'll come out so it'll be 18 inches wide and 24 inches long. Just that extra space so that your quilt or fabric can mm -hmm. go over it, so that you're not trying to hold it up as you're pulling it through. Right, right. Just that little bit of extra mm -hmm. space, and then let's see. Let's talk about our feet, not my feet. Not the feet. <laughs> the feet on this machine. So, of course, every if you're going to sew, you're going to need a pressure foot, right? Yep. So we have the pressure foot. Of course, that works with the feed dogs. You can see them right here. Um, it also comes with this little gauge that'll help keep your fabric straight. Right. Yep. And then it also comes with our hopping foot. So once you're ready to switch that out, See that right there? Mm -hmm. You are just going to change that out to that hopping foot for your quilting. Yeah. Um, it also comes with a ruler foot. So if you're wanting to do ruler work, you can start with that. Right. But all the other hopping foot sets for our Cunique machines are compatible with the Little Rebel. So if I want a glide foot. It's compatible. If I want a... Wonderfoot. There you it's go. Compatible. My brain is wet. Oh, okay, that's it's the only Friday, yeah. <laughs> That's because it's your favorite. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the couching foot is compatible. The other quilting perfect foot. So any feet set we have will, will work. work on the Little Rebel. So if you already have a Cunique and you're like, well, right. I'm going to use this and then I'm going to use my Little Rebel for piecing or these things, you can use yep, those. Yeah, they're going to work. All together. Yep. Yeah, it's super excited. Now, we've had a question. Let's see. You mentioned that it can embroider in leather, but how many layers of thickness of leather can it sew through? Now it can't, it doesn't embroider. Right. And that so might just be free motion term. quilting, right? Free you're either gonna quilting. push it through your machine or you're gonna put it on a frame mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. use it that way. And, and we have, are just starting to try multiple layers. Now right. I know it can do two layers, mm -hmm. but I don't know why you well, would Well, and leather more than comes that. in different thicknesses, yeah. so it's all, you know, it's all relevant. We would, you know, you'd have to know how thick is that first piece before you add a second exactly. piece, you know, to make sure it'll work. Yeah, so keep those questions coming. We'll, we'll answer them as they come up, so, you know, definitely let us know. Um, other things that come in the box, though, we're talking about, of course, the Little Rebel, if you're just joining us. This is our new piecing and quilting machine. You can do both. Right. That's, Hence the name Little Rebel. Yep. So we're talking about what comes in the box. So, so far we've talked about instruction booklets and panels and needles and, and, feet. and feet. But you also get some extra bobbins. Right. You need some extra bobbins. Mm -hmm. One doesn't work. You need well, extra bobbins. You, you might need to switch them out. Right. And even though it has the fantastic bobbin winder, mm -hmm. you, you do need all some the ready, bobbins ahead right? of time. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you get three. One comes in the toolbox, which we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. One comes on top of here in the bobbin area, and then one comes in the bobbin in the case bobbin area. Case. Yep. Now back here is the bobbin case. I'll move this fabric out of the way. Right down in here, it's a front loader bobbin. Right. I, yep. I love that. I used to have a machine where I'd have to lift up my fabric and then load it, drop it down, yes. and then put and this stuff this, down. And you guys, there's a light in there. Yeah. You might not be able to see it from here. With the studio but lights, it's a little bit difficult. There is a yeah. light in there, so I can see, yes. It's so nice. And again, the M-class bobbin, so that whatever you're doing, it's just lasting a little bit longer. Um, you can have, it's up to 55, I think, if you pre-wind it, and right. 90 if you're winding it yourself. Right. So yeah, a lot of different things that you can do that way. But what if you were, okay, so we've talked hey. about sewing. Right. What do we need to do when we're ready to start quilting? Okay, hey, so as you all know, well, and if you don't, now you're gonna find out, right? Yeah. So when you start to do quilting, you need those feed dogs down, right? Because you can't sew, up, yeah. right? Because you cannot sew when it's grabbing your fabric, <laughs> like quilt like that. It's so, so true. It comes with this little plate, all right? So this is what the plate looks like. And on the other side here, it's got magnets. So it's gonna hold it nice and steady. And what this does when you put it on is it covers the feed dogs. So now you're gonna have your nice smooth ride. And it also activates 
our optical encoder for your stitch regulation. So now, stitch regulation is ready to go on your quilt. And that stitch regulation works whether you are doing it through push quilting or on a frame. frame. Yeah, so right. it's either way. It's not those encoders that you have to add on anymore. Nope. With the rollers, this is just It's just going to read how encoder. fast you're going, and it's going to keep up with it's, it. It's a little bit new yeah. to fangled technology, right? <laughs> and, you, and we have to get used to that. But yes, right. it's going to be so great. I got to test it with the push quilting mm -hmm. and on a frame, and it was so much fun. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about the needle packs. We talked about... Um, the different sizes. We talked about the feed dogs. Um, we we're talking about the tools. Right. So when you get your machine, it comes with tools, some Allen wrenches, um, a needle magnet. Now, if you've never right. used a needle magnet before, it sits on the needle. And so you put it on that flat surface so that as you're turning it, if you're putting it in, you'll know exactly if it's straight, straight. or not. Yeah. Because that little tiny, tiny turn you makes all the see. difference. It doesn't matter if you yeah. need reading glasses or not. You just can't see that. And all of a sudden it doesn't work and it's that little, tiny, mm -hmm. little adjustment and everything's fine. Yes. Yes. So we've got the needle magnet, the Allen wrenches. It also mm -hmm. has a brush for helping to clean. Yep. And then it has oil. So a couple of different places need to be oiled when you're um, using the machine. I'm going to show you right here. First is... This section right here with the needle plate, I'm gonna pull out this thread. Oh, I can't. I've already started, so I'll show it this way. So at the base of this needle bar right here, you'll just put a drop of oil in, um, and that is gonna be every other, um, <laughs> it's gonna have the instructions, but it's gonna tell you, you know, about every so often, you know, right. how many hours you're sitting. Right. If it's sitting dormant for a long time, you want to order it after that. you start using it or after you're doing things. Right. And then the other place is down here in that bobbin case area. We're going to, you're going to um, oil the bobbin hook. Right. So you'll take out the bobbin case, oil the hook. And that one's just about every little, other yeah. bobbin. And just a little bit. Yes, yeah. it's not, you're not oiling. You're right. Not, you're not cooking with yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> you're not making, you're not using the bacon grease. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we just had another question. Does it have automatic threading? So it doesn't have automatic threading. They're right. looking into that. It does come with a little helper a tool, threader. Right? A tool, a to, tool help to help you thread. thread. It, but it doesn't have the automatic cutting. It also doesn't have um, automatic cutting. Right. The cutting so, tool right. for the thread. So um, there is a spot right here yep, on the side. Cutter right here. And you can um, just reach up and, and help that cut. There's also one back here on the bobbin winder area that can help you um, cut that right as well. Right. Okay, did I forget anything? I think. Did oh, we, oh, the mat. The, the mat. mat. <laughs> it's okay. a Teflon frictionless mat. Right. So it goes under your machine, on your table. It's grippy. It's sticky. Your machine's not going anything anywhere when you're pi pushing it through. It's also going to help that yes, vibration. That, yep. If there's any vibration going on, you want to make, it'll help um, eliminate all of that. So that's going to be right. fantastic. So. We've talked about all that's in the frame yeah. or the box. We've talked about the machine. I wonder if there's something else we can do with this machine. Oh, maybe we could use sew it. With it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to grab my chair here uh, or stool, and I'm just going to show you some tool things that we have here on the front. <clears throat> so we've got right here is my start and stop button. Um, so if I, I can use my foot pedal or I can also do the start and stop button. Um, so I can use it there. This button and, um, is able to do my reverse. Now, um, it sounds a little bit different than some machines. It just has that gear shifting to go from front to back. So you're going to be able to use that. And then the needle up and needle down is right here. So these three buttons right at the front are able to do um, those easy um, Easy access, easy, yeah, right? Easy access. Especially things. the now you can reach over here. It's not so big that I can't reach my wheel. Um, I can get all those things. Now up here, once you put on the needle plate for quilting, this is your quilting um, mode. It will light up. If it doesn't light up, you can push the button. As you can see here, it's not going to light up because I don't have that plate on. Right. And then right here are all my stitch lengths and speeds. So when you push that Q button or that light lights up, what you're telling me is that engages the stitch regulation. Yes, so that All optical right. encoder will turn on. So until that time, it's here, it's under glass, it's mm -hmm. ready to go, but it's not going to um, do any anything with the machine until I put that, that needle plate on. Perfect. So you can see here with our stitches, there's only five sections 
two buttons to go up and down, but these sections actually have 10 different modes. So we're going from more stitches per inch to less, or more stitches per inch to less. Let me switch that around. Right. So bigger stitches bigger to smaller stitches. stitches. Small stitches. <laughs> so to go between the modes, you can see as I push the button, it will get less dim or less bright and get more dim. So that's that halfway point on that one. Same thing here. And then as I go up, you can see it gets brighter for the more stitches. So five buttons, but 10 different modes. But 10 different modes. Right. So I can come down here to my regular mode. And then this is my speed. So again, three lights, two buttons, but six speeds. So as I push the button, it'll light up brighter. And I come to this one, it's a little bit more dim. So that's three, then four, five and six for the fastest stitching. Okay. So I'm going to come back down here though, cause I'm not going to stitch that fast <laughs> and I'm going to, now I have my little gauge. This helps keep it straight right here. This, um, stitch seam allowance gauge also on the needle plate are a couple of different allowances. So you can watch for those. So I'm going to press my button or I could use my foot pedal. In this case, I'm going to use my, um, my button because um, I want to show you what that looks like and here we go sewing and I'm just going along now I can press stop at any time and I can speed it up just a little bit and if that's too fast I can come back down but you can see here's all my stitches back here coming all along um, we're just having you know no problem with with getting that way so I'm going to now take this off though, because I want to show you how easy it is to switch between your presser foot and your hopping foot if you're going to be doing um, quilting. So I'm just going to unscrew this here and it pulls out my whole hop or presser foot section. So you can see you pull that out. And then I'm going to put in my hopping foot. Now I'm going to measure um, for when I'm putting it on so that there's space for my fabric, but it's not going to be super low. And it does come with a hopping foot tool guide so you can do measurements although I didn't bring that with me so I'm doing what I'm not <laughs> supposed to do I'm, yeah, I'm guessing how high I need to be okay so then here my hopping foot is all ready to go I'm gonna lift that up and I'm gonna engage my needle plate and you heard that little yep noise hopefully you did if not it was just a little gear noise it's ready to do when the light did come on it's a little light but yep, yep that lights on there there's my light now your and stitch regulation is going stitch regulation so I'm going to bring up my neat my bobbin foot or bobbin thread thread mm -hmm. because you want to pull that up it looks like I got it stuck under the needle plate so let me pull that up just a little bit going to actually take this off because I popped it. Oh, the they're unengaged. It, it disengaged, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to pull this through just because it's too long to put through my needle that way. And then I'm going to pull this thread up. Okay, so I can, again, we're going to engage that. It has that gear again. And now I can put this through. Again, pulling up my needle, my bobbin thread to come up this way so we can get started. And that time it came up because I didn't squish it with the needle plate. Mm -hmm. And now I can start um, with my push quilting. So I'm going to use this to start push quilting. I'm going to again start my button. And I've made it just a little too low here. So I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. That's why you need that tool. And I, I need that tool, with it. but it comes with it. I just <laughs> didn't bring it in. So, okay, so now I'm able to do push quilting that way. So again, it's, it's a just a light so of a piece easy. I'm thinking. <laughs> I think, well, and I'm trying to move it without the tool right, yeah. and you don't have it on there. So, but that gives you the idea. Right. 
When you have the right tool, then it works. And you've got your batting and your sandwich, you <laughs> exactly. guys. It gives you that weight that, that you need. Weight. Yes. <laughs> so next, we want to show you how easy it is. Now that I've got this ready to go in push quilting, um, what we can do to put it on a frame. Ooh. So right here on our side, we've got the cutie breeze. We've all got it. We've got some fabric there. So I'm going to pull this fabric up. And I'm going to get my threads all cut so we can bring it over. And I'll come through the back. Now, because... Jenna, do you need my help to carry that over here? You know, I think I'm okay. Okay. Because, but I am going to um, give you this extension cord so we can plug it in on that other side. All right. Oh. The I'll see if I can television. find a plug. Right, yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, again... It's just 26 pounds, really easy to move. You can hold it from the arm. You can hold it from the handle. Really great, easy. Just gonna slide this on in. Now you can see with the cutie breeze, this handle up here is right. higher. So I'm not gonna have any problems engaging right. with this section, right? So for those of you that already have a cutie, you're used to those handles being below. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was one of the things that people, that um, they would like that upper handle, mm -hmm. right? So we're like, well, let's give them what they want, right? Yeah. So now we've got this upper handle. This piece right here, this one's new. Now we talked about it. Yes. We haven't shown it yet. So does anybody remember what it is? It's the handle control. So just like we were saying before, you can pull your foot pedal, try and put it in the front, but then you're kicking it back and forth. You can disengage the foot pedal, use the start and stop button, but right. that's down here and your yeah, hands your are handles here. are right there. So now this piece, this is a start and stop. It plugs in where your foot pedal goes, which is right back here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna turn on the machine and we're gonna get this fabric all set. So there's our machine getting set. All right, we've got our fabric here. Let's pull our... We've got it all pieced together, so we are ready. If you'll put it through oh. here first, yeah. So sorry. That's okay. So on the Cutie Breeze, there is a... Jana, my lock. side first. Oh, your side first. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there we go. All right, my side first. And then my side then is your side. in. Okay, so this is a knob set so that they're all locked in. So we're, we're all righty tighty lefty from loosey. Exactly. Yeah. So we're going to put our sandwich that we've got here. Oh, let's go this direction. So the name is the right direction. All right. Now I'm going to put it underneath the hopping foot, put it on the top here, up and over, get our fabric all straightened out. There Make we sure we have our whole sandwich here. Now, when you're putting a machine on the frame, this back rail, you want to put your finger underneath the rail for, um, to see how much space you have. Now, if you could move your finger in and out easily, mm -hmm. that might be a little bit too much space. So you can bring your, just pull down them out. Just a hair. Just a little bit so that your fingers are set and then you clip it back down. All right. Okay, so let's get our clips. Do we okay. have our. We've got some handy dandy clips right here. Now, this is our new clip you can see here. It has the uh, corrugated, so it fits on those square rails. And then this is a new clip. No more bungee straps. No more. That you they accidentally sew. sewed over. We used to accidentally sew them. <laughs> so we've got these clips that come through, so the fabric will loop up in the back of it. So I'm going to clip that in, and then I can wrap this fabric around if it was big enough. Right. In this case, we've just got a little bit smaller, yep, so we're not so going to have that issue. So we're just going to leave it, and then we'll put these clips in the front. Same thing. Same kind of clip. Just so gonna in go the in the front. Oh, let's grab that one from the front. We didn't practice beforehand, guys. <laughs> we're winging it. No, no. Oh, we're doing great. Okay, so you want to make sure that that's. Again, now you can notice that the as we change the back rail, the front rail is a little bit high. Right. So we want to bring that, that down. down. So we're gonna adjust that so that it's not 
too high. So you don't want it higher in the back or the front. You want that all set. So we're gonna clip that on. Smooth that down. Now this is your ratchet system, right? So coming in and out, you can see, makes it tighter or looser. Now, depending on what machine you're using, you'll wanna test out what that is. And don't panic, guys. You can see me struggling. It's because they're brand new. They're <laughs> nice and tight. But that's great. So with, with using these, one thing is, is try not to separate your hands because you won't have that strength between them. So if right. you're pushing down separately, um, then you're gonna have the issues of, oh, I won't have that strength. Right. So we have a question from Tracy. Why are the front and black clips different colors? Well, besides this part here, it also helps you to know which one goes in the front, which one goes in the back. Right. So that gives you that idea of, oh, this is, this is where these go, okay? So let me, I think I'm gonna, adjust that. I think I'm going to adjust that just a little bit again. Now I'm going to pull up my um, needle or my bobbin thread again. Oh, it looks like it pulled out my needle. So let me readjust so this. So speaking of that, you're re-threading. Um, how easy is it to re-thread then? Because everything is pad printed on the side. Mm -hmm. so, so everything here, it tells me from step one to step 10, right on the side right here, exactly how to thread that. So I'm just coming through here and threading again my needle, and I'm gonna hold on to my thread this time so instead it of letting it off. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna press my button here for my needle up, needle down, so I can pull up my bobbin thread. Now, people have asked, why do you pull up the bobbin thread when you're doing that? And the reason for that is then you don't have that thread all the way in the back all the time. Right. So here's my start. So you can see. So there's my start. So I'm just starting and stopping with my button here, not having issues with that. And then yes, it's got all my stitch regulation going because it's watching with that optical encoder. Right. And it's, it's able to and do. It's smooth and it's nice. Yeah, and, and then I'm moving it along. I'm just using my handles this way. I'm not having to, to worry about, you know, mm -hmm. am I keeping it? What is this here? So this has, there's a couple of different things here. You can see this foam insert. It will fit, there's gonna be two of them with the Cutie Breeze. So it will fit either your L-class bobbins or your M-class bobbins. So whichever size you have, you put that insert in and then you can sit all your raw bobbins right in here. Also it has a hole right here in the front. So where did our scissors go? I can just stick my scissors right there. I'm all ready to go with my scissors. It also has a magnet right down in here so I can put my pins here. So if you've put your pins along, you're doing an applique and mm -hmm. you're keeping it together, then you just pull them off and stick them in there. So really like, I know. so much fantastic. Yeah. And because it's higher, it allows this, the machine to come through to the front without having to try and like, oh, it's, right. it's, it's limited and I need extended handles. You can bring right. them all the way up the front. Yep. Okay, so we've, I want to, I feel like we need to go over everything because we've I had know. so much stuff that we've talked about and we want to say um, what's what's in the machine what can the machine do all those kinds of things right so first thing we've got it's the little rebel right it oh. can do so much stuff right right <laughs> right and Ooh, we'll, look at us <laughs> <laughs> back and forth so okay so here's a question from Denise I want to make sure we get all our questions so right. is there a table extension so you can use rulers not yet right it's one of they're the things they're developing so they're gonna have a table um, uh, ruler base right. so they can use it with frames. Mm -hmm. So they'll have that available. So be prepared, that's coming up. The other thing that they're developing right now is a walking foot. Mm -hmm. So not yet, they were right. hoping to get it done, but we just couldn't wait to launch it. And we're like, right. get yeah. that later, we, we wanna have it now. Christmas. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so we wanted it right away. Um, so questions about what, you know, what, 
frames it can fit on. It right. can fit on any frame yep. that has the space. So the base of the, the little rebel, it's a little bit wider, but it's not the full. It's about nine inches wide right? and 24 inches, not 24 inches. Yes, 24 yes. inches yes. Um, back and front. Right. So if that fits on your frame carriage for, with your domestic currently, so if you're using right. a Q-Zone hoop, you're using old continuum, you're using other frames and different things, right. whatever you're using, you know. Yep, as long as, long as it's it going to fit that area. So, yes, yeah, so your all, of our current, well. all of our current frames then? Yes. All of our current frames, All of yeah. our current frames. And then a lot of our older frames. Yes, because again, you've got these little, this piece right here, the start and stop button, that control box. So you saw how easy it was. My thumb just came up and started it, mm -hmm. and I'm quilting, and I'm not having to reach to the front, even though it's so easy right here. It's right. still accessible, that start and but stop. But it's so much easier not to move my hands. Exactly. <laughs> Fingertip. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so start and stop. Right. You can use it on any other frame. We'll get the ruler base is coming out. The walking foot is coming out. All those hopping feet that are interchangeable, mm -hmm. that work with all of our machines. Yeah. So I just wanted to go over again what comes in the box. Okay. We, we went over that, and I felt like we did it kind of fast. Okay. So instruction manual right tension book uh your little uh reference card right panels of fabric and samples of thread you don't have to do anything i don't have to go to the store before i use this i'm mm -hmm. just ready when i get it exactly and and really you know you can see here this is the first time we're moving it ourselves like before we right. set it up we test it and then we show it mm -hmm. the fact that we were doing it on live tv you can yeah. see we've never set it up on live tv yeah, so in front of everybody things to do right like right. you want to just make sure you know, is is the hopping foot on correctly? Did I have exactly. that tool with it me? high enough, right? Exactly. <laughs> is it going to work okay? Is this high enough, right? Do you have this set so that it's it's ready mm -hmm, to go right. and you're not going to have that section? Same thing with when you're you're getting it set for push quilting. You want to mm -hmm. make sure your hopping foot when you're switching it out, you get that the right height. So as you're push quilting, you're not going to have a problem with that. Right. Um, also, the handle. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, we're talking about the box. I'm sorry, I'm getting oh, out of yes. place. So we're talking about the box. Yes. Okay, sewing base. 18, 18 by, by 24. 24. So that's going to go around the outside of the machine. Mm -hmm. So you have just a little bit extra space to hold your fabric. So it's not just the base. Right. Get that other section as it goes along. Also, what else comes with it? Foot pedals. Foot. Seven foot foot pedal. Seven feet. Again, that foot pedal, right? It's got that yep. design, that grace on there. It's I have to remodel feet. my whole sewing room blue and white now because it has <laughs> the go. mat. And it has that wonderful winding cord. So as you're putting it on, you can put it to the direction. If you don't need seven feet, you can just yeah, wind it up to what up. you need yep. to be. With those grips, right, it's got on there. Now, if you've got a tiled floor or mm -hmm. wood floor, these grips will keep it from, from moving around very, very far. Yeah. Yep. Okay, also in the box comes um, a regular hopping foot that we've got on there now. It has Park the presser quilting, foot right? with the different um, allowances also gets a ruler foot so if you're using just rulers with the base right now before mm -hmm. you put it on the frame you can use that what else does it come with three bobbins three, Ooh, three bobbins. bobbins yes ready to load and the one is in the bobbin case area one is by the bobbin winder and then one is in the toolbox which is again something that comes with it right needle All magnet allen wrenches your cleaning brush your, your oil, oil. Yep. Um, you can it's your own maintenance. You don't have to bring it in every year to nope. have it maintenance by a service tech. If you're just following the oiling schedule, mm -hmm. make sure you're cleaning out that stuff. Right. You're not okay. having to worry about it as much. Yep. Okay. And then don't forget our, um, sorry, quilting cover. Oh, sorry. yes. My brain the needle went, plate. The ne yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that needle plate covers it. So that it turns yep. into quilting mode and, and engages that optical encoder, mm -hmm. which is, you, you saw us, we just brought it over. We didn't have to engage right on, any comes encoders. Right back off. Yeah. You don't have to put anything on there, wheels or anything. So it's all ready to go. It's fantastic. And then the th four different needle packs. Oh, yes. 18, 16, 14, and 12. And that's 10, so mm, 40, 40 needles. Different needles. That's that great need. to start, right? Everything to get started, right? Um, and then the Teflon frictionless mat. Right. So you put it on there, sit the machine on top. It keeps it from sliding, sliding around. around. It helps its vibration. Mm -hmm. And of course, it doesn't come with an automatic needle threader and inserter, 
but there's a little there's tool, gonna to a tool to help. Yep. Because we all need a little help, you know. I do. Glasses, <laughs> a child. Right. Something. <laughs> exactly. So it's all set together so that you can easily get started with your machine. And then just as a reminder, it's 1,600. Yes, that's yes. right. 1,600 stitches per minute. So it's strong. So whether you're stitching or quilting, mm -hmm. you can go through canvas, denim, leather. You're able to do all of that. It's not going to be... No, nope, you know, you're not unsure or get like stuck that. halfway through because exactly. it, it's not strong enough. <laughs> it's like huh? the motor's not going to yeah. keel over because it's not strong you enough. Smell that? <laughs> yes. What's that smell? Yeah, and then also it's going to have um, uh, the ability to to go through that harp allows you to put right. You can see how much space you have here if you have a right. giant um, quilt yep. either on a machine or on the frame. You you're just have, have all that space. Yep. Yeah. Do we forget anything? I don't try to go through my mind all the different things that, that it comes see. with. Yeah, that light in the bobbin, one oh, of the my favorites, case. right? Light in the bobbin, light case in the bobbin area. area because it's dark, and, and it's a bobbin case on. It's a front loader, right? So that you're not having to drop it down in. It's mm -hmm. or I guess a side loader, depend front this way. Yeah, side it's, an, of your it's an easy turn. It's but an I easy. can see it with the light, so and it's easy to grab. There's no right cover. cover you have to open. Anything. Yeah. Nope. Okay, let's see if there's any more questions we missed out. Okay, so can you buy the handle separately? I think you're referring to these on the Cutie Breeze. Yes, they will be available, available. to order separately if you have um, the Cutie. Your Cutie and you'd like to have them up top. And they yep. will only work on the Cutie tabletop or the Cutie Breeze. They won't right. work on other frames because of the wheels are only designed for the Cutie tabletop or the Cutie Breeze. Right. Okay, was there... Can you talk about the QCT6 software? Ooh, Angela. Oh, can we? We can mm. give you a little. <laughs> we'll give you a tip. hint. Yeah, so, so the QCT6 is going to be edge to edge quilting, and then we'll have QCT6 plus. That's going to be like our QCT5 beginnings, and then QCT6 Pro will be just like the Pro. So then we're, we're renaming it, but that right. doesn't mean it's changing that much. Nope. The six will be edge to edge quilting and we'll have a demonstration here soon coming up so you can see all that that yes, looks like. So stay tuned because it's going to be amazing and yeah. it'll give you all the it's information. Not, not today. So yes. <laughs> maybe in the future we'll have that. And then again, QCT six, six plus is going to be the same as five beginnings and six pro will be the same as um, five pro. Now, if you already have five, and you're like, oh, how do? It, oh no, what be, am I going to do? How am I going to get six? It'll be part of the update. It'll go to six, so you'll have that option right. of the edge-to-edge -edge quilting that QCT6 already has. But the little rebel is completely compatible with yep, all with of all that. Of them. Yep. So when you're using it on the cutie, or you're using it on other frames, the you evolution have the, frame, yeah, you're ready. You're ready to go. Mm -hmm. All you need, you know, you don't have to be like, oh, is it compatible? Yeah, the QCT6 oh, but you need so much more rebel. hardware. No, nope, you're ready. Yeah. Okay, was there any other questions we missed? Just want to make sure we got everything. I was just wondering if you could go over the packages really quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, so there's the Just a Little Rebellion. That's the machine and a, of course, matching. Right, Navy, My Comfort Cutter. My Comfort Cutter. It's 45 millimeter, so you're going to have that. Then the Shaking Up the System is the next set. Now that is the same thing. It's got the little rebel, the cover cutter, and then a little bit a more. A little merch box, yeah, right? Merch That's box. what we're calling it. So you get the nine and a half <laughs> by nine and a half ruler that you, know, you can use with your comfort cutter. Right. Some true grips, um, a special little rebel four pack thread that matches all the colors of the little rebel because you know, of course, oh, you want to make yeah, a quilt you match. Or, or anything like that. Some stickers, a change the world mug, and an HBQ, which is home base quilter. Bag so that you can carry all your stuff with it. Yep. And then finally, um, it's a full on anarchy. <laughs> That's me. I, love I am that. full on anarchy. So it's all that from before, but you also get the cutie the breeze. Cutie breeze with it. Now, if you wanted to um, have the cutie, if you're like, well, I like the cutie breeze, but I actually want a bigger frame. Right. You can get that for 50% off of that frame yep. with the full on accurate key package. Instead of that cutie breeze, right? Mm -hmm. But what if I do want that QCT6? You can add it to any of the packages. Mm -hmm. So if you just have the little rubble, because you already have um, 
the uh, frame, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, I just want the Rebel and the QCT6, you can buy it. Huh? If you're like, oh, I want the full, the just shaking up the system, because again, I have a frame, right. but I want the merch bundle, and I want a um, QCT6, you can add that. Okay. And then finally, I want the Evolution 12 foot frame with my little Rebel and, and automation. There you go. Full on all anarchy. Right. Get that 50% off. Mm -hmm. Put the QCT6 on that. You're all set. All right. We've got a million packages here that'll work. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just mix and match whatever fits for you. Just, you know, the little Rebel. I've, I've, I've had fun today. I hope oh, everybody, I yes. you've had fun having us watch us do all the fun stuff on the little Rebel. So. Well, thank you guys for showing off the Little Rebel. I'm really excited about it. You know, before I started sewing myself, I was a sewing machine enthusiast. So I went down the rabbit hole and I started <laughs> becoming a fan of all of the iconic machines, like the Featherweight, the Bernina right. Record. Um, I think the Juki TL is going to be one that in 20, 30 years, people are going to look back and be like, oh, it's such a good model. And right. that's what I see happening with the Little Rebel. I see it being one of those machines that achieves iconic status because it was one of the first to do everything pretty much. Right. So thank you very much for coming on and showing us a little rebel. Uh, we're super excited. Jeremy and I are flying out to grace in a couple of weeks to come yeah. learn more about the machines and hopefully we get a chance to play with the little rebel a little bit, but we're, yeah, we're super course. excited. Yeah. For right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go over pricing and stuff and I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Hey, thanks. thanks so much, friend. See you guys later. Awesome. Well, I'm really happy that I got a chance to see it in the Little Rebel in action. Um, I, my mind is still just blown that you can sit down push quilt with built-in stitch regulation, throw it on a machine and piece with it. It's really cool. And there's one thing I want to talk about with it. You know, there's a lot of people out there that uh, have considered, you know, people with that are members of quilt guilds and stuff, they've considered long arming, um, not just for themselves, but as a business. I, I know a handful of people who have thought about getting into it. And it could be a really great business because it's something you enjoy and, you know, you get to, you know, make a little money on the side. But a, a huge drawback is the cost to start that business. The startup cost is massive sometimes, especially if you're getting one of those giant long arm machines. So the first thing that I thought when I saw the Little Rebel is, wow, this is a great way to get into that. Start my own long arm business with something small that's not that expensive and then build as I go. Honestly, looking at the price packages compared to what it would normally cost to get a long arm machine that can do all that stuff is pretty steep. So let's go over the pricing one more time. So if you just want the little Rebel, you don't want the frame because you already have one, you don't need the software, that is the little Rebel, just a little rebellion package. The MSRP is $34.99. The pre-order price is $24.99. But of course, if you call us, we will beat that price. Hold on one second. Keep going? Okay. <laughs> so uh, the next step up is the little rebel shaking up the system. That is the machine. Plus you get some swag, you get the thread, and you get some true cut products that my comfort cutter. Um, the MSRP on that is 3219 The current pre-order price is $2,750. But if you call in before the end, the end of the day today, there's a better price than that sale price. The next one in the line is the full on anarchy package. Now this is kind of a two part package. So I'm going to call this full on, full on anarchy a, and that is with the cutie breeze, the little rebel and all of that swag that has an MSRP of $3,732 and a sale price of $3,189. And then we've got to talk about the full on anarchy B that is the same as the full-on anarchy but you get qct6 which we are so excited to find out more about qct6 because automation like i said before that startup cost is crazy so thank you to grace for being mindful of the cost of this machine because it really is more accessible for some of us who maybe you know a lot there's a lot of sit down push quilts that are four thousand dollars just for the machine so you really get a lot out of this and i can see it being a really great thing for all of our customers who you know, love quilting out there. So anyway, um, that said, we have a giveaway to do. And then um, I actually see our next educator down there in the backstage. Hey, Amanda. So we wrapped up the uh, last segment a little bit early. If you're willing to come on a little early, give me a thumbs up. Oh, she gave me two thumbs up. Okay. So let's do the giveaway. In fact, let's bring her up. Let's do the giveaway with her. Amanda, Hi, what's up? Hi. How are you doing? Go ahead. Let's hey, do so that. I, I figured we'd bring you up because I know that you would do this enthusiastically with us. You've been watching. You know we've been drumming, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you're gonna drum with us. Alex, ready, yeah. set, go. Here we go. Carolyn Langer. I, I think she may have won already too. So she's one of the people that's got two entries. So super jealous. <laughs> Some people are just so lucky. I'm not one of them. But that's Did okay. you hear my mom I, in the I, background? She goes, hey. <laughs> 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 hey, uh, well, listen, I feel even though I'm not lucky and I can't win, I feel blessed and lucky to be able to give out these prizes. So oh, absolutely. With that said, with that said Amanda, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do? Yeah. So my name is Amanda and my business is Uniquely Mateo and I geek out over all things Jelly Roll rugs. And if you've never heard of a Jelly Roll rug before, hopefully you might have heard of a Jelly Roll, which is going to be your wonderful two and a half inch strips of fabric. And you use that in combination with your batting to make wonderful handmade washable rugs. And a lot of people kind of get into their crafting rut in a way. You kind of find what you love and you're very uncomfortable kind of branching out of that. So if you're looking for something to try that's new, if you're looking to branch out or just do anything, it is more beginner friendly than it looks, but it is also just a wonderful change of pace. So what I can talk about is Sewing Parts Online does offer all the patterns to make these rugs. And let me give you an example of the pattern with its corresponding rug, just to show you guys the wonderful versatility that these rugs have. So a little backstory, I took a sewing class at a local quilt shop probably about close to three years ago now, and I just made one rug and I kind of went crazy from there. <laughs> I decided mm -hmm. at first I was like, okay, let me just do each holiday, right? Holidays are coming. I'll do a Halloween, a Christmas and it just exploded. So what most people are familiar with and what initially came out is the standard Jelly Roll rug pattern. And this is your oval. And I would say if you're looking to start and you've never done it, this is going to be, I have a little tiny tot. So in case you guys get to hear any little extra wonderful chaos, my mom's working on it. But this is the most standard. This is your oval. And as I mentioned before, here's your one example of your oval shape. And all of these rugs are machine washable too. So if you have dogs, if you have little ones, if you're just clumsy or anything, you just throw it in the washer and just let it air dry though. You're not gonna wanna put it in the dryer. If you forget, it's not the end of the world, but letting it air dry on the floor is gonna help the longevity of your rug. Now I will say too, Brian, I forgot to mention two things. One, I'm not gonna be able to see the comments while I'm doing this. Okay. So you are more than welcome to either interrupt me or wait till the end. I don't have okay. a preference, whatever works for you. And secondly, I'm going to go ahead and take y'all on an adventure with me. I was going to set up two different cameras, but I decided I needed more angles than that because I really want to give you guys a close up. So in transition, it's going to be fun, but it'll be worth it because I really want you guys to see everything. But moving okay. on after that, we also have your circle, which is also, I would say a really good beginner friendly. So here's a wonderful example of your circle. And next up, they do have a rectangle. Now the bonus points of your rectangle is they do awesome half rugs. That's gonna be different than what I'm gonna show you a little later. I kind of went a little crazy and veered from the pattern. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys today. But let me go ahead and ask my mom to turn that down real quick. Can you all hear that? I don't hear anything. You don't I'll hear it? No? no? Okay. No. Okay, then we'll, we'll let it be. We'll let you know if people start commenting that they're getting distracted or anything. But okay. um, anyway, so I just want to say really quickly that I love, the, I love Jelly Roll Rugs because it's a fantastic opportunity to practice binding because the first step is essentially the same as sewing it together like binding. And I also love that it's basically just a bunch of sewing with a lot of other projects. When I first got started, I would try to make a quilt or I would try to make something. I'd be like, there's not very much sewing involved in this. This is almost like 95% sewing. So this it's is, a great project yeah. to sit down at your machine. 
So I'm going to let you go ahead and get started. And then if you need me to pull up when you transition, let me know, okay? Sure. Yeah. Cool. And just like Brian said, it is a lot of sewing, which for me personally, I like. So initially, I'm dabbling more into quilting now. But one thing that I found intimidating about quilting is it's a lot of go, stop and go. It's a lot of cutting. And that would stress me out initially. So that's another reason why I love the jelly roll rugs, because in big picture, it's really four steps on repeat so you don't have to overstress or overthink also you can get your jelly roll rugs or your jelly rolls pre-cut you can get your batting pre-cut which i'll also show you so especially for anybody that's starting or gets anxiety about cutting in this there could be essentially zero prep time if you wanted to get it pre-cut let me showcase the other patterns really quick oh i didn't show you the example of the rectangle let me show you that real quick just to show you all the different versatilities that it has, I've got the pattern I couldn't find. I know Sewing Parts Online has this one, but I couldn't find it to physically show you. So I apologize for that. But you can do a tree skirt. Look, how cool is that? Getting ready for Christmas. And there are two more that I don't have examples on because I'm getting ready to try it myself for the first time. There is a Jelly Roll handbag. And they also have pillows and placemats. Now I will say I teach the four shapes that I showed you. I teach virtual self-paced sewing classes. And if you find patterns a little confusing, if you're really new to sewing, or if you just want to be a part of a community, I have a lot of people that join this just because it's fun to interact with other people that you know are making the same project. Um, if you want to do that, you're also welcome to join my class. I will say my class is in addition to the pattern. So you would still need the pattern. So just think of it as a little bonus. So if you decide to do my class, feel free to check it out. As I mentioned in the beginning, my name is Amanda, but my business is Uniquely Mateo. And what's wonderful is each shape or each class is a shape and it goes for a month long and it's self-paced. So if you have a hectic work schedule or if, you know, you just kind of don't know when you're going to have the time, you can't commit to a day, that's okay. I've got your back. So I'm going to try these and hopefully if I love them as much as I think I will, I'm going to add those classes as well. But currently, I only personally offer the oval, circle, rectangle, and tree skirt. But if you guys want to join, that'd be awesome. I love seeing everybody else's creations. Now, if you have ever made a jelly roll rug, and I know Brian mentioned the binding, one of the steps that you do on repeat is, in essence, you will bind your fabric with the batting. Now, actually, before I show you that tool, that has recently blown my mind, batting, which reminds me. So let me show you real quick. Now, this one I've kind of already rolled up, but this is a bunch of your fabric strips. These rugs are made out of just your two and a half inch fabric strips and batting. Now you can get it pre-cut and this will also save you a lot of time. And Sewing Parts Online has two different sizes. So if you hop on and you're going shopping, getting ready for your class, you will notice that there is a two and a half and a two and a quarter pre-cut. Now, if you look, let me give you all a closer look. Now, if you're shopping online and maybe one's out of stock or if they're both there and you're not sure which one to get, first and foremost, both will get the job done. I wouldn't stress too much about that. Um, I have a minor preference, like super teeny tiny. Um, I do think the two and a quarter is a little easier if you're new. Um, it'll help you when you do your binding. Now, let me show you an example of that. So your two and a quarter is going to give you some more wiggle room when you're doing that fold. So if you're new, I would kind of lean towards the two and a quarter. But if you've already made them before, then two and a half is just going to give you a little more volume. So I now prefer the two and a half just to give a little more batting to my rug. But again, if one's available over or the other, or if you already have some, don't change it. Don't worry. Don't stress. Both will get the job done. But let me show you what I mean. So this is a two and a half inch strip. 
And this is a two and a half inch batting. So when you put them right on top of each other, when you are getting ready, you're gonna have them fold in the middle. And I'm gonna show you all on the table too. So in case this isn't very clear, that's okay. You're gonna fold it in the middle and fold again. Well, having the batting go edge to edge with your two and a half just gives you that tight squeeze. If you have your two and a quarter, it's gonna give you a little more wiggle room. But as I mentioned before, the difference is really minor. I wouldn't stress too much about it between the two. I just want you to know that those options are there because in case you hop online, you're super excited to get going and then you feel stuck. Or for me, a lot of my anxiety comes from, I don't wanna spend money that I don't have to. <laughs> so if I see it, I'm gonna start thinking, I don't know which one to get, I don't wanna return it and I'll make it way more complicated than it needs to be. So definitely wanted to give you guys that heads up on the multiple options. So, but into the binding. So really in this, class, I want to really talk about two things. One is a new tool that is a total game changer for jelly roll rugs, even for myself, who is a diehard jelly roll rug person. And then second, I'm going to show you guys how to have a lot of fun with these rugs. And we're going to make a watermelon sliced rug. But first is the new tool. Clover has come out with a, I can't remember what it's called, fabric tube maker. And this is awesome. There are a lot of tube makers out there and there are a lot of very kind of similar to a bias tape maker. Now, prior to this tool, I did not like any of the other ones. I have had some people that have taken my class that really love them. So I'm not saying they're all awful. They just weren't for me because if you've ever used them before, it's really difficult to get it started. It's a really tight squeeze. I never felt like it gave me a tight enough binding so I never liked it. But let me show you what Clover came out with that made it wonderful. When you look up the other tube makers, all the ones that I've seen is a one part system. This one is a two. Whoop. And it also comes in four pieces. So if you open your box and you only see two, don't panic. They interlock with each other. So let me show you how that works. So you're going to have your one bigger piece and there's like these two little knobs here. You're just going to push up and that's going to open that up. So you do have four and same thing with the smaller one. We're going to go ahead. Let me show you up here. You got your two little tabbies right here. We're going to push up. Hiya. And it's going to split that up for you. And what we are going to do. And let me show you again. I'm going to show you while I'm standing. And then I'm going to take you all to the machine as well, just so you guys can see how would you do it if you didn't have this and kind of the benefits that come if you do. So let's get back to our fabric strip and we're going to grab our wonderful batting and we're going to place our batting on the wrong side of this wonderful fabric. And we're just going to put them one on top of the other. Now what you would do, just like how you fold your binding, we're gonna have these meet in the middle and we're gonna grab our first tool. And you want it to be open. So right now I don't have those two pieces together. Let me show you how easy this is, buddy. We're gonna take our fold and look at how much space there is. And you're just gonna put it boop, right on in there. You no longer have to worry about getting your stiletto out. You don't have to kind of finagle with it and try to get it in having those pieces separate make it so much easier to feed in your batting and your fabric because it's a lot of bulk but after you get that in there you're going to grab your second piece hope i can get you guys a good angle and you'll hear it Whoop. you want it to be in the middle i messed up there and i will do smoother on the table <laughs> well let's see we're going to get it right there and you want it to lock on in and when you pull it through, whoop, it is nice and secure. Now, let me go ahead and show you that second piece. And I promise I'll be smoother in just a second. Here we go. Your second piece. You want to make sure that that middle part is off. And for those of you that haven't folded binding, what we do is we have our two pieces meet in the middle. And then we're going to fold it over one more time. So you're going to want to get it into place. And we're going to take that second piece and we're just going to put it right on in. Oh, 
Ha ha, I grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> and we're just gonna put it right on in here. And go ahead and interlock our wonderful little guy. Ta-da! So that's what it's gonna look like when it's all together. But why I like this, and again, on the machine I'll show you, you're gonna pull the one, and this second piece kind of has like a little divider in there. So when you pull on it, it kind of gives it like a hard crease. When you do your second one, that folds it right on into place. Now this is awesome for many reasons. One, it's gonna give your fold a really consistent fold. One of the things with these rugs, consistency is key. Whether it comes to your where you're stitching, your zigzags, and your folds. And I, you want this to be as even as possible. If when you are folding, you find to where you're not having them line up right, it's gonna make it much harder on you when you're sewing. So one of the things that I like about it is it gives me a really beautiful, consistent binding when I'm doing this. And let me go ahead and let's get to the table so I can show you kind of how that looks like. I am gonna give you guys a bonus. I didn't tell this to Brian either. Surprise. <laughs> One thing I do wanna show you before we sit down. In all of the RJ Designs patterns, which is the person that does come out with all of these patterns, the way they finish their rugs is they taper it where it blends right back into your rug. It's really beautiful. Now, the way I do it is just a little different. I really like to showcase the ends of my fabric. So let me give you an example. Instead of having it blend back in, I put a little handmade ribbon on the end of it. And because I'm wanting to show you how I start when I'm using my clover, I also wanna show you how I add that tag. Now, this step is not gonna be on the pattern. And if you want that tapered look, definitely the pattern's gonna have your back. But I wanted to go ahead and hop on and show you how I do that. So we're gonna grab our clover fabric tube makers and we're gonna head on over to the machine so I can give you some tips on how I finish my rugs, how the difference of before and after of what this awesome little tool makes and the difference on where you put your stitches when you're making your binding. Um, so Brian, if you don't mind hopping on real quick, I'm gonna run you guys over to my machine real fast. Sounds good, Amanda. So while she does that, uh, Amanda, I'm gonna mute you. Just give me a thumbs up when you're ready, okay? You got it. Okay, so um, while she does that, I wanna talk about uh, what I think is really cool about these rugs is they make great gifts. Uh, I talk about my friend Deb all the time and that's because she's my best sewing buddy and I love hanging out with her and starting new projects. But she has been making Jelly Roll rugs. She just started getting into them because of Amanda's segment from her last time she joined us. And she has been doing it with, um, with Steelers fabric. So uh, they're really, really great if you have uh, grandsons who are in college or uh, husbands, cousins, brothers who like football or baseball or anything like that. Or if you have a granddaughter who likes specific books or movies like Harry Potter or uh, the or Star Wars or something, you can get licensed fabric. Now I know Amanda talks about sometime, uh, sometimes picking the right print for Jelly Roll Rugs because sometimes the print is too big and it just doesn't come out right. And I'm sure when she comes back up, she'll clarify on that a little bit, but they make really, really good gifts for people. So um, that said, I'm going to talk about the, let's see. Oh, no, I don't have the overlays yet, but that's okay. It looks like Amanda's almost done anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute it and we can talk about the fabric. All right, Amanda, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So did you hear me talk about the fabric? Do you want to touch on that a little bit? I sure did. I would love to. So when it comes to picking out your fabric, small prints are going to be your best friends. I have done some larger. It's it's not impossible, but let me show you why. Let me wiggle this over so I can give you guys a good example. When your rug is done, each tube that you are going to make is only going to be a little over half an inch. So if you have a really awesome print that has just a big cameo on it or big something, it's just going to slice and dice it. This is probably not the best example, but 
because there's no prints on it. But let me grab another one really fast just to show you what I mean. It's worth the wait. Give me two seconds. There we go. Amanda, I do so, have to say that I always love seeing your machine set up. It's your, everything <laughs> of yours is so colorful and it makes me so happy. For the longest time, I swore I wasn't going to put any stickers on my machine because it's, I mean, sewing machines are expensive and it's our babies, right? So forever, it was untouchable. And then one day, I don't know, I kind of snapped and then I did the total opposite. I went from nothing to just saturated it with happiness. <laughs> But here's where you can see this one, for example, it's really not going to give you, like I said, a little over half an inch. So having these smaller prints make it really fun to where you can still showcase it. Now, I know Brian mentioned as far as the licensed fabrics, I have made, for example, a Harry Potter jelly roll rug, and I was able to get it to where it actually says Harry Potter along the display of where that binding shows. So it's not impossible where there is a will, there's always a way, but I would just be mindful of that when you're picking out your fabric because you're obviously gonna pick fabric you love, but you also wanna make sure you can showcase your fabric at its best. So those are definitely not deal breakers, but just things to keep in mind. So let's grab, now later on, we're gonna be breaking down because I geek out with all things watermelon, or not watermelon, jelly roll rugs, I saw that watermelon print and it just occurred to me when I had the circle rugs. I thought, oh my gosh, watermelon would be perfect. So I have been geeking out over these wonderful watermelon jelly roll rugs. Now, what I do when I start mine, let's go ahead and back it on up. I bought this wonderful double-sided handmade ribbon. And what I do, and in order to give you guys a good view, I kind of am at a weird wonky angle. So hopefully it won't be too crazy, but it's worth it because I want you guys to have the best front row seat. You're going to want to give about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch difference on when it starts because we are going to, oh, there we go. We're going to fold that over. And then again, we're going to fold it like we do our binding. We're going to have these two give each other a hug, right? Meet in the middle. Hello. Nice little hug. And then we're going to fold it over one more time. And that's the start of our binding. And because we folded it over, we have that nice little clean edge. What I do is I take my little ribbon and I fold it in half. And I'm going to place it inside the sandwich. Now, when you are making your jelly roll rugs, the smooth side is going to be what's showcased on the outside of your rug. The butterfly side that has the kind of double here is going to be facing inward. I like to stand up my little handmade, if it says anything, to be facing the direction with the smooth side. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and anchor this ribbon by putting a straight line whoop, right here. Now, let me go ahead and get that going. And I go all the way down and I bring it all the way back. Quite a few times I have issues. Because these are going to go on the floor, I really want to give it as much strength as possible. It is hopefully going to be used and abused and loved. So I want to make sure that it is ready for use. So now that I have that cut let me go ahead and this is another thing that's awesome so the clover fabric tube maker whether you're in the middle of the project or you're just starting you can always add it later so i wanted you to know i did not forget about you or the clover but i want to show you what life is like if you don't have one now you don't have to have one in order to make this rug that is not the issue but there's so many perks for it. Now here I'm doing the same thing that we did when we're standing. I'm having the two meet in the middle and folding over one more time. And what I'm gonna do is now, if you're doing this, you're gonna have to make a decision. No pressure, but this is where it comes into play. Let me put my needle down. And this, when you're kind of in the beginning, you kind of finagle a little bit just to get into your rhythm. Let me go ahead and clean that up. I'm gonna do a couple of stitches forward and back stitch. Now, a lot of people 
when they see my rugs, whoa, I didn't realize earthquake, everybody. There we go. When they see my rugs, they notice I stitch right in the middle. And that confuses some people because when they took the class or when they make their rugs, let me go ahead and give you an example. Let's fold the binding. I want to give you guys a closer look. So we'll make a pretend one here. When I stitch, I stitch right in the middle. And I like to do that because one, it lines up right in the middle of my foot. So you can sew in the middle or you can sew on the side. Neither option, like the batting is wrong. It's going to be whatever your preference is. Whatever you decide to do, I would try your best to stick with it though. Because the more consistent you are, the better your rug is going to look in the end. So if you go in the middle, try your best to stay in the middle. Or if you go on the side. Now, if you notice you're kind of dabbling between the two, that's okay too. We all got to learn. But try your best to stick with one. Now, there's goods and bads of both. Overall, for me, I feel like it's easier to go in the middle, like I said, because it lines up with my foot. But it'll also give your rug a more textured look. So as you'll see here, let me pull up my rug for you. I have it right in the middle and that's gonna give more texture to your rug. It also helps it lay flatter. Downside to that, it really showcases that thread. So what I like to do is always match my thread color with my fabric to help conceal that. Now, if you sew on the side of your binding, it's gonna line up just about where you have that zigzag. So one plus to that is it is gonna help conceal your thread. And it's also gonna give your rug a puffier look because there's not gonna be any stitching here. There is another perk that I'll show you as we sew the binding that the side is gonna give you over the middle. So again, just pick one <laughs> in the beginning and try to stick with it. And even if you change your mind later, when I first started making these rugs, I actually preferred the edge and I will show you why. But then the more I did it, I kind of liked the middle more because I felt like they laid flatter. So before the Clover Fabric Tube Maker, people will do this one or two ways. They will do it by hand, like I'm doing now. And having a table extension here is very helpful. I don't do wonder clips. Some people do, and I'll show you why in just a minute. But I lean this on my table. I will put my fabric in my batting. And then from the bottom down here, I will fold it to meet in the middle and then fold again. And I like to run my finger just to make sure it's nice and taut. And I'm looking for that nice and even fold like we were talking about earlier. Now, some people don't have this table space or some people also don't like how this motion is. They'd rather prep in advance. And where the hey, clothes, Amanda. yes. It, I, I already know the answer to this, but I do have to shamelessly plug. Is that an arrow table by chance? Oh my gosh, yes. This is the Aero Tasmanian. It is a game changer. So before I had this, I was just using whatever tables around the house and I would have significant shoulder pain because as we talked about earlier, a huge advantage of these rugs is you can sew for hours. If you have the time, it's ready for you. And I would spend all day sewing and then have immense pain in my shoulders. And I went YouTube crazy. I put little boxes under the table. I tried to get the posture to work and nothing really worked. This particular table is adjustable. Um, now my budget didn't allow the electric, <laughs> but there's a hand crank on the side. So if I'm cutting, I crank it on up and it's nice and high. Or if I'm cleaning, I like to have it high. And then when I'm ready to sew, I drop this baby down as low as it can go because I don't want any, any pain. Another perk to this that Arrow would probably discourage <laughs> is as I am sewing my Jelly Roll rug, you use an iron in the beginning because this is so thick and it's so many layers. I will actually put my iron right on top of my rug on the table and I don't put any mats or anything because only because it's so thick. Do not do that if you just have fabric or any other standard project. But I've done, I mean, easily, uh, probably close to 75 rugs on this table, if not more. And I've had zero issues, zero warping. It's 
fantastic. Um, but yes, if, if you can do it, I, even when they were doing their segment, I think they were the first day. I already have my, my little wish list for their cutting table. It looks amazing. Um, now, some people, when they do that, they are not comfortable doing it by hand like I am right now. What they have done is they will do this step for quite a while and they'll grab wonder clips and clip as they go for a decent bit and then sew. And that is where this is going to save those individuals an immense amount of time. For me personally, people have been asking me, hey, does it save you time? Um, I'm pretty fast without it. So I wouldn't say for me personally, it has saved a lot of time, but I think it does a couple of things that are wonderful. So let me show you a cup, what I was talking about earlier before we slap this on and show you the difference. As you can see here, I like to do, that's where my stitch is right in the middle. Now, if you are a beginner, I might suggest how we're talking about doing the side earlier. Because one of the risks you run by going in the middle is you want to capture all of those layers. And so here, like when I'm pulling apart my little butterfly, you can see you don't see the batting. If you are newer, going on the side is going to increase your odds of catching all those layers and keeping it nice and clean. So that's just another thing to keep in mind when you're deciding, do you want to do in the middle or on the side? But now... Let me go ahead and cut this. Let me show you what life is like with the clover. So let me go ahead and separate it like we did earlier. Break apart our four pieces. One, two, three, four. Now Amanda, it's going to be a, yes. Do you mind if we answer a couple of questions before we do the clover tool? Oh, not at all. Go for it. So Susie wants to know what foot you're using. Are you using your walking foot? Yes, so I am using my walking foot. Walking foots are not required to make these rugs, but they are extremely helpful. If you have a standard foot, that is fine. One thing that's also great about these rugs is you, as long as your sewing machine can do a straight stitch, and if it can do a zigzag up to five, then you're gonna be good to go. Walking foots are definitely a bonus, um, but not a requirement. Awesome. And then uh, we had a couple people asking what kind of thread and what kind of needle do you use? So for the needle, now when I take the class or took the class, excuse me, and they gave out a 16 denim and you're going to want a 14 or 16, whatever you pick, because these are so thick. Now I was doing the denim at first and my machine didn't like it. I was starting to get skip stitches really bad. And if you take my virtual class, one thing I've also noticed from other people is if they start to get sti skipping stitches, it's usually the needle. Now, in my machine's case, switching from a denim to a top stitch was life changing. Before doing that, I almost threw my machine out the window. I was going through different threads, different everything, and nothing was working. And I was surprised that after all that stress, the solution was a very inexpensive one, just changing the needle. Now, recently, majority of my classes, everybody has done the best with the top stitch. Now, last month, I did have somebody that was the opposite. They bought the top stitch because of my recommendation, and she had the same frustration. And when she switched to the denim, that was her answer. So for me and what I've seen with other people, top stitch is the way to go. However, it depends on your machine. We got to spoil our babies, right? We got to see what they like. Um, That's true. Yeah. So it just, you just got to talk to it, give it some love. Um, and as far as thread, this one's kind of like a hot debate <laughs> because one thing about jelly rolls is they eat a lot, a lot of thread. You will go through more thread than you've ever gone through. And I am a very frugal person. So I actually use Maxi Lock Serger thread. Um, and I'm almost positive. I believe it's a 50 weight. I'm, I'm like fairly certain. So I really love it because they also have a large variety of colors. And as I mentioned before, I like to match my thread to my fabric, but I haven't had any issues with this. I've had rugs on the floor for two or three years now with high volume of usage. And my serger thread has been wonderful. So I have no issues with that thread. I'll pop up for a second and hopefully I, I get why there is a debate on it. And it's because serger thread is two ply, I believe. 
So you don't have as many strands in the thread, but for something like a jelly roll rug, you're using so many stitches, it's not an issue. If you were to mm -hmm. do a quilt or something like that, which you know, you're just straight stitching or if garments, it probably wouldn't work as well unless you were actually using a serger. But for a jelly roll rug, I think it's totally fine. No, oh, yeah, it's it's been awesome. And it'll save your wallet. Keep your wonderful, more expensive threads for your awesome quilts. And um, they definitely play their role. But for this, save your money. Definitely <laughs> feel free to go on the little lower end. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. You're welcome. Okay, now this setup's going to look a little different because I had already started this rug, right? But because I'm able to open it, it makes it so easy. So I'm just going to throw this on in. Do to do, and we're just going to straighten this out. I'm going to put that. Hopefully, y'all can see okay. There we go. Got it nice in the middle. And I'm going to grab my interlocking piece and we're going to snap that on in. And you'll see here. Ta da! And same thing. Sorry about that. I think y'all were a little low. Let me put my second part in. I'm trying to keep it high enough where y'all can see what I'm doing. Let's lock it into place. And like I said, this is an unconventional way to put it on because I'm playing catch up. Let's get it back into place as if we were using it. So, all right, go ahead and give it like one little back stitch. Let's anchor that bad boy in. Now watch how awesome this is. Now I got to clean it up from here. Same thing. We have our batting in our tube. All you're going to do is pull one down and pull the second one down. Bam, you're already done. I like to, I have a, I just have a habit of always running my finger there just to make sure it's nice and taut. But this has been so wonderful. I have been recommending it and shouting it out to the rooftops and every person that has tried it. Fortunately, I have not had anybody come back with negative feedback on it. Now you will see from what I was doing before to now, I can get a larger section prepped than what I was before. But this is going to save you so much time and it's going to give you a nice even fold, which is going to be great. So no matter the shape a jelly roll rug you use, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. Now, once you get to your seams, hopefully, hopefully y'all can see that. Okay. You see my little seam there? You don't worry about it. Just keep it one direction and you're just, and it slides bloop, right on over. You don't have any issues. The last thing I will mention before we move on is whether you get your batting pre-cut or if you cut your own batting strips, you will run into a time to where your batting is, is disconnected, right? So let me go ahead. Ooh, sorry. Every time I turn my head back, I smack y'all. There we go. Let's go ahead and cut my batting. Let's say I cut my own strips or my pre-cut roll had a spot where it ended. What's great about this too, now this is one thing I really like. Beforehand, if you ran out, you would have to kind of overlap it a little bit and place it and finagle and try to keep it together as you go over. Let me get this back into view real quick. When you run out and you have the Clover Fabric Tube Maker, all you're gonna wanna do is gently place it under your previous batting and just have a little overlap. You don't have to have a lot. And that's going to slide right on over. And it continues your strip. Let me get you into a better view. So again, now it, where it overlaps is about right here. It just slides right on over. It's just like butter. It makes that transition so wonderful whenever you're adding more batting to your mix. Now it is going to be just a smidge thicker because of that overlap, but nothing that's going to make a big difference in it. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend this new little tool. It's been fantastic. But after that, if you want, Brian, I'm going to switch back over and show you guys the second half of the fun that we're going to be doing today, if that works for you. Sounds good to me. Awesome. All right. So while Amanda does that, I'm going to mute her and she'll give me a thumbs up when she's ready. And I'm going to go over the pricing overlays. So 
I'm just going to do the fabric tool for right now. So the uh, Clover Fabric Tube Maker, we have to thank Amanda for uh, being the one that showed this to us. We didn't carry it until she reached out to me and she said, hey, do you guys carry this thing? I think this would be really helpful for your customers who want to make jelly roll rugs. So we have it. Uh, normally it's listed at $19.99, but it's currently on sale for $16.99. And if you call in, we will give you an even better price. And then let's see. We also have the batting as well. So the batting, there's the two options. You can do the two and a quarter or the two and a half. Uh, the two and a quarter, it has an MSRP of $44.99 and a sale price of $34.99. And then the two and a half is an MSRP of $16.99 and a sale price of $13.49. Of course, if you call in, we will do a better price. And then we will go over the patterns after Amanda is finished. So let's bring her back up. Hold on, Amanda. Let me unmute you. There we go. All right. As I mentioned, I kind of really geek out with these. So one of the ways that I, so after the patterns are fantastic and they are going to give you all the information you need for your standard rugs. So anything like that, your patterns are awesome. Now, if you're like me and you've rocked and rolled through the patterns, you start to kind of dabble outside the box. And that's what's happened with this one. I was shopping and I saw this really awesome like watermelon print and initially I thought I'll just make a big watermelon and I did a near perfect circle and I made a watermelon jelly roll rug and it wasn't until it was done I did love it but then I thought how fun would it be to cut it in half and make it a watermelon slice so that's where I started to kind of dabble and make it into my own. Now, some of this prep work I did just to save us on time, but we can still figure it out. What you're going to want to do. Now, when I first did my very first watermelon, I did a near perfect circle. And whenever I sliced it, it made the ends of my slice a little pointy. So what I did whenever I made these rugs, I've been kind of dabbling with that perfect starting length. I don't have it yet, yet. But what I've been doing is just giving a little bit of a start. So instead of a perfect circle, I have a nice oval. So whenever I cut it, it is gonna make that a little easier to finish. So what you're gonna wanna do is get a long yardstick, get something, and you're going to want to mark in the middle. Another perk of having that beginning start is you're going to have, let's see, without knocking you all over. Hmm. There we go. Hopefully that translates. There we go. You'll see my start right here. It makes it easier to find that middle. So what I did was I took a yardstick and you'll see with fabric pen, maybe you can see it. It's very light blue. I went ahead and marked my center where I'm going to want to be cutting. Now, what I did on that, and we're going to get ready to go back to the machine, is, actually, I should probably show you, is we want to go ahead and reinforce all the beautiful work you've done before we cut it. So what we are going to do is we're going to do what's called a triple stitch. And what it is is kind of what it sounds like. It's a straight stitch, but it's three times. So it's gonna be thicker and more hardy than your regular straight stitch. And what we are gonna do is we are gonna do this, hi yeah, this way, on both sides of our line. So here's my wonderful line, and you can see where I did one right here. And I'm gonna take us to the machine, and we are gonna, sh I'll show you at least on my machine where my triple stitch is. And then we're gonna do a triple stitch run before we cut this. So what that's going to do is keep all of our rug intact before we're able to finish that raw edge. So I'm going to try my best. I'm trying to think of the way to save us time. Y'all aren't going to see my, my face for a little bit. So I'm going to keep you guys at the machine. Now, the one thing that I will hop off camera really quick is to cut that. Now, what we are going to do is we have our little line that we did with our fabric our fabric pen, excuse me. And we're gonna do a straight stitch on either side of that. So whenever we cut it, we're good to go. Now I like to use my 60 inch rotary, 60 inch, woo, 60 rotary blade. <laughs> when I cut it because it is thick and 
to save time, we'll pretend this is a rotary blade. Whoop. I kind of like to stab it. It sounds weird. Whenever I go down and I start to cut, I put a lot of pressure down when I'm going because it's so many layers. So whenever you technically, could you cut it with fabric scissors? Of course. And hopefully they're very sharp. But what's easier is a nice 60 and like a stabbing motion. <laughs> That'll make it easier to cut through all those layers. So let's switch over one last time and we can show you how show you all how to finish up the wonderful rug and make it a little more pizzazzy than what it awesome. already is. Sounds good. I'll pull it up. It's you know, it's funny. While you do that, I'm going to tell a little story. Um, that little tool that you have in your hand, um, mm -hmm. we like to call that the stabby tool. So it's funny that you uh, you you said you do the stabbing motion with it. We have somebody watching right now. Uh, his name is Robert, but he goes goes by Sir Robin the Chicken. He loves calling it the stabby tool. So shout out to uh, Sir Robin the Chicken. Amanda's using the stabby tool. Now yeah. while Amanda finishes up, let me go ahead and go over. I didn't get a chance to do the pricing on the jelly roll rug. So um, the pattern, they're all the same price. They're all a uh, typical MSRP of $10.99 and a sale price of $9.99. Of course, if you call, we will do special event pricing on those. Like I said before, I think that this is a fantastic uh, gift for people for Christmas. I think that there's actually a couple of things we've shown that would be really good Christmas gifts. The uh, fingerless gloves would be a good one. All the stuff that Ashley from Dime showed and these jelly bowl rugs. Amanda, um, before I bring you back up, I, I have another question for you. Somebody in the comments yeah. was asking about using different kinds of batting. So like polyester or wool. Um, Stephanie from, uh, Hackney from Hobbs was talking about how wool and silk batting are uh, moisture wicking. So they're antimicrobial. Do you think that uh, you could use a different kind of batting if you wanted to put these in the bathroom without them getting mildewy and bacteria -y? So, so far I've used, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Wonderful. So, so the pattern will say to use hundred percent cotton and when you get your batting on a roll, that's what it is. Now, since I started dabbling into cutting my own batting, I actually buy an 80, 20 poly cotton blend. Um, and what I use for mine and I haven't ran into any mildewy issues or anything for either of those. I haven't personally dabbled outside of that. So I know if you look at the pattern, it'll tell you hundred percent cotton, but I have personally also done a poly cotton blend. Um, but unfortunately I'm not too versed outside of those two bubbles. Awesome. Thank you for answering and I'll let you take it away. Yeah. All right. We're going to go on a little adventure here because I want to show you guys up close. Now on my machine, it usually displays two different ways. On my machine, it shows just a really thick straight line. You have your thin and you have your thick. That, hopefully you saw that decent. That is a triple stitch. Now some machines will actually have it where it's three separate straight stitches in one picture, even though it's still all going to be one solid line. And what we are going to do, and you will notice that on one side I did it in white and on the other side I did it and I'm going to be doing it in green it doesn't matter because we are going to be putting a nice little edge on this anyways so I am sliding this under my rug or my sewing machine excuse me because I want to get to this nice middle and hopefully I don't smack you guys in the process now if you've never used your triple stitch before it is a little funky. It kind of goes forward and back. You'll see it like a weird shimmy because it is going back and forth to get that nice triple stitch over each other. And what I'm doing is the little fabric line that I have here. Stop moving. I don't want y'all to get sick. There we go. I put my little cut line on the inside lining here. So it's just to the side. There's no exact measurement for this. This is just getting it. You do want it closer to your stitch line because you're going to want it to really reinforce it. Oh, ha ha. After all that, you know what, guys? I didn't even change my stitching. Let's change it. Hey, yeah, it's back on up. All right. Now I'm going to hit the triple stitch like what I mentioned. Let's try that again. I thought that felt too smooth. There we go. So it's kind of like a shimmy back and forth. And same thing, we just want to really reinforce our rug before we cut it. And if 
You don't know if your machine has that triple stitch or if you can just go over it a couple of times. We can make your machine work. That is not a problem. So let's go all the way. And as I mentioned, you guys can see where I had already done this before on the opposite side. And I'm so glad that I had the extra time. I didn't think I was going to cut it short on time, but it looks like we might. So that worked out really good. So let's run that all the way down. Here we go. And the triple stitch is a really weird feeling. If you've never done it before, you kind of have to just gently hold your rug into place because it is going to shimmy and shake so much on you. But it's worth it. It's a nice hearty stitch. I was really surprised when I was using my fabric pen. It did not want to mark this watermelon print. It was so funny. I kept on just going crazy and it's barely there. But that is okay. All right, we're almost to the end. And as I mentioned before, what I am going to do is I'm going to grab my 60 rotary blade and I am going to get my stabbing motion ready. And I am just going to cut where I have that blue mark. And fortunately, I'm not going to change my camera angle. You actually can kind of just see me right here. Let's do that. What I'm going to do, pull it on over. Now you can see here where I rolled it. Don't panic. A lot of people stress out with their jelly rolls because they want them to be nice and flat. There's so many ways we can go about making sure that happens. And that's another perk to the class. I will help you troubleshoot that. But that particular roll, that's just going to iron right back out. Let me go ahead and grab a nice ruler to cut it. And hopefully, yeah, you guys can see from there. We're just going to cut. I did put a cutting mat. I am. Don't let, don't tell Arrow. I'm protecting my table. I got a cutting mat under there. And we're just going to slice and dice in our nice little stabbing motion. When you stab down like that, it makes it so much easier. Making sure you don't go over your triple stitch. Hiya. Perfect. Now, what you guys are going to see, whoop, I knew I should have checked it before I put it down. Let's see. Right up here. Okay. Now we have it cut in half. Ah, we ruined our rug. <laughs> it's okay. But you will see here, now we have that raw finish. But what's wonderful is we do have that reinforced stitching. So this is not going to come undone. So let me go ahead and move these two things out of the way so we can sit back down. Now, if somebody wanted to, they could just do a binding all in their watermelon print and be good to go. But I like to match it up. Of course, now that I say that, where did I put it? Aha, good. Internally, guys, I was panicking. All right. So instead of having it finished all with just one print, we want it to match because, of course, you're putting in all this effort. Let's do our finishing to match up. Now, what I do is I will measure with fabric tape whatever sections of my rug that I'm doing. And because I'm going to do about a quarter of an inch when I attach them, I measure it out and just add half an inch. So in case you're wondering how I figured out how much green, how much white, how much whatever, that's what I did. So I have this already pre-measured and let me grab my other two pieces. When you are attaching your jelly roll strips into one long strip, you will want to miter and you can totally see my class or check it out later to learn more about that. But in this case, we don't want a mitered edge. We want a perfect, nice, straight transition. So in order to do that, we're going to put our right facing fabrics together and I'm going to go ahead and stitch 
right on down the side. Of course, I can't see good. There we go. We're just going to do a straight line here. Oh, I got my triple stitch on. It's like when someone's watching you type, you start to misspell everything. Maybe that's just me. But when you know people are watching, you tend to goof a little more than you do. There we go. We'll go straight on down. And same thing. We're going to go ahead and open that up. And again, I'm doing the green because you're not going to see that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add our green right here. Now, I don't ever press my seams when I'm making these rugs. And if you take my class, you will see why. But here, because I want a really pretty transition, I will make sure that the colors are facing away, right? I don't want a little bit of green to show on here. So we have our nice, wonderful little line prepped. And hopefully we can get through a good bit. Now, what we're going to do is when you make these Jelly Roll rugs, if you match your thread like I do, you will actually have a clear front and back to your rugs. So mitering, as I briefly mentioned earlier, will give you this kind of angle effect. So you're never going to have a clear cutoff between the two colors. So I will do it where one side has a perfect transition and the other side is going to have that little bit of a discrepancy. But that's great because that gives you a clear front and back. So I am wanting to go to my back side first. And I am going to line up. And this is where we want our fabric to match. So fortunately, we already have green in here. I'm going to have the front facing down. And we want to match up our colors with our rugs. And what I like to do is I like to move my needle all the way to the left. And I will place dun, 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 my foot, because it's a wider walking foot, right on the side of that fabric. And I'm going to straight stitch up until that transition point. And back stitch right when I finish. And then same thing. Let's think. Let's go ahead. And since we are going to finish it out the other way, sometimes I will switch out the colors here. But to save us on time, we are going to be turning this around and doing a zigzag. So you're actually not going to see that fabric because I want us to get to the end. I want to help you guys out. So let's just get a little crazy. We're going to do it. We are going to go all the way down in green. It's only gonna show here just a little, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. We've got this. It's a watermelon, guys. It can be in different spots. Okay, so let's go ahead and sew all the way down. And you can periodically stop. You wanna make sure that your foot and your fabric and everybody's lining up. And luckily, I thought of how we can make sure you guys know how to finish this without finishing. So you're not going to be left hanging. There we go. Ta-da. And if you're lucky, and fingers crossed, if I did my measurements right before this class, my transition should line up really well. Let's see. We've got, ta-da! It's going to match up when we switch over. Make sure that our seams are facing away from our white. And if it ever gets wonky like that, you can just pick up your foot and put it back down. All right, let's go all the way down. Okay. Now for this one, I'm going to show you guys because of time. I'm going to show you all half of it because the way you start it is the way you finish it. Well, we'll see. We might have time. The only thing is I have to change out thread. So now that we have on the backside, once you turn it around, 
is where we are going to, what I'm going to do is kind of like how we started that binding in a way. I'm gonna fold that right on over because we want a clean edge. And just like the binding, I'm gonna fold this sort of right here in the middle and then we're gonna fold it to meet on the other side. Let me do that. So here you pretend, hopefully you guys can see it met in the middle and we're gonna fold over again. So let me give you a closer look. So it is very similar to that other start. Now, one thing you wanna keep an eye out for and a way to have a really pretty finished is right now what we are gonna be doing is we're gonna do a zigzag stitch between this end and right here. In order for it to be really pretty on both sides, what you wanna keep an eye out for is that stitch that we did. You wanna make sure that your zigzag is going on both sides of that wonderful run. So let me go ahead and switch on over. Now for my zigzag, I do five and a half. And let me get that nice and pretty for y'all. There we go. Now I will say when I first started making these, I hated this step. It made me sick. It would make me so nervous because I would always, even though I thought I was looking out for that line, I would always miss it and it would get so frustrating. Now what's nice, let me just get it started so I can show you guys. I'll give it a couple going forward and let's back stitch and anchor that. We gotta look for our wonderful stitch. So we're gonna fold that over once and then twice. And that also gives you the ability to keep looking out for that stitch line. So we're gonna fold this over and we want our little fold to end right over our little line. Because I'm matching up thread colors, I'm gonna stop when it switches and back stitch a couple. And that'll give you guys a good look at how that looks at both sides. Let's see, let me just go ahead and cut up my loose ends here. It's not my most beautiful example, but that's okay. Ready? So we have, and when you look for that line on both sides, there you go. And then same thing, we're gonna switch and we're gonna do it in white. And then we're gonna start off with our watermelon. Now I'll get it to about where the watermelon is. And one thing I also like to do right now before I switch my thread color is I'm gonna do a little line of the green on top. Just to actually, I might go back and redo that because I don't like how it looks. <laughs> so I'll leave that. But what I do like to do, in case I loved how it looked, where's my stabby? There's my stabby. Once I get that nice and even, I will go back and do a straight stitch just right here to give it a nice clean finish and make sure that nothing's gonna happen to it. But I can keep going without affecting the green because I'll go back. But I will show you guys actually on the white. And some people comment and they think I'm crazy for matching the fabric, but I promise you guys, matching your thread to your fabric will really truly elevate how your rug looks. It might be more cumbersome, but it is 100,000% worth it. Let me see. Ta -da. And I know Chris's segment is coming up next. So I want to make sure that I am not late for him because he is really awesome. What's funny is I thought he was going to be before me. And whenever the Grace Company came on, I thought, oh, did I get the schedule wrong? And I panicked. And then I realized, oh, it's me. It's, it's fine. I was expecting to see Chris's face before. Okay. So before I get back onto my machine, it's easier to kind of fold and prep it right here, kind of to line it up before you move it on over. So we'll move it there. Let me drop the foot. And same thing. We're going to, now for this step, I will always back stitch when I start and finish. Just because this is going to be our nice little finishing touch. So you'll start, back stitch. Oh, did you hear my machine? It's mad at me. It's because I started to panic with time. Okay. Well, what I will say is I'm going to 
go ahead and recap with you guys. Because look, she's mad at me. That's what I get for trying to hurry. But it's that same step the whole way through. So when your machine behaves, and hopefully you can get a closer look. Again, we are going to, after it's anchored on this side, we are going to fold once. And then when you're folding the second time, you really want to line up with that stitch right here. Because once you do your zigzag through here, that is what's going to give you the really beautiful finish on the front and on the back. And Brian, in just a minute, if you don't mind taking over, I'm going to give you all one last angle before we wrap up for your next segment. Sounds good. Let's see. So, Amanda, while you do that, do you mind if we talk? Absolutely. Go for it. I don't mind at all. We have, we have some questions. I love um, questions. Sir Robin the Chicken wants to know if... I, I'm a, I think is what he's asking is, can you do this with different size of tubing? So have you ever tried to do it with um, not two and a half strips, but some like bigger or even smaller, like one inch or I don't know. Okay. So what I have done, have, okay, I believe I heard you. Have I tried other widths of fabric? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so far, the only thing I have done is I have done a flannel with three inches. Um, and that actually came out really cute. And it's wonderful if you have like for a nursery rug, because it's not mm. only really soft, but it's extra fluffy. Um, outside of that, I have only done 100% cotton and I've only done two and a half inch. So it's mm. possible. And like I said, I've only done it with a three inch strip and flannel. Outside of that, I haven't done it yet. Cool. Um, so uh, Donna wants to know what the co most cost-effective batting is. I'm assuming that's going to be the 80-20, and if you buy it on a roll, right? Yes. So if you are curious to see, what I tell most people, if for your very first class, get the pre-cut. It's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of headache. It's going to make the process smoother for you. If you all of a sudden really just love it like I do, the most cost-effective is to cut your own batting. And for me, that's that 80, 20, um, it is way more time consuming and it's a lot more work, but it is more friendly on your wallet. So I would highly recommend the pre-cut first. If you love it as much as I do, I would recommend cutting it yourself. Awesome. And then Donna also wants to know the scissors you were using at your machine. What scissors are those? The scissors that I was using. Oh, hold on. Are we talking about for my snips? I think so. So these are my Tula Pink Snips, and they are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. My toddler stole one from me that I still haven't found, and I snapped and bought three. So in case they ever take it again, I know I'm covered. Cool. Let me and show we you do the carry them, I believe. Yes. I, I know okay. you had. Hopefully you still do. They are phenomenal. And actually... What you probably could or couldn't see that I know y'all carry is I put them on here. It's a little suction cup kitty oh, that fun. goes to, that goes to your machine. And I know y'all have them and they sit right on my sewing machine with me. So as I'm sewing, I just grab and go. It's they're fantastic. And it holds That's really well. Stuff. I think it's only come off maybe once or twice in years off of my machine. Cool. And then the last one is not a question. It's more just uh, some praise. Uh, just darling. Well done, Amanda. Thanks for the fun demo. You're welcome. I'm sorry I got a little shady there, kind of crazy in the end, but I can give you the idea of the finished look. We still have our raw edge, but this is going to be our wonderful watermelon half. Well, and I know if people, if people have more questions about the remaining process, I know that they can find you on Facebook, on TikTok. Now, do you want to talk one more time about if anybody wants to take your class, how they would find your class? Yes. So one thing I will say, I did also recently start a YouTube. And if you guys can go subscribe, that'd be great because it's a little baby YouTube right now. I think I have like 100 subscribers because I started it, I believe, last week. But my classes, um, my October classes are actually pre-registration is getting ready to start. Now, late registration is always welcome. So if you are super excited and ready to try it today, you can still join my September classes. And that's actually going to run. So officially, I tell people it runs for the month. Don't tell my classes, but I always extend it.
So for example, my September classes towards the end, I'm going to tell them, hey, surprise, you got until October 15th, just because I know life happens. And yeah. I want to make sure everybody gets the most they can out of the class. So if you are ready to start now, you can absolutely join my September classes. If you want to do some homework first, pre-registration for October is starting this weekend. And even though the class doesn't start until October 1st, there is a bunch of prep videos. It's going to go into detail about your batting, about cutting your own fabric, about what else? All the different tools that you're going to need. I will tell you the very, very basic all the way to if you want to get crazy and all the extra tools and gadgets. Um, and there's links to everything that'll go to Sewing Parts Online too to help you out to make sure to get the job done. Awesome. Guys, definitely check out Amanda's class. Help support small businesses. Amanda is an amazing teacher, an amazing person. Thank you, Amanda, for joining us today. And I can't wait to see you again in the future. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you guys so much for having me back. See you later. All right. Well, that was awesome. There's so many things that I have seen during, I, it's funny because I, I'm planning the events and I don't even realize how much it goes, you know, what we're going to learn. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, Amanda, I, that, let's do this project. That sounds great. And then when it comes and we do the segment, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much to this. This is awesome. There's uh, another person coming up next who I feel like is going to be the same thing. I feel like I have a general idea of what crumb quilting and using your scraps is, but I feel like he's going to blow my mind. So Chris is up next. Let's do the giveaway really quickly. Actually, hey, Chris, I see you down there. Give me a thumbs up if you're cool with coming up early to do the giveaway with us. All right, I see the thumbs up. All right, I know you've been watching too, so you know what to do, right? Oh, yes. Okay, go ahead, Alex. Go ahead and bring it up and we'll, we'll start drum rolling. Ready? Three, two, one. Yay, sugar congratulations, cookie. Sugar Cookie. Cool name, by the way. So, Sugar Cookie, you win the Orifil Thread Kit number 23, Sugar Cookie. Congratulations. And uh, that means you're entered to win the grand prize at the end of today. Um, I will go over how to claim your prize after Chris's segment. Uh, but thank you, Alex, for coming up. Let's get Chris pulled up. And, okay, Chris, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. So we know each other. I would say we're friends at this point, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you who, who don't know Chris, he is a Sewing Parts Online ambassador. He's a Grace ambassador. He is a creator of community. And you know what I found out about Chris the other day? I found out he was on the news a little while back. I didn't know about that. Do you <laughs> want to tell us about that? Yeah, I was I had a segment on Good Day Oregon, so local news. But I think I forget which news station they're affiliated with. Um, that was last, I would say it was last summer. The news crew actually came to my house in my tiny little studio. So it was me, the reporter who was amazing and the cameraman with this gigantic camera. Like, I don't know how we, we managed it in this tiny little space, but it was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I was totally, I don't even know. I think I, I, I think I searched your name in YouTube because I was looking for something on your patterns or something. Oh, I was looking for your shirt tutorial because Deb and I are making okay. shirts for me. So, um, and then the first result was the news and I was like, what? I didn't even know about this. So that's pretty awesome. Also, I'm going to, I'm going to let you describe what your segment's about and take it away. But really quickly, do you want to plug your community quilt? I, the thing you do? Yeah. So for those of who, uh, those of you that don't follow me, you know, I'm Chris with Rose City Originals. This year, I am doing a project. It started on January 1st, and I am hoping to be done by December 31st. Um, but I'm making a community quilt, and it is made up of all fabrics from my viewers. So I've received fabric from all over the world, uh, Germany, Japan, England, Ireland, Australia, like everywhere. It's amazing. Um, and I am making random blocks with the fabric submissions. So I just posted, like, I think the last three days, my videos have been for the community quilt. So you can go check that out on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. And it's just a lot of fun. It's completely random. I have zero control over it. So it's it's kind of a chaotic mess, but it's it's really cool looking. It kind of reminds me of that thing that Reddit does every few years. They do that pixel 
where everybody can go place their own tile in the pixel mm -hmm. and then it just becomes utter chaos, but somehow it's really cool in the end. It right. reminds me of that. But anyway, so I'm gonna let you explain to us what crumb quilting is, get into your segment, and then when whenever you need me, let me know. We'll talk about your patterns and stuff, okay? Okay, and I won't need you to do any camera switches today. I got that all under control, so. Awesome. All right, so today we're talking about crumb quilting, and a lot of people may not know what that is. So when you're done with a project, you tend to have some scraps left over. It could be, you know, large scraps that are totally usable. You can set them aside for your next project, or you may end up with like really small pieces. These in the quilting world are typically known as crumbs. It's the crumbs that are left after you're done with your main project. So these, for many quilters, can become a problem because they pile up. And after so many quilts, you just have a ton of these. You feel bad throwing them away. Like it's still technically usable fabric, but what do you do with it? So today I'm going to show you how you can turn these scraps into usable fabric and then what you can do with that usable fabric. So as I'm going through this, let me switch my camera to my overhead. I can remember how to do that. I think they changed this. There we go. Okay. Oh, it looks like Chris might have gotten disconnected, so I'll give him a second to come back in. Um, so since he's coming back in, let's talk about his patterns anyway. So Chris is a pattern designer and he carries a bunch of really, really cool patterns. Um, the prices vary on them depending on the size, but uh, he just released this new one, which is the one in the top left corner. I can't remember what it's called. I'm sure he's gonna tell us uh, when he comes back. But yeah, we just got them in last week. So if you wanna support Chris, definitely check out his patterns and he is back. So let me take away the overlay and there you go. Chris, can you hear us? Weird. Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? There's nothing like a live stream, right? Right. I even like tested awesome. it out in the lobby before. And anyway, I'm back now. So awesome. I figured overhead might be a little easier to watch everything. So I just pulled a very small sampling of scraps underneath my table here. I have nine buckets with it all color coordinated. And some of them are overflowing. So I need to do some scrap projects here pretty quick. But as you're sorting your scraps, Things you're going to look for is you want stuff that's about an inch wide or larger. And the reason for that is if I were to sew, say this, let's see how much that is. That's about a half inch. If I were to sew a quarter inch on either side of this, I'd have nothing left. Nothing would show on my final piece. So unfortunately, these are destined for the recycling. I'm lucky enough in my area to have a service that actually does textile recycling. Um, it's called Ridwell for anyone who's in the Pacific Northwest. They are starting to branch out. Um, but you can see if there's something like that in your area. If it's 100% cotton, you can also throw this in your compost bin. That's one thing you can do with it. Um, you can use it to stuff animals. I will caution against stuffing pet beds. I've heard from some veterinarians recently that they've had to do many unfortunate extractions from animals who have ingested small fabric scraps so just something to be aware of um, but using it for like you know stuffing a teddy bear or something is really good so you can go through and sort your scraps you know get the ones that you think are going to be a little more usable pull those out and then we are just going to start sewing um, today i'm going to show you three main techniques for making your crumb pieces and then what you can do with it. So we'll just pull a couple random pieces out here. Oops. And what you really want to do is make sure that you have at least one straight side. So right here for this piece, I'm going to cut it so that I have a straight side to sew against. And these are actually scraps left over from another crumb piecing project. So your crumbs can pretty much live on it forever. You know, when I'm done today, I'll probably have like, you know, an inch or so left off the edges. I can use that in my next project. It just, it keeps cycling through, which is really fun with this. So for my first technique, we are just going to kind of 
um, freehand it. So I'm going to start with this piece. Here's a solid piece. I can sew it onto this edge. And you can do this either being color coordinated or completely random. Now, oh yes, you can see in the camera. Now I still have several inches here left over of this fabric. So I can, while I'm here, just chain in another piece. And when I reach the end of that one, I can do even another piece. Let's use this one. So we have these three pieces sewn on to our original piece. And what we need to do is separate them. So I'm just going to use my scissors. You can also use your rotary cutter. With this, because it's all kind of freehand, um, I don't mind using my scissors because we're not really going for precision or perfection. Now we are going to want to iron these flat as we go. And I do just iron it to the side. If you watch any of my videos, you'll see I often press my seams open, uh, but with crumb piecing, it tends to be easier just to press them to one side. And I will say, just press to the side that it wants to go to. Don't worry about light and dark. This is all going to be kind of chaotic in the end. Um, but the side that doesn't have any seams is typically how it's going to want to lie anyway. Right here, neither of the sides have a direct seam butting up to it, so it can go either way. And then this one I'll press this way. All right, so now we have these three really weird looking pieces. And what we'll do is just continue sewing more to it. Let's grab one here. So I'll use this as my new strip. When I get to the end, I can sew this piece on. And you can sew it on either you know, the long end or the short end. It really doesn't matter. Um, in the end, it's really what look you're going for with your piece. If you want it to be lots of really small pieces, if you're OK with larger pieces. But let me show you this. All right, let's say I don't want a lot of really large pieces in my finished design. I really want to go for a really busy, small pieces, have it be really interesting. But I just sewed these together, and this is a really big piece. Let me free it from the rest of this. So what I can do is press this to the side. And then just cut it. You can cut it straight across. You can cut it at a slight angle. You want it to just be a fairly straight line so that you can sew your next piece onto it, though. And then sew this onto here. And really, you could just have fun. Grab random scraps. Um, I've heard people of doing like a brown bag challenge. So you put all of your scraps into a bag that you cannot see. And you just grab the next piece, and that's what you're sewing on. So you have no control over you know, trying to match colors or patterns or anything like that. Uh, one piece of advice I will give when doing crumb piecing is to shorten your stitch length. Because you are going to be cutting through those seams you're making. If your stitch length is really big, you may have an issue with your pieces coming apart as you're working with it. You don't want that to happen. So a shorter stitch length will be your friend. This project is also something that's really good if you have a bunch of bobbins that have just a little bit of thread left on them in just you know weird colors. Maybe you were working on a project and you had bright orange thread in your bobbin. And now you have half a bobbin of orange thread. You can use that because you're using all scrap fabric anyway. 
nothing's matching. So you can use up those little bits and ends of bobbins rather than them just sitting there collecting dust or eventually just unwinding them and tossing that thread. So it's very eco-friendly. As you go along, you will end up with spots where there's just a bunch of seams and it's kind of bulky. That's you know, one of the downfalls of crumb piecing, but you can work through it. It's not, it's not too big a deal. If it starts to get too bulky, you can also switch to using your walking foot to help get over some of those humps. So as you can see, we just go along and this is just going to get larger and larger and larger as we go. Now, some people, some friends of mine, they'll just sit and make crumb pieces, just whatever size they end up being, and then they'll put those aside to use for a project later. I like to have somewhat of a plan, knowing what I'm going to be doing with this crumb piece. So for today, I'm just going to make a few half square triangles, and I need about a six and a half inch square. So this is big enough to do that, but I have this big yellow spot here and like some fairly big areas. So if I do my half square triangle, part of it's going to just be yellow with a little bit of some other fabric. So that's a little bit big for me. So I'm going to just cut it right here and continue adding in more fabric. I'll grab some of these leftover bits from some other crumb projects. Straighten off this edge, just to give me some little bit of variety. Now, as you're going, doing this method, just kind of um, freehanding it, it's really easy to end up with some pretty, pretty bizarre shapes. Like right here, this isn't a straight line across. So I'm going to go at a bit of an angle to clean that up for my next piece. And that's going to take me out of square, which is fine. But if you keep doing that, eventually you'll end up with like a big arch or you'll have just a weird blob of fabric, which again is completely fine. It just depends on what your finished project is going to look like. Um, another thing that I find is really fun with crumb piecing is including the selvage edge. So whether it's printing or I know some brands have like a really big selvage edge and it's it's fun, um, including those in crumb projects, I, I enjoy doing as well. Actually, let's do this one a little shorter this way. So here I'm going to sew straight, and you can see there's a little bit sticking out. After I sew it, I'll just trim that away. As long as you have a straight edge to follow, you should be fine. Keep you on track. And you want it to be a straight edge just so that when you open it up, it's not like bowing because of a curve. That would be the only issue with that. Sometimes when I get really into it, I will, you know, just put my new fabric down, sew across and then trim it, flip it back. I get all kinds of weird angles, or I might even, here's a piece that's kind of weird shaped. I might, you know, lay this down, and if this was more curved, just doing my best, sew a straight line. And then I'll just trim away from the seam however I need to. I don't, well, you might see some of this, but it doesn't, here. This is a really fun project just to get really artistic with it. So there you can kind of see my seam. It's not a quarter inch from the edge is just kind of there. 
Once it's sewn, though, you can trim it. And then press it. So this is a really freeing project. Just grab all your random scraps, start sewing them together, and have fun with it. And one thing I find is really fun about this is you're using your own scraps and you tend to gravitate towards your favorite colors when buying fabric. So naturally you have curated a perfect color palette for your liking just in your scraps. You don't have to go buy any new fabrics. You can just you know match up what you've already used and it you'll like it because it's colors you like because you bought the fabric. All right, let's do one more piece on here. Mm -hmm. Picking the piece is always hard. We'll do this bright yellow. I'm feeling yellow today. Just trim away the excess, and press that up. There we go. So now with this, I can cut it into the, the shapes that I need for my quilt pattern. Uh, here's my triangle my square. So I can just use my templates, um, depending on what pattern I'm making, and just cut it out. Getting a little messy on my desk here. One more cut. Perfect. And now I have a six and a half inch square I can incorporate into my quilt that I didn't have to go buy any new fabric. I used all of my scraps. So not only did I save myself money, but I am working to clear out that huge pile that is just taking up space in my craft room. So that's the first method, just doing a kind of freehand um, these stayed pretty much square, but like I said, you can add in weird angles if you have um, kind of funky shaped scraps. And then for method two, uh, if you followed me back in June, you saw the creation of the double wedding ring quilt that I have hanging behind me. And for that, to keep myself on track so I didn't have to keep stopping and measuring my piece until I had it the right size, I used foundation paper. I have a piece here. This is just a piece of scrap paper. It came from like a, looks like a flower um, catalog that we get often. So it could be just magazines, newspapers, junk mail, whatever. You know, we're being resourceful with our resources. You do want something, though, that is thinner, easy to tear. Um, and then we just start sewing. For this method, it's best to start in the center and work your way out towards the edges. I'm going to start with a smaller piece and then just, it's kind of um, log cabin style almost, starting from the center, adding strips to the outside edges as you go. And when using junk mail, I would say probably test a piece, like ironing it on the fabric just to make sure there's no ink transfer. I have not had that happen with anything so far, um, but something to be mindful of. And with this, again, you'll want to make sure that your stitch length is a little shorter. Uh, it's going to hold everything together and make it easier to tear the paper after. So back in July, I was on with Sewing Parts Online, and we did 
foundation paper piecing. This is pretty much that same method, except you don't have a pattern that you're following. This is all just kind of freeform. But you have the paper to help you keep on track so you know when you're done for your size of um, piece that you need. And uh, because we are just kind of sewing willy-nilly, our grain lines are going to end up going every which way. So this is going to help stabilize as you're sewing. Okay, so here I've attached this piece. That's my quarter inch seam. And you can see I have this hanging off the edge. Now I don't wanna just take this to my cutting table and trim that because then I'm gonna cut the paper. So you can fold the paper back and you might have to tug at the stitches a little, but you can fold it back and then safely cut the excess without cutting the papers. We'll just grab another piece. You know, if you're if you're really bored and you want to get really into it, you can start using smaller and smaller scraps. And you'll get a really fun, very busy, intricate look. And it's it's I find a lot of fun to look at quilts that have done this and used tiny little pieces of fabric. You can start searching and see if maybe you see just like a tiny little heart or a little flower, whatever was um, included in the print. trim this away so I'll just pull out those stitches a little bit. Trim like that. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself and I'll start just finger pressing my seams as I go rather than going to the iron. Uh, but having the little mini iron here is super helpful. Was there a question Brian? I didn't even realize that I had put myself back on screen. Oh. <laughs> it just shows that I'm getting tired and I need, I'm, I'm glad it's Friday. But actually, while we're at it, I, I do have a couple of questions. Sure, go ahead. So um, Donna would like to know if you can do this on your serger as well. You probably could. I have not. But because you are just doing straight lines straight across, I don't see why you couldn't. Awesome. And then um, sh to shamelessly plug, because I know you love the machine and I love this machine so much. What machine are you sewing on? It is my Juki TL2010Q, and I do love it. I also uh, want to ask about your uh, wish table. We so you, we sent that to you after July. Um, yep. Do you how how are you feeling about it? Do you like it? What, do you use it pretty often? Oh, it is. It's a permanent feature now. It's always on. I did awesome. take the um, the drawer out just for mm -hmm. the video. I figured it'd be a little distracting, but there's that blue drawer with all the accessories that slides in there. And I like to keep like my spare needles and my screwdriver, all that kind of stuff in there. So it's readily available. Awesome. I'm glad you like it because I'm considering getting one for myself too. I'm thinking about getting the, uh, the wish obviously, but also for uh, the free motion or the angle one. Do you do any free motion on your wish table? And if so, do you find that it helps or do you think it'd be better to get the one that's actually for free motion? I have not done any free motion on it yet. Since I have the long arm, I just default to using oh, that for all of my no. quilting. Um, but I have used it doing some straight line quilting with a walking foot and that has been nice because it's just, it's more surface area. So I have liked awesome. it for that. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome.
So when you are ironing using the foundation paper, you do want to make sure you are not using any steam because steam and paper do not play well together. I'll just keep plugging along. Almost done with this square. So like I said before, this was the method that I used to make my double wedding ring quilt. That one had 220 of the arch pieces that I needed to make crumbs for. And by the end of it, I swore I would never do crumb quilting again, but also I am kind of loving the crumb quilting. So, you know, if you have a large project, I would say just do it in little spurts so you don't burn yourself out too quickly. But it's a lot of fun because each block is different and you can just try different color combinations and all sorts of fun stuff. You can do some blocks that have teeny tiny little crumbs, some blocks that have larger crumbs, some that's a mix. There's really no rules with it. Some people want to know what the advantage to using paper is. So the paper helps me keep on track for the size that I need. So I don't have to keep stopping and measuring. Like, do I need to add a little to this side, a little to that side? I could quickly see where I need to have coverage. And gotcha. then when you start getting into different angles, it helps keep it stable while you're sewing the next piece on. Because like this one, the grain's going this way, grain's going this way, grain's going at an angle here. It can get a little crazy, especially when working with smaller pieces. Do you find that you have to use any type of needle with the paper? I just use my regular needle. I probably have too big of a needle right now, actually, because I was making a hat and I forgot to switch it back out to my normal. I usually sew with a 12 or a 14, and this is a 16. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not going to finish this one, but it gives you a pretty good idea of how to do it. Let's leave that and press it back. When trimming your seams, you don't have to be a perfect quarter of an inch because it's already sewn. It's not going to affect anything. Um, but I would say make sure you don't have a lot of excess because then that just adds additional bulk to your quilt when you're done. So there you can see where the paper is like I can tell I need to do a little more in this corner and a little more in this corner but the top two edges I'm done they're they're fully covered so whatever I make out of this I have a large enough piece so that's method number two using some foundation paper foundation three or method three is using foundation fabric so it's done pretty much the same way, except you're using fabric instead of paper. Paper, when you're done, you're going to come back and tear it out. And because you've shortened your stitch length, it all tears out pretty easily. Using thinner paper like newsprint um, also helps it tear out really easily. So you can just make a pile of that, throw it in your recycling. Um, but then using foundation fabric, it just stays in there permanently. This is a good thing you can do if you have some um, ugly fabric that you don't love, or if you have a fabric that you are just sick of looking at because you've made 7,000 projects with it and just whatever you do can't get to the end of the bolt. I know we've all experienced that. Or this fabric you maybe can see in camera has a little bit of discoloration. Like it looks like it maybe had some water damage. So uh, if you're using like stained fabric, I would probably pre-wash it just to make sure that that whatever the stain is, isn't going to bleed onto your pretty fabric. But you can use this as your foundation. Let's grab this piece. We'll start there. So again, we're just going to start somewhat in the middle and work our way out from there. Okay. 
as I go along, I usually just kind of rough cut the edges. One uh, reason is I could put these pieces back into my pile to keep adding on. Um, but two, it's just less to handle as I'm spinning it around and adding new pieces on. So when using the foundation fabric, because it is going to stay and become a permanent part of your quilt, um, it's going to add some additional weight and bulk. So that is something to consider. Uh, if you have a lighter weight fabric, that would be ideal. You can always go get some just like cheap cotton muslin uh, to use as the backing if you don't already have some fabric that you want to use. Um, but it'll add to the overall weight, which could be a good thing if you're trying to go for a really warm quilt. Um, you could use maybe then a thinner batting <clears throat> since you already have that extra layer of fabric. All right, moving right along. <clears throat> All right, let's get some color in here. So I don't know where it is. I have it somewhere in my house here, but I made a string quilt using foundation fabric like this. Um, and I honestly did not notice too much of the difference with having the additional fabric as far as like bulk goes. But um, string quilting, if you're not familiar, is very similar to crumb quilting, except that you're using just strips of fabric. So you would sew them side by side and it could be varying widths um, of whatever you know scrap strips you have left. A string is usually around an inch to an inch and a half. Again, you don't want to go much lower than an inch because you will you won't be able to see it in the finished quilt once you have a quarter inch taken on both sides. Uh, so I'm going to call this one done. It has larger pieces, but I want to be conscious of time. And there it is. So I'm going to now trim this to my six and a half inches. And because this is foundation fabric, that fabric is just going to stay in place. Hey, Chris, I just want yes. to pop on really quickly um, and answer a question that's for me to Angela. Angela ordered one of the little little rebel machines and she wants to know if when she's going to receive it. Um, so those of you who know about the little rebel know it's on pre-order right now. We are getting a small shipment in late September, early October, but we only have a handful of them. So Angela, I did want to let you know, I checked your order. You will be in the group of people who get the first shipment. So it should go out in that time frame. And then that leads me to a question for Chris. Chris, I know you're a Grace Ambassador. How do you feel about the Little Rebel? I am super excited and I want to get my hands on one, <laughs> but I'm not on a, any list yet and I haven't pre-ordered one. I probably should have, but I didn't. Um, but I'm, I'm super excited I'm, really, I'm hoping that we get one back here in the first shipment too. I, I think it's going to be a really, really cool machine and I can't wait to see you use it one day because I'm sure you'll get one at some point. Yes, I'm really hoping so. Okay, so we have our crumb piece square ready to go. That's all fine and dandy. What are you going to do with it though? So I'm actually going to turn this one into a half square triangle. So I have another square of the same size and I already drew my line from corner to corner and I'll sew a quarter inch on each side. Now, since this is, you know, kind of all over the place, I need to decide, do I want to cut it 
this way, or do I want to cut it this way? I think I'm going to do it this way. Really no wrong answer, just something to consider um, when you are placing it. And I think yesterday Ellie showed this method as well for doing two at a time half square triangles and also four at, or eight at a time half square triangles where you would draw a second line and so four stitches total and then you cut it crosswise and on the lines and you end up with eight half square triangles. Easy peasy. So and flip it around and sew up the other side. Okay, now, I definitely felt a bump there in the middle. Uh, I have a sample I'll be showing in a second, and I ended up switching to my walking foot where I had two. Uh, crumb pieces that I was sewing together because sometimes your seams just land right on top of each other. It can get a little bulky. There we go. All right, so now here's one half square triangle. And here's the second one. Press these back. Again, with uh, crumb piecing, I just like to let the seams go wherever they want to go and press them down. So this one, I'm going towards the solid piece here because that has no seams to contend with. And when I'm pairing crumb pieces up with a, I say a solid piece of fabric, but as in, you know, it's not a, a pieced piece of fabric, not necessarily a solid color. Um, I do like to have it be either a solid color or a low volume print because the crumb pieces, you really want them to shine. You put a lot of work into them. So you want them to stand out and not get confused with the other half of the triangle. If this was also like, you know, a busy print, it might just look like it was part of your crumb piecing. So there we go. So here, you know, we have two half square triangles. There's tons of patterns that you can do with half square triangles. And for today, like I used all different fabrics. Like I wasn't keeping in any kind of theme or color scheme, but that is another option that you can do. So let me switch my camera and I'll show you what you can do with some of your crumb piecing. Because this is all fine and dandy, but if you don't actually use them, you haven't really accomplished anything. You're trying to get rid of your scraps. You're trying to use them, make them usable, you know, keep them out of the landfill, what, what have you. But if you're just making, you know, bigger crumb pieces that then sit in your scrap bin or your, your fabric stash somewhere for years and years and years, you haven't gotten ahead at all. So, um, like I said, today, I just used random fabrics. No rhyme or reason, nice and crazy. That's what I did here with this double wedding ring. So all of those arches and most of the cornerstones where they joined together was all crumb pieced. Random fabric. Also, I used some orphan blocks that I've had sitting around for years. Again, just taking up space, collecting dust. So I used my AccuQuilt to make this. I just threw them on the die, cut them out in the arches. So like this was an orphan block. That was an orphan block. You know, don't, don't be afraid to cut up those things that are sitting in your craft room, taking up space. Make them something usable that you can enjoy. Like I remember what those blocks looked like because I either made them or they were gifted to me from a friend and they've, been staring at me for years. Um, but now I have a usable functional piece of art that honors those blocks. So another thing you can do when making your crumb blocks is keeping them within a color family. So here, like these were all pieced with red. These were all pieced with orange. And together, which way's up? 
I made this fun eight-pointed star. And you can, you can tell between the different colors, like pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, black. So now this is a huge block. Uh, this ended at 24 inches because it was that same um, six inch half square triangle. I think I might make three more and do like a big throw out of them. I haven't decided, but I love how this turned out. I made this the other night on TikTok Live. Uh, some of you may have joined in watching that. So that's one thing you can do with it. Just use it to replace, like use all the same color and use it to replace if I needed a green square. I'll just make a green crumb square and use that in place of whatever it is I needed. Um, you can also make functional items out of it. So in my little teaser for this, I made a crumb panel to use to make a hat. So I just pulled a bunch of different scraps out of my black bin, crumb pieced them together. Let's see if my light, there we go. And then quilted them to make this fun hat. And on this hat, I also used scraps to kind of fill in some of my, like the back panels and straps and brim. So lots of fun things you can do with scraps. Any questions for me, Brian? I do have a question. It's not related to the crumb quilt. Well, kind of, sort of. It's related to the double wedding ring in the back. So mm -hmm. um, I've been talking about my friend Deb Porter a lot, and uh, I know that she started making a double wedding ring quilt for her husband, Tim, who's been asking her for one for a long time. Um, but she basically wants to throw her sewing machine out of a moving vehicle because she's getting so frustrated with them. Do you have tips and tricks uh, or was there anything like when you started doing double wedding ring quilts that that helped you perfect them, get better at them? Yes. So I actually did a little video series and I think it's all included. I did a full YouTube, like a full length YouTube video making this quilt. And I tried four methods for piecing the curves. I did a method where you start at the center and you pin all the way around. And now remember there's 220 arches in this quilt. It's a lot of pinning. Um, so you could pin and then sew. You can use sewing clips and then sew. You can use the, I think it's acorn, the acorn precision seam glue. And so you can like do little glue dots and get it in place before you go sew it. Or you can just freehand it. And at the beginning of the quilt, I think I was most fond of the pins because it was the most accurate. But by the end of the quilt, I had done so many curves that I was just freehanding them all. And they were coming mm. out just fine. So a lot of it is practice. You know, quilting is an art form. It takes practice. Um, and then just getting to know your machine, your your quarter inch seam, whether you're using a quarter inch foot or a guide on, on your machine, you know, getting comfortable with that. And then just keep going. Some of these arches aren't great but they're still in there and you know you can't really point them out. There's so much going on that any mistake kind of gets lost in the, in the crazy. Awesome, well thank you for answering that for her and everybody in the comments, if you could shout Deb Porter out some love and support and let her know that she can do it. She, she is capable, it. just practice, practice, practice. Yes. Um, okay, so there was a couple other questions um, that were pertaining to other stuff. I know that you, uh, you like to make quilts like with minky backing and stuff like that. You like to get, think out of the outside the box. How do you feel about using old bed sheets for backing? Uh, this one doesn't have it. I have several that have vintage bed sheets for backing. I love them. I do try okay. to find 100% um, cotton, but that's getting harder and harder to find at the thrift stores. <laughs> so if it is a polyester blend, I I'll use it sometimes. Um, but just you know, if I love the print. I will yeah. say though that Ikea uses 100% cotton in their duvet covers and sheets and stuff. So you, if you find something from Ikea, you're almost guaranteed it's 100% cotton. Oh, well, that's a little quilting life hack. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, do you wanna take a moment? Cause we're, we're really excited that we're carrying your patterns now. Yes. Um, it's, you know, we started out as friends on TikTok and then you became an ambassador and now you are actually, we're carrying Chris Martini's patterns. So I'm gonna bring up an overlay which has a couple of them on there. Um, do you wanna talk about your patterns and 
kind of what inspired you and how people can use them? Sure. So the one there in the upper left, that pattern just launched today. That's my Ripple Bloom. And for that, so each pattern I write, I try to challenge myself for a new technique or to learn something new. Um, but with Ripple Bloom, I was really trying to write a beginner friendly pattern that had a lot of impact. Um, on my website, I do have a free download that's called My First Quilt. Uh, and it's actually, I debuted that and demoed it here on So Creative Live, I think last year or earlier this year. I don't know, they're all blending together. I've done so many. Um, so that's a great introduction if you've never sewn before. But once you, you know, you're getting a little more confident, this quilt, it looks super complicated. Like there's so many triangles and points, but it's deceptively simple. Once you um, get sewing it together, there's very few points to match up. It's really just up and down the center, like where the, the centers come together and you actually have like a flying geese looking unit. Those are really the only ones you have to match up. Um, with like that, the death moth there, I was trying to, um, that's actually the largest quilt I've ever designed. It's a king size quilt. And I was just trying to get detail in the moth and get some movement in it. And that's my normal style of quilt pattern, the moth there. I have the moth, a poison apple, a skull, mushrooms, um, and it's very mosaic looking. I use different sizes of squares and rectangles mixed together. So you get an inherently scrappy look. And like, if you look, you'd have to look at it for a while to kind of find out where the seams are because there are no Y seams and no partial seams in my patterns because I hate them. So uh, I have it all kind of laid out like a jigsaw puzzle to piece it all together with all straight seams. But when you first look at it, you're like, oh, dang, that's like a lot of you know, pieces coming together and it can get a little, little crazy. Yeah. So. Awesome. Well, we're super excited to have them. If, if people want to learn more from you um, and support your small business, how can they do that? Yep. So I am on pretty much all of the social medias. So I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube and threads. I'm kind of on there. Um, and I post almost daily. I'll post a video, whether it's just a project I'm working on, tips and tricks for how to do your binding or how to make a half square triangle, you know, different things like that. I just really big on, you know, the sharing of free information out there. So it is, um, I'm under Rose City Originals on all the platforms. Awesome. Well, Chris, thank you for joining us. Do you want to thank stick you. around for the giveaway really quickly? Absolutely. Okay. Alex, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Go ahead and pull up both and we'll get them rolling. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Annabelle Gibson. Congratulations, Congratulations Annabelle. Awesome. All right. Well, Annabelle, I will pull up how to claim your prize in just a second. You are going to receive the So Creative Live thread kit and you are entered into the grand finale prize of the day. So, Chris, parting words. Uh, we are so grateful that you joined us. We are so grateful that you're a Sewing Parts Online ambassador and our friend. And every time you come on and we see you on social media and stuff, we just think, man, Chris is such a bright future ahead of him. If this is where he's at now, we can't even imagine what it's going to be like in five, ten years. I think you're going to take the quilting industry by storm. And we really, uh, really... Uh <laughs> we 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 love you very much. So thank you. Um, with that said, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll chat soon sometime. You as well. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Okay, so um, let's see, Annabelle. Let's put Annabelle's name on there so I don't forget. G. So to claim your prize, if you're one of the winners, you are going to navigate over to www.sewingpartsonline.com forward slash so creative live. You're going to scroll down to the giveaway section uh, or press giveaway. It'll bring you down there automatically. You are going to fill out and submit the form. And then once we've received your, received your form, we'll do the rest. Uh, just to let you guys know, we are taking a little break after So Creative Live. So it'll take us about a week to two weeks to actually ship the prizes out. Um, but we'll try to do it as quickly as possible. The grand prize winner of today, just full disclosure, we will have to give you a call, verify some information uh, before we can ship your prizes out. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that. 
So with all of that said, we have a really uh, fun segment coming up next, all about the baby lock Sashiko machine and the Sashiko method. So we're going to go ahead and bring up our friend from baby lock, Richard Tharp. Hi, Richard. How are you doing today? Uh-oh, we cannot hear you. That should be better. There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> awesome. How you doing today? Okay. Darn that mute button on the microphone. <laughs> so how is so everyone far? doing today? I'm so happy to be here. Uh, we're doing great. We're coming up on the final stretch of the event, and we're excited to give away uh, a pretty massive grand prize, but... We're really excited about the Sashiko machine. I know that it's a really unique machine. So do you want to just go ahead and take it away, explain what Sashiko is and talk oh, about the abs machine? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the so Creative Sewing, Ex so Creative Sewing Expo. Oh, my gosh, Sewing Parts Online, one of my all-time favorite retailers. And I will tell you, here in, I'm here in North Central Illinois, and I have a small shop here, and we actually order some of our parts for customer repair directly from sewing parts online. So whatever you need, they've got it. Be sure to support them. They're great. I'm going to introduce you to my favorite baby lock machine. And I can tell you that. I'm a baby lock national educator. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. This is the Sashiko right here. You're going to hear so much about this machine today. You're either going to hate it or you're going to go buy one. And hopefully it's the latter. But I come, I'm a fourth generation quilt, quilt maker. And I come from a hand sewing background. And oh, thank you for the quilt in behind me there. Yes. And... The first baby lock machine I purchased in my life quite a few years ago was the original baby lock Sashiko machine. And let me tell you, I saw this machine being demoed by Nancy Zeman on her PBS show. And I said, Richard, you have to have one of those machines. So I located my nearest baby lock retailer and purchased the fabulous Sashiko machine. Most people, when they think of Sashiko, it's a Japanese, traditional Sashiko is a Japanese technique of making for mending and adding patches to things, to, to garments and blankets, because back in the hand sewing time of Japanese Sashiko, and this still is a big thing, the stitches are bigger than traditional American quilting stitches, okay? But this machine, when I saw it, when you look at the stitches, it looks like hand quilting. The only machine on the market to, to, to approximate a true looking hand quilting stitch. You're not using any invisible thread. There's only thread in the bobbin and it pulls it up to the top. And I'm gonna show you exactly how awesome this is. A lot of people, when they think of the baby lock Sashiko, think, oh, it's just a quilting machine. No. Anything you can sew on a straight stitch machine, for the most part, you can do on the Sashiko. It can only sew woven fabrics, so you cannot sew knit fabrics. But I use it in garment making. I use it in my quilting. I even use it to piece quilts because you get an heirloom look to whatever you sew on this machine. Let's go to a different camera and we're gonna get started. Let me swap my camera over. Here we go. Here it is, the Baby Lock Sashiko. And as you can see, this thread up here, that is just to wind bobbins with. There is no upper thread in this machine. The bobbin is over here under a door and I'll show you that in just a moment. There's only one foot for the Sashiko. There it is. I have the quilting bar attached. I could take that out if I wanted to. I usually just leave it on. But the foot, let me raise that foot up so you can see that. That foot is actually, for either side of that foot is a quarter inch. 
And that's really, if you're a quilter, that's really important for quilt making because let's just do a quick demo on a quarter inch seam. You can do any size seam on this. I want you to see this, everyone. Get me two squares of fabric lined up here. And I'm going to line this up right along the edge of that foot. See that? See how I have that lined up right there? There's the quarter inch mark right here. This plate has a quarter inch, three eighths, one half, five eighths, three quarter, and seven eighths to the edge of this plate where the metal and the, and the, the shiny metal meets the white. That's exactly a one inch seam. So that being said, I'm gonna start stitching and I'm gonna create a quarter inch seam with this machine. If you notice that machine, I'm going to stop, I'm going to slow it up, I'm going to angle this so you can actually see the mechanism. What happens when it forms a stitch, the needle goes down, it pulls up a loop, it moves forward, and it takes the loop back down and forms a knot. So every stitch you create on this machine, it forms a knot on the underside of the fabric. I'm going to try to go slower so you can see that thread. See the thread there? Okay. So now, the important thing when you're using this is there's just you have to take it out in a certain method. So you raise the foot, you pull it straight back, and if you see this this slot right here, there's a knife in there. You're going to bring your thread into that slot, put it in, in here, and pull it towards you, and it cuts your thread. What also happens, it puts that thread under tension so you can begin your next row, your next line of stitching. Check out these stitches, everyone. Look at that. It looks like I hand sewed those stitches. Is it that amazing. On the back, it just looks like a regular straight stitch, okay? Just a regular straight stitch on the back, but on the front, it looks like hand sewing. Now, if you notice the length of the stitch, I have it set for the stitch length at three millimeters, <clears throat> And I have the spacing in between the stitches set for three millimeters. I can actually adjust that. Let's come right over here. And here's my, my control. This is the only stitch control I have to adjust the stitches. <clears throat> this side is the stitch length. This side controls the spacing in between the stitches. You can actually go from two millimeters all the way up to as much as five. Now I will tell you a two millimeter stitch looks like really tiny hand quilting. So next I'm gonna put in a quilt sandwich. And this is just unbleached muslin fabric with quilt batting in between it right there. I'm going to lower my presser foot. And I'm going to do that same stitch setting so you can see what that looks like. Let me move my camera so you can get a better view while it's stitching. There we go. Now remember, this is three millimeter length and three millimeter spacing in between each stitch. Everyone, I do have, I do travel and teach Sashiko workshops. In my workshop, my students make a kimono on this machine. So very, very much so. You can do garments, home decor, quilting, mending, patches. 
anything you see on Pinterest that says boho style or Sashiko style stitchery, you can do with this machine. And I'm moving it slow on purpose. You control, you control the speed of the sewing by the presser foot. And the way I have the machine set right now, as long as I hold the presser foot down, the, the foot pedal down, excuse me, it will continuously go and make stitches. When I take my foot off, it'll finish one stitch and stop with the needle up in the highest position. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate it. It's still, the thread is still attached. But I want you to see, let's just take that out. I'm going to take this out because I want you to see this beautiful quilting. Check this out. You'll see it good on this fabric. Look at that quilting. Isn't that beautiful? And that's a three millimeter length, three millimeter spacing. On the back, there it is on the back. Let me back it out just a bit there. It just looks like a regular straight stitch on the back. Now, <clears throat> we're going to do, we're going to do the smallest stitch that it'll make next. We're going to come over here and we're going to set it for a two millimeters length and a two millimeter spacing. This is the tiniest stitch this machine will make. And we're gonna do it right beside the three and three, okay? And the great thing about, what I love about it too, you only have to put a bobbin in to sew. There is no upper threading whatsoever. So you just wind your bobbins. And as with a lot of the other baby lock machines, it uses a regular class 15 bobbin. So let's get started on this next stitch. Line of stitching here. So this is the smallest stitching this machine will do. And you might be wondering what kind of thread I'm using. This is a Madeira cotton. 50 weight thread variegated. So the type of the size of threads you can use in this machine are 50 weight down to nothing larger than a 30 weight thread. Okay. You could put a 60 weight in it as well. However, the machine recommends 50 weight to 30 weight. I pretty much exclusively use a 50 weight, sometimes a 40 weight, because what it's doing, that's a double layer of thread. This 50 weight thread is, and it makes a beautiful, beautiful stitch. I'll speed it up now. You can hear it in slow, I've been going slow. But the sound of the machine kind of reminds me of one of the older type of walking feet. I just love the sound of it. It's, to me, it's very relaxing. So let's take that one out. We're going to pull it back, swing it to the left, and cut our thread. And now you'll see how tiny that stitching is. Look at that. So this one here is the one we just did. Two millimeter length, two millimeter spacing. This is a three millimeter length, three millimeter spacing. But wait, there's more. I also love using a long stitch. The five millimeter also makes a beautiful stitch. So let's just change that. We're going to go all the way down on both sides. And this is the largest stitch 
It can make. And notice, I didn't have to re-thread or adjust anything. All I did was move those two levers to change the size of the stitching. Now that tiniest stitch there, my Meemaw in Kentucky could hand quilt that small. I never could. <laughs> but boy, howdy, she could, she could make beautiful stitch, little stitches just like that, that two millimeter length stitch. So there's our, this will be our five millimeter length. Slide it under there, and now you can get a good see a good representation of those sizes: two millimeter, three, and then there's the five. Even the five is a beautiful stitch. Oh my goodness, everyone! Now I'm gonna sh we're we're gonna go away from the sewing for just a moment because I'm gonna show you just how easy. There's no needle to thread. Think about that for a moment. There is no needle to thread on this machine. But you do have to pull up the bobbin in a certain order to make it work properly. So up here, this is your main control panel. The light's flashing because I have my presser foot up. If I lower my presser foot, it turns up here. To blue. Now, I can also, when we come back and sew again, I'm going to show you two other stitch modes we can set it in. But to get to the bobbin case, okay, this will swing open. But before we ever open the door, the side door here, you want to make sure, and we're going to remove the bobbin. We have to hold down this button right here until the green light by the bobbin case comes on. So we're going to do that. The green light by the bobbin case, it's a little bobbin case right there. Let me get closer so you can see that. Now I know it is safe to remove my bobbin. So we're going to open the side door. I'm going to take you with me. There's the bobbin case. And now I'm just going to open the latch and pull it straight out. And there's my bobbin. So when we put in a bobbin, let me take this one out. Okay. So we hold this the bobbin case so that we're looking at the inside of it. And you want your bobbin, you want the thread to come off of the right of the bobbin. And the way I refer to this, this is the number nine. So there's the, the bobbin thread tail, the bobbin tail right there, the thread tail. It's going to come down this way and make a nine. I'm going to insert it into the bobbin case. I'm going to grab my tail, and there's a little slot right here and it'll slide under a metal flange and you'll feel it, feel it kind of click up into underneath this little finger. And then we have another thing we have to thread to get to be able for it to sew properly. Notice on top of the bobbin, there are two metal flanges right here. So Evie Hawkins always called these the rabbit ears. And the fuzzy part on the bottom of the bobbin, see that fuzzy part? That's the rabbit tail, the bunny tail. So what we're going to do is take our thread and we're going to thread the rabbit ears from this side where you can see the bobbin through both of the holes of the two ears. Okay. I will attempt to do this on camera. It's very important to have a clean cut on your thread when you do that. We're going to thread the bobbin. Do 
through both of the bunny ears. If you don't get it through both of them, it won't stitch, it won't form a stitch. Oops, come on, you. You get it in front of this. If you ever have trouble threading even a needle, if you can get the eye of the needle with white in behind it, it makes it easier to see. There you can see the holes in those rabbit ears, can't you? So now we're going to thread the rabbit ears. There we go. And boy, howdy, it's really different th at threading it in real life and trying to do it so you can see it on camera. <laughs> Here we go. Right through both of those holes. There we go. And then I want to pull out about 10 inches. Okay. 10 to 12 inches. Let me move my camera back now. Okay, so here's, there I have that pulled. Now we're going to insert the bobbin case. Very important. If you notice <clears throat> right here, let me get something to point with. Where's my, there's my little scissors, okay. There's a little, a little slot right here with the yellow dot beside it. The rabbit ears go into that slot. The bunny tail goes to the top of the bobbin case mechanism. And what I mean by that, <clears throat> it will insert in this direction. The bunny ears to the bottom, the rabbit tail, the fuzzy tail to the top, what I do, I will open the latch, the bobbin latch, and I will hold on to it. And if you insert it so the bunny tail is at one o'clock, turn it counterclockwise, and it will click right into place. And then you know that that is inserted. That is inserted properly. Now I'm going to hold on to my tail, and I'm gonna hold it at a 45 degree angle. Let me move my camera up so you can see a little better. There we go. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raise my presser foot, and now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna turn the hand wheel towards me once. This is a latch. This thread will have to end up on this latch right here. We're gonna do it again. Here's two. Now I have a loop up here on this thread handler. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna sweep underneath like this and let go of it and I'm gonna bring that thread to the top and I'm gonna hold on to it still. I'm gonna turn the wheel towards me again. And now I have the thread is caught on this wire. Check it out. Right here the thread goes through this wire right here. That is how you know it is set up properly. Then you're gonna shut your side door. We're going to put our thread into its thread cutting latch, pull it towards me, and it is now ready to sew. That's all there is to it. Super duper easy. I, once you do it a couple of times, <clears throat> it's really quite fast to thread. And listen, everybody, I know this is the one thing you have to learn how to do properly, or it can be finicky. It will not sew, it will, it will not, it will jam up or sew a stitch. You just have to take your time and make sure that latch hook is selected properly. Okay. Next. We are going, we're going to sew another stitch. But wasn't that wasn't that hard, was it? I didn't think it was. So let's set it to four and four this time. And that way you can see the four major settings. There's also half increments also. So you could do 2.5 millimeters, so forth and so on. I'm gonna lower my foot. 
And now I'm going to stitch. And notice, I still have my green white. Once I start sewing, the green white will go off. Okay, and I did not do something correct because it didn't make a stitch, and that's okay. One thing I am known for, everyone, <laughs> is, there's my talent, is I have a YouTube channel, and everyone loves to see me make a boo-boo, for instance, so you can see how to troubleshoot stuff, and that's what we're going to do right now. Let's hold that in and put it into the green bobbin light. Open the door. I'm going to remove the bobbin. I'm just going to re-thread my bobbin. See, it happens to the best of us. The way I look at this, this, make, this is, makes practice perfect for threading this bobbin. There is, it's under the click. Let me trim the tail, the thread tail. There we go. We're going to stitch... Put the through the uh, at, bleh, we're going to thread the rabbit ears. I bet I missed one of those holes. Make sure I have that. Yep, that is threaded. Then we're going to reinsert our bobbin. That is proper. I'm going to hold up my thread tail, rotate the hand wheel towards me once, twice. It just pulled it up. I'm going to sweep it. There it is caught. I'm going to shut the door. Cut my thread. And we're going to give it another go. We're going to give it a start. And that was it. I didn't have it through both of the eyes because it's made a stitch on the very first go, the very first needle, it pulled up the thread. So there you go, everybody. If you've ever had trouble with it, it's really easy to miss one of those threading eyes on that bobbin case. And if that happens, like it just did with me, it will not form a stitch. Now, that was in continuous sewing mode. So we're going to do another setting. If I press this button once, notice it turned green and on this, it says needle down. So let's try this. I'm going to hold down my foot. It still continuously sews that when I take my foot off of the presser foot, it will stop in the needle down position, which is we all know if you sew, most of us love being able to stop in needle down. So let's come on down here to the end. There's one more mode to put it in. Okay. Now with it down, I'm just going to pivot. And I don't have it here on my table, but I saw in the comments the easiest thing that I like, and I don't have it here on this sewing station in my studio, but you can use a stiletto. A stiletto is really good to sweep that thread with. Also, um, if you have if you have a stylus, but a stiletto 
is what I normally use to sweep that with. So let's come on down this way. Remember, I'm in needle down position. Let's raise the presser foot, rotate it again. And now I'm going to take a couple of stitches and at this time I'm going to hold it, I'm going to press it twice. That put me back up into continuous sewing mode. Now if I press it twice when I'm in continuous sewing, I want it to turn orange. What I'm trying to get it into is what is called specialty mode, and it just did. So with that light flashing, I'm going to hold down my foot control. And notice I still have the foot control depressed, but only made one complete stitch cycle. This is called specialty mode. And there's a very important reason to put it into this. Oh, sure, Navy Quilter, yes. So check this out. In sewing mode, and let's go back to continuous. Um, continuous. So I'll just press it again. We want it so it turns blue. So the question is how to make a turn. So if you're following a seam line, let's say you're quilting by the piece and you're wanting to turn, I personally like it to stop in needle down because then it makes it super easy to pivot and turn. When it's blue up here, press this button once and let go, it'll turn into a solid green and that will put it into needle down position. So now it'll continuously sew, but as I take my foot off of the foot control, it will stop in needle down. I can then lift my foot rotate the fabric and then continue sewing. So I just made a turn. Maybe I want to make another turn. Let's do it again. Right there. Pretty cool. But we're going to make another turn. Lift your presser foot up with the needle down. Continue sewing. Okay. I'm going to turn it one more time. The reason I'm doing this, I want plenty of room here. Because what I'm going to show you is this. You can also do, <clears throat> you can make ruffles and you can do smocking with this. So check this out. Why you want it in that specialty mode, I'm going to show you. No, you can set those levers to any combination you want. They do not have to be the same. I'm just doing that for demo purposes. Now, <clears throat> let me touch that one more time. We went to blue twice. It's flashing. Now when I press on it, it will just take one full stitch and stop. Here's why you would want to do that. I have a strip of fabric, and I'm going to put it under the presser foot up to the needle. And then I'm going to take another stitch. And then what I'm going to do, so over here, another adjustment right up here. It's at zero. That's normal. Okay. The larger the number you go, the less presser foot pressure is applied. So I'm going to set it up to two. 
And what that does, it creates a little bit of gap for when you have specialty things underneath this foot. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this fabric and I'm going to make a little fold in it and push it up underneath the foot. And then I'm going to take another stitch. I do not have the presser foot up. Okay. Let's make another little pleat and put in there. There we go. And we'll do another one. There we go. Let's do another one. Pretty cool, right? So this is a way you can actually embellish and add texture, whether it be a quilt or a garment or a home decor item. Remember, I'm in that one stitch mode. When, even if I hold down my presser foot, it's only going to take one entire stitch. I'm going to crinkle that up underneath it. And I'm going to sew off of it. And I'm going to take a couple more stitches. Then I'm going to rotate it so we can see it. So I'm going to raise my presser foot up. And check this out. Look at that ruffle I just created. And check it out. When you create it a ruffle with this machine, you see what looks like hand stitching on the top of it. Come on, focus you. <laughs> I have to talk to my camera sometimes. Give it a chance to focus. It'll be get there. There we go. There we go. Now you can see what that looks time looks like. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, remember when I said smocking? Well, guess what? If I was going to turn what I just did into smocking, that one line down the middle is the hardest part. Because now that I've come over here, I'm just going to rotate it. And I'm going to come back over and go right down the middle of each side. So check out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my needle up to the edge of the fabric. Then I'm going to rotate it again. And I'm just going to come right down on the side of it. <clears throat> but if you ever wanted to add a lot of texture to, a, to an item you're making, boy, howdy, this is the way to do it, everyone. I could do this much faster by taking it out of specialty mode. Wonderful question, um, Brenda. I'll show you that here in just a moment. Let me come down here. Let me just turn it back around so you can see that. Now, you cannot use, for quilting, you cannot, this does not do free motion, and there is no type of a ruler work for, ruler work foot for it. Oh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> but look at that. Look at this beautiful texture, and look at, I'm, it looks like I've hand-stitched this. Isn't that awesome? So, how do you do curves on it? you ask. Well, I will show you how to set that up. It's super easy to set up to do curves. Okay. Let me come and let me work my way over here to a blank area. A, a blank area. I'm also going to take it out of specialty mode. I'm going to touch it once. I just went into blue continuous stitch mode. I'm going to touch it once so it's whenever I stop now, it'll go into needle down, which is what I like. Because then I can rotate wherever I need. It makes it easy to pivot. 
lower that presser foot. I'm going to come out here and take that pin out. Okay, so remember the presser foot pressure dial over here? If you turn it all the way to the highest number, which is three, that will give, that will allow you to feed the fabric using gentle curves and sometimes not so gentle. So check it out. See how e the presser foot is down, but look how easy, look how easy that moves. Yes, Ronnie, I just did. Thank you. So check it out. Now I'm going to hold on to it right here. And as it's stitching, I can just start rotating it while it is stitching. The faster you go, the tighter the curve you can make. This is almost like free motion, but not true free motion. But you can do a complete circle if you so desire. But that's how easy it is to set up for curves. Check it out. There it is. Made a pretty good, a fairly smooth circle, didn't it? You can even make it much tighter than that. <clears throat> this fabric keeps hitting my camera stand. But let me go out here to an edge. Lower that press. If you don't lower the presser foot, it won't, it won't stitch. Let's go a little further out this way. And I turned it too hard. Let me see if it'll still pick up that thread. Sometimes it will. Nope. So I wasn't running my machine fast enough as I was making that last turn is what that was. And here on the back, you can see what it looks like on the back here. Pretty cool. So this, like I said, <clears throat> it's all and just, you can't be afraid of the bobbin on this. That's the only, it's not really complicated to do but you just have to do it in a certain order to get a good result. Let's first, we are going to turn it into the bobbin mode. Hold the button in. It stopped, it's green. We can open the door. We take the bobbin out. And we'll have to rethread the rabbit ears. Now, if you have other machines with the class 15, like I have several baby lock machines that take class 15 bobbins, this is a wonderful way, everyone, to use up partially used bobbins. Because if it's a class 15, and I'm, See, right there, I thought I had them both, and I just had that first one, that first hole threaded the first year. It's got to go through both of them. Otherwise, like before, it will not make a stitch. There we go. That's through both. About 10 inches. Pull out about 10 inches. Hold on to the latch. Insert the bunny tail at one o'clock. If you're looking at that bobbin case, rotate it counterclockwise and you'll feel that those the bunny ears click into its little groove. I'm gonna hold up the thread, lower the needle by my hand. Then I'm gonna sweep it. There we go. Now we'll move the hand wheel towards us. The thread is through the mechanism here. Shut the door. Put it into the thread cutting slot. 
pull the thread toward you, it cuts. And we're ready to go. So <clears throat> another thing I want to show you is this, though. Remember that specialty mode? Let's get it back under here. Yes, Donna, the more, the more you do it, the, and that's with anything, anything you do, practice with that old saying, and it's so true, practice makes perfect. I don't like using the perfect word, but in this case, practice does make perfect. And in the beginning, if you, when you first get the machine, you can be really, a lot of people are intimidated by the bobbin. Don't be. It's part of your journey. Enjoy the process. Sewing is, is supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, none of us would want to do it, right? So just enjoy the process. Okay. I'm going to set that back down to a one. And we're going to go a little bit further here. And there's something else I want to show you. So... Hold on just a second. I'm going to take me a piece of fabric. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Now, in this, you could use yarn, what I'm about to show you. This is some, I call it Sasha Co. couching, but it's not true couching. So watch this. I'm going to take a piece of fabric, and I'm going to cut it into about a quarter inch strip, okay? Check it out, everybody. And I'm not gonna be exact. It can be a little bigger, a little smaller. Think ribbon. This would be a good thing to do with ribbon. Give me a little, I'm gonna cut this piece off and show you what I'm gonna do. Now this, everyone, I love yarn. I'm a weaver and a spinner. I spin my own yarn. This is where you can actually <laughs> kill a lot of time. So this, what I just created here is a fabric ribbon, okay? So I'm going to set this back to three over here, my, my presser foot pressure back to three, okay? I have not touched any other setting, but this time I am going to set this to five and five. I could put it on five and two if I wanted to. These do not have to be the exact. You can set those anywhere in between. I'm going to use for this demo, I'm using five by five. And what I'm going to do now, I've already stitched up to here. I've looked. I've loosened the presser on my presser foot, the pressure on my presser foot. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it from the back of the presser foot up underneath it. There we go, to the back of that needle. I'm going to cross it in front of it and bring it up under the foot and then I'm going to take a stitch. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go move that up to two. That's just a little bit too loose. So what I did, it wasn't wanting to feed forward much, so I moved this from three to two. That'll add a little more pressure. And then each time I take a stitch, I'm going to cross this, this ribbon, the fabric ribbon I made. You could do it with any kind of ribbon or yarn. And I'm not going to wrap it around there super tight. But watch what I'm doing here. This is so much fun, everybody. Oh my gosh. What you're doing is creating a couch, a type of couch braiding. And you can make it as tight or as loose. If you don't make it super tight, it creates this really cool effect. I'm getting ready for the big reveal. I'm 
Let's do one more and then I'll come off, come off so we can get a look at it. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to raise my presser foot and pivot. And what I just created here is this really cool, and it's for firmly stitched down. If this, you, you can do yarn, you can do so many different fibers with it. The only limit is your imagination. Imagination. You can use like eight weight um, pearl cotton thread. Very creative. It is so awesome. And there is so much more I could show you and tell you about this machine. What do you think, Brian? <laughs> so another thing everyone should know about this is not only you can also use, if you have a baby lock serger, you can actually use some of the baby lock serger attachments, such as the plain hemmer, the the felling foot, the felling hemmer. You can use the belt loop binder. You can use, oh my gosh, you can use the binding attachments on it that are normally used with a baby our baby lock sergers. Those can also be used on the Sashiko. You can also, <clears throat> excuse me, there's also an extension table available for this machine. So if you like a larger surface, just it just a, looks like a, um, a so steady table. It's a clear, a clear one. So much fun. Oh my gosh. One more cool, just a one cool little thing. Check this out. Where do you keep the tools at? Well, there's a little slide out tray right here. And it, it holds extra needles and your screwdriver and lint brush and bobbins and all kinds of cool things. Super fun, super easy to use. I love this machine. It is will always be my favorite machine. And I have a lot of machines that are close to this. Woohoo! Awesome. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate that demo. You did a really fantastic job. Would you be able to stick around for another minute to answer some questions? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. What is the max stitch speed? Hold on there. Let me get my other camera up here. The max stitch, stitch speed. That's a wonderful question. So earlier when I had it all the way to the floor, this is not a machine that will sew like a thousand stitches per minute or anything like that. No. So I don't even think the, the stitch speed has been rated for this machine. However, it would probably do, depend, it really depend on the length of the stitch you've created. The longer the stitch, the faster it will go. But there is yeah. no set stitch, stitch speed for it. Well, it makes sense that something this specialized wouldn't operate at a high speed like a normal sewing machine. No, so, no, it would. Um, would you recommend it for patchwork? Absolutely. I do piece quilt tops on this machine. Hmm. Absolutely. And what's I really great about it, what's really great about piecing on it is if, you, if you've ever seen a quilt top that's been hand pieced, and you take it and you pull the seam apart a little bit, you'll see the, the how the stitches kind of crisscross down. It does the same thing with this machine. It looks like you've hand pieced it, looking at it from the front. I was fully expecting you to say no, so I'm pretty surprised. That's that's awesome that you can use it for patchwork. Oh, and it's uh, a very last... it's a very relaxing pace to piece on this machine as well. Yeah, it, when you were doing it, it felt very soothing to watch. Oh, it is. It's almost like a meditative state. You can get, have a little music going on. If I'm not on camera, I'd have music playing, maybe a glass of wine beside me. It's all good. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, one last question. There were scissors that you were using. 
during your demo. Are those Tula Pink? Yes. My Tula Pink scissors, love them. Oh my gosh. I'm a, I'm a Tula Trooper, everybody. I love my Tula Pink stuff. Fabric and tools and notions. <laughs> we love Tula Pink stuff too. All right, so that was the last question we had time for. Um, but Richard, before I let you sign off, do you want to stick around for the giveaway? Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so Richard, if you're not aware, we have been uh, drum rolling. Alex, if you want to come up and drum roll with us. So would you be down to do the drum roll with us? Sure. All right. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Irina Schumer, congratulations. All right, Irina, you are entered into the giveaway for the grand finale prize at the end of the day. Um, and Irina, you are Orphil Thread Kit number 25. Irina S. Okay. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We love that you Thanks. have been able to join us for multiple events with Sewing Parts Online. Um, and I have a feeling that we'll have you back at some point showing another machine. Well, I hope so, Brian. <laughs> yeah, right, and everybody, Richard, don't be afraid of this machine. Buy it. I go I will be live tonight at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on my YouTube channel. Tonight, I am making a kimono on the Baby Lock Serger live. What's your What's your channel so people can find it? To, to find my channel, just go to uh Go to YouTube and put in my name, Richard Tharp. The name of my channel is Richard Tharp Quilts. Super easy. Awesome. Well, thanks again for joining us, Richard. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, Brian. We'll see ya. See ya. All right. That machine is so cool. I'm really excited for anybody that snags it. You really can take your quilting or your garment sewing anything to the next level. Um, okay. So... We have a couple more giveaways to do, and then we are going to do a, our grand finale uh, sewing room makeover giveaway. Um, but before we do that, I have some recapping to do. Right, Alex, it is time for that, right? Yeah. I'm starting to get delusional up here <laughs> under these under these lights. Okay, so how this is going to work is we are going to... I've decided that we're going to do a few more giveaways. Uh, we were just going to do one more, but... We decided we have three extras. Why not just do more giveaways? So I'm going to recap day one. And then after I'm done recapping day one, we are going to draw a name. Then I'm going to recap day two, and we're going to draw another name. Then I'm going to recap day three, and we're going to draw another name. And then we're going to do our grand finale giveaway. So um, we will give you the surprise word for the day one recap in just a moment. And Alex, I don't know if we have enough surprise words, so I'm going to need you to make some up on the fly, okay? And we'll tell you what the surprise words are. How many buttons? We only have one left in the list, right? I've got one word left then. Okay, so we need one day one, day two, day three. We need three more after the one we do right now. So go ahead and put the next word up and then come up with three more words, okay? All right, so the surprise word is hashtag sewing parts online. So go ahead, start putting that in the comments, and I am going to recap day one. Okay, so on day one, first up, we had Courtney Govro. Uh, she came and told us about what it's like to open a quilt shop. After Courtney came on, we did uh, a demo from Miriam Coffee from Janome of the Janome Horizon Memory Craft 9450 QCP. Uh, if you weren't there for that event, this is a fantastic machine. It's got a huge throat space, beautiful stadium lighting. It, it is compatible with Janome's Stitch Composer program, which if you don't know what that is, it means you can design your own stitches on your computer and transfer them to the machine. Uh, one time we had Anne Hein from Janome on here, and she had designed stitches that looked like a KitchenAid mixer, and we thought that was really cool. It also has uh, the one-step needle plate conversion. It has the advanced AccuFeed Flex system, which is Janome's version of a walking foot. It's a really beautiful walking foot system. And uh, it also has ruler quilting mode. So if you're somebody who likes to do ruler work, uh, this machine has specifically a mode for ruler work. It's a really, really beautiful machine at a good price. MSRP on it is $5,499. 
The sale price on our website is $3,999, but you guys know that if you call in, you can get an even better price. And I actually have a little bit of a surprise for you. So with every event we do, we like to cut off the, the uh, special event pricing at the very end of the event, unless there are people who aren't able to get in on the phones. And it does seem like this time around, we do have some people who haven't been able to call um, or they've been waiting on hold to talk to our customer service reps. And we wanna make sure that nobody misses out on the special deals just because they can't get in because we close in an hour. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expend the, extend the special event pricing until the end of the day on Monday. Now we are not open on Saturdays and Sundays, but that's okay because it gives y'all the weekend to think about what you're gonna order on Monday. Call on Monday before five o'clock central to place your order. So just a little surprise from sewing parts online. Uh, I didn't even know that was happening and I'm really excited about it because I think that sometimes you just need a little bit more time to think about those big machines. So after we did the Janome segment, Arrow came up and we uh, did the segment on the Judy sewing cabinet. Now this is the entry level for the Arrow furniture line. It is small and compact, lightweight, easy to use, and it's perfect for those of you in dorm rooms and small apartments, or if you need some extra furniture for your backup machines. Uh, it's a really, really great price. Uh, it's an MSRP of $899 and a sale price of $449. But of course, if you call, we can offer you over the phone pricing, which is lower than the sale price. After the Judy, we talked about the... Kangaroo and Joey, which is the best-selling cabinet from Aero. Uh, really, really popular, fantastic machine, lots of storage. And right now, if you call, you get a free Kiwi with purchase. Uh, that's they Aero does this uh, deal only like two times a year. I think the last time they did it was in April, and I'm not sure if they're going to bring it back again. Uh, it's, it's a really great deal to get that free Kiwi with it. And also, it's not the only uh, cabinet that you can get it with. So with the Kangaroo and Joey, there's an MSRP of $2,499 and a sale price of $1,999. Uh, but there's other cabinets, two other ones that come with the free Kiwi, if you want something that's a little different than the Kangaroo and Joey. So Arrow also has the Wallaby cabinet. They did not talk about this one, but it is a fantastic sewing cabinet. It's got a space for your surgery. You can see on the left, it's got some storage, some thread racks, and you can see that nice big quilt leaf in the back. Uh, it's perfect for those quilters who are working on large quilts or uh, you know need to thread, store their thread and stuff. Uh, that one also comes with the free Kiwi. The last one that comes with a free Kiwi is the Aussie, which this one is the big bubba. This uh, Aussie is a fantastic piece of furniture. If you have the space for it, I say go with it. It also has that large quilt leaf in the back, plenty of storage, thread racks, all that good stuff. As you can see, you can have your sewing machine right in the middle. And if you need to surge something, just pivot to your left and use your serger. Uh, this one has an MSRP of $2,499 and a sale price of $1,999. But of course, call in for that special event discount. Arrow also talked about their uh, popular sewing chairs. They're the most popular sewing chairs in the country. They are fantastic for lumbar support. They come with some really cute designs and they just released a new color, which is all black called the Baroness. That's the one I think that I'm gonna get because I like the nice sleek black look. That has an MSRP of 449 and a sale price of 329. But if you call, we will get lower than that 329. Now we don't have overlays for the other two uh, that they showed us. Um, but we really, really enjoyed them. Uh, it was kind of a surprise that we, they were demoing these two machine, uh, two cabinets. The Eleanor, that's the one with the power lift. So you just press a button and it lifts automatically on its own. It has three different settings that you can preset. So you can do a sit mode, you can do a stand mode. If you like uh, a different height for your cutting than you do your sewing, you can preset it with three height levels that are perfectly matched to you. That one has an MSRP of 1,199 and a sale price of 899, but of course call in and we will beat that 899. The other one is the Kookaburra, which I think that's the one that uh, Amanda Mateo was talking about possibly getting. That is a massive cutting table with a height of 36 inches. It is fantastic for cutting those big projects. You know, instead of having to baste your quilt on the ground, you could do it right at your cutting table. That one has an MSRP of $1,599 and a sale price of $1,199. And if you call in, we will beat that sale price. All right, what's next? Our friend Chelsea Swindle from She Sew Seams came on and she showed us how to sew a child's dress. She used the Nora pattern on her cover stitch and serger machines. Uh, it's a really fun pattern. As she had mentioned, this pattern is not like normal patterns. It, instead of 
cutting it once and you're done, it actually comes with multiple sizes. So if you get it for your little one, you can keep making Nora dresses as they grow. Uh, that has an MSRP of $18.99 and a sale price of $15.99. But if you call, we will beat that $15.99. Now, after that was Linda Bertine, who is our new friend from Baby Lock. Fantastic educator. Really enjoyed having her on in the program. She came on to show us the popular Jazz 2 sewing and quilting machine. As I've mentioned, this one is one of the best sewing, best selling sewing machines in the country. And there's a reason why it's that 12 inch throat space but that low price. So if you've noticed, we've showed quite a few machines with large throat spaces, but they're definitely not even close to the price of the Jazz 2. So if you've been looking for something that's big enough to handle your large quilts, but you're looking for something that's a little, little more economical, I recommend going with the Jazz 2. It's a fully mechanical, easy to use machine, and every Baby Lock machine comes with 60 days free education. The Jazz 2 has an MSRP of $1,399 and a sale price of $799. Of course, if you call in, we can beat that price. Now, really quickly before I move on to the Allegro, I do want to mention, you know, it's right here down in the ticker. We have free financing available with approved credit, and we also have other financing options. We can help you to get into any of these, these machines if you'd like. Just call customer service, and they will walk you through that process. So Linda also showed us the Allegro, which is like the cousin to the Jazz 2. Uh, the Allegro sewing and quilting machine also features that large throat space, but unlike the Jazz, it has computerized functions, which is really nice. It has an MSRP of $1,599 and a sale price of $1,299. I can tell you guys that this is a fantastic machine because we have it back here in the studio and we use it all the time. It's a beautiful, beautiful machine. So if you've been thinking about either the Jazz or the Allegro, I think both are fantastic options. Stacy from So Steady came up and she showed us all her uh, her fall and winter tablets from West uh, templates, sorry, uh, for ruler quilting from Westley. Um, she also talked about the Wish Extension Table 2.0, which is the best-selling extension table on our website. It has an MSRP of $229 and a sale price of $199. Comes with that built-in uh, storage, which is fantastic. That way, you keep your thread snips and your embroidery scissors right there at machine at the machine and you don't ever lose them because i know you guys just like me are uh you you are sewing and you make a mistake and you're like okay i gotta grab my thread snips and then you're like wait where did they go they were just right here so if you have your storage right at your table you'll never lose it which is fantastic we also talked about the uh, regular extension tables. So these come in multiple sizes the prices on the on them vary by size but this is the most popular option uh, this is the 18 by 24, I believe, and it is a sale price of 109. And if you call in, we can beat that price. Now, So Steady Tables right now have a deal going on where you can add this two-piece suspension system if you for $10 if you purchase any sewing uh, So Steady Table. So really fantastic deal right now. They also have the Quilter's Angle Acrylic Table. Uh, that one is fantastic for smaller machines, and it's built specifically for quilting. So that, that ergonomic design makes it easier to quilt and feed your fabric when you're working on larger quilts. It has a sale price of $139, uh, as opposed to the MSRP of $159. But if you call in, we will give you a special event price, and you can add on that uh, two-piece suspension system for $10. Now let's get into the template she talked about. So there's a, quite a few options. Uh, there is the Quilting Holiday Sampler four-piece ruler template for uh, $49.50, normally $64.99. And the, oh, look at those cute candy canes. I really love this one. And I like that it has that little gingerbread. That's really adorable. Uh, there's also the four-inch Christmas motifs template. As you can see, there's Christmas tree, a star, cute little ornament, and that gingerbread man again. So that one has an MSRP of $69.99 and a sale price of $59.99. But of course, if you call in, we will beat that $59.99 and give you a better deal. So you can start making all of those adorable Christmas quilts. All right. Next was the West League Circles and Quilt on Quilts Wreath Template four-piece set, MSRP of $87.99 and a sale price of $60. I like that... Uh, you know, this is a Christmas theme set, but also like some of these can be like the one in the lower left corner can be used on anything really. So really fantastic, uh, versatile template ruler set. The last one is the Wesley Winter Collection template ruler set MSRP of $87.99 sale price of $60 even, which is satisfying, but uh, it's not going to be even when you call in because it's going to be lower and we're going to beat that price. So moving on to... The Grace Company, they came and showed us the diva of the Cunique 
long arm line. It's the 21X Elite with the 10 foot evolution elite frame MSRP of $13,799 and a sale price of $11,497. Really fantastic machine, beautifully built, uh, that huge throat space. We have the 16X Elite in our studio, and I can tell you the Grace Company's machines are so well built, easy to use, and their manuals that come with the machine are so thoughtfully written. Uh, it, it, we put our machine together and started using it with absolutely no experience, and we figured it out pretty quickly. Uh, if you're looking for a long arm machine, Grace is definitely the way to go. The 21 is probably the best option in terms of throat space, but if you need to keep the cost down a little bit. You can swap out the uh, frame for the hoop frame. This one is a five foot wide hoop frame. It can be converted into a ratcheting style frame and you can add two feet extensions in the future if you do decide you need a little bit more space on your frame. This one is an MSRP of 12,199 and a sale price of 10,497 with both the machine and the frame. And it both come with a free light bar right now during So Creative Live. Of course, if you call in, we will beat that $10,497. And if you are looking for something that's a little more economical, I highly recommend looking at the entry-level machine. It's the Cunique 16X manual long arm quilting machine. Definitely more affordable, will fit in all the other frames, and you can, uh, you can, advance as you go. So uh, if you decide that one day you want to put a screen on the 16X manual, you can. The Grace Company carries kits for that and they will help you out. If you need our help figuring out how to do that, we're happy to help you as well. Now, if you've been looking to get into long arm quilting, but you're just not ready to make that jump, I definitely recommend checking out the Cutie Frame right now because it's on a fantastic deal. The 589 is already a very low price. Typically, the Cutie is somewhere in the 600s. But if you call, we can beat that 589. And if you are not familiar with the QD, definitely rec I recommend checking it out on YouTube and seeing what it is, what it, do what it does. It's, it's basically either an entry level or a portable, depending on what your needs are. Entry level, for those of you who don't own a long arm yet, you can put your domestic machine on it. You can take it, put it on a kitchen table. You can purchase the legs to go with it. If you already own a long arm, but you need a, si a backup one to work on smaller projects like uh, your wall hangings or your table runners and stuff, the QD is a fantastic option as well. Um, and you can also save a deal on the QCT software. So Quilters Creative Touch 5 Beginnings Automated Quilting Software is fantastic. We have an MSRP of $4,999 and a sale price of $4,499. Of course, if you call in, you can get a better deal than that $4,499. Now, the next step up in the QCT line is the Q Quilters Creative Touch 5 Pro that comes with all of the features and functions. Um, that has an MSRP of $7,499 and a sale price of $6,499. Again, we can beat that price if you would like to call us. Now, if you already own QCT 5 Beginnings and you've been thinking about upgrading to Pro, you can get the upgrade bundle for $2,000 even. Uh, typically the MSRP is $2,499, but we will beat that $2,000 price if you call in before the end of the day on a Monday. Okay, after the Grace Company, we did a short recap on the Juki TL 2000QI, uh, 2010Q, and TL15, so I'll just go through them one more time. We didn't talk about the 2000QI, but in case you've been wanting to get into one of these machines, but you just can't bite the $999 on it, I definitely recommend checking out the, T, uh, the 2000QI quilting machine. It is a fantastic machine. It comes with just as much power as the other ones in the series. The only difference between this one and the 2010 is that the 2000QI does not have a speed controller. Uh, but that's okay. The, the TL series comes with a fantastic foot control that's easy to control. So if this is what's in your price range, I definitely recommend checking it out. Of course, if you call us, we can beat that $699. The next step up in the line is the Juki TL2010Q. Now that's the one with the speed control. This is a fantastic machine. I can attest to it myself because my personal sewing machine is right next to me. His name is Ted, and he's here to provide me with emotional support when I start to get nervous on camera. So that's why I brought him today, and also to tell you that I absolutely adore this machine. It's got so much power. It is so fast. It is a beautiful, beautiful machine. Now, it is typically $1,699 with a sale price of $999, but if you call in, we can beat that $999. Now, if you want to take a step up, I definitely recommend that you do, because as you can see, 
The TL15, which is a little bit more advanced than the TL2010Q, is the same exact price as the 2010. Now, that's a temporary deal. That's just a special that Juki did. It typically has an MSRP of $1,799. If you call in, we can beat that $999. So you're getting it for even less than you would typically get the TL2010Q for. So great, great deals from day one. Now, I'm going to take a sip of water and Alex, go ahead and pull up the giveaway tool. I need to go on vocal rest after this, I think. Drink some throat coat tea or something. Alex is, so funny thing, actually, you're not going to be able to hear Alex because I'm wearing uh, her mic because my mic died. So uh, she is, she's here with us on video, but Alex, you can just shout if you need to. All right, we're going to go ahead and drum roll for uh, Aurafil thread kit number 26. Go ahead. Michelle McIntosh, congratulations. All right, so you got Orphil Thread Kit number 26, and you were entered to win the grand finale giveaway at the end of the day. And my mic is slipping off me. Let me fix that. Okay, Michelle great. M. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we're going to do a couple more giveaways that weren't planned. So we don't have the word uh, to put on the screen, but we're just going to tell you what it is, and we'll put it in the comments as well. Got you got it? Got what word did you choose? Oh, you made overlays? Yeah. Dang, you were quick. That's exciting. Oh, I see what it is. That was a good one. That's a good one. You just wait. All right. What day are the, what day is it on? Oh, there you go. All right. So the next uh, surprise word for Aurafil Thread Kit number 27 is Little Rebel, which is very fitting because we learned about the Little Rebel today. So uh, let's start putting that in the comments and let's start recapping day two. if I can find it. Okay. So at first we had Ellie the quilter come on and she showed us how she makes traditional quilt blocks. Uh, she encouraged me to start working on my uh, flying geese game. And I think by the end of the year, I just might perfect it. Maybe I'll have to phone her for some help, but that's okay. She showed off the Panasonic cordless 360 freestyle iron, which has an MSRP of $153.99 and a sale price of $139.99. And also we carry the Panasonic QL1000 cordless 360 freestyle dry and steam iron. That is $187.99 MSRP and a sale price of $159.99. I saw a few people on Facebook uh, last night that said that they were tempted to get the Panasonic freestyle iron. I say go for it because it's a fantastic iron. It's cordless and we don't feature them in our events. In fact, this is the first time we've featured them. So it's not very often that we put them in the special event pricing group. So if you're thinking about it, I think now is the time to act. Dime came on next. Ashley Jones was the educator, and she showed us how to use these sticky hoops, which is a very special technique that you can embroider things that typically can't be embroidered on your flatbed machine. So you can do things like makeup bags and slippers. She even embroidered, uh, embroidered a postcard, a greeting card, and it was really, really cool. Now, there is a whole bunch of these hoops uh, in different sizes, and the prices all vary, so I'm not going to torture you by going through the prices on every single one. If you are interested in one, give us a call, and we will let you know what the pricing is. Next after uh, Dime was Grace Company. They came on, and they showed us the True Cut Cutting System. Uh, if, if you are not aware of the True Cut Cutting System, they're designed with channel locks, so there is a lip on the edge of the... Uh, ruler and there is a channel on the rotary cutter and they lock into each other so that you do not veer off to the right or left when you are cutting. So you stay straight every time. The My Comfort Cutter is my favorite. That's the one pictured in this overlay right now. And it is very comfortable to use. And I find that I don't have to use nearly as much pressure to get successful cuts on my fabric. Uh, one time Deb came back here and we were trying to make uh, a project to do live. And um, sh I was cutting out the fabric with a little rotary cutter and I was pushing so hard my knuckles turned white and she was like, what, what's going on? You're about to cut through the entire table. And I was like, oh, you're right. Well, I better switch to a better rotary cutter. I switched to the My Comfort Cutter and it worked fabulously. Uh, so we have the uh, True Cut Cutter Combo. This one comes with that cutter, the circle tool and a couple of exchangeable blades. The MSRP is $109.99 and the sale price is $92.80. But of course, if you call in, we will do a better price over the phone. 
We also have the true piece, the true cut four piece quilters combo too. If there were any of the combos that I would recommend going with, this is the one. I personally own all of these items except for the blade sharpener, which is next on the list. But that is the ruler that I use all the time. I love using the true the true grips uh, on the actual ruler, but I actually use them on my other rulers too. So. Um, I use them on my quilter select rulers and my creative grids rulers, even though those are non-slip, I find that the true grips work much better than any other ruler I've ever used. So that has an MSRP of $170.99 and a sale price of $145.80. But if you call in, we can beat that price. Now we also have the true cut master cutting collection. And now if you just want to go wild and get it all, I say, do it. You know, you only live once. So that has an MSRP of $350.99 and a sale price of $299.90. Comes with all of the rulers pictured here, the replacement blades, a cutter, the circles and straights, or the circle cutting tool, the blade sharpener, and a couple packs of the true grips. Really great deal here. If you call in, we will beat that sale price listed right now. The True Cut Travel Kit was the last item they talked about. A lot of you pointed out that, that bag is really adorable, makes you look real fashionable when you're going to your quilt, quilt guild retreats. Uh, it comes with all of the notions you will ever need, that fantastic magnetic bracelet, and you can store some of your presser feet and all of your other notions right in this bag. MSRP is $210.99, sale price is $179.95, and if you call in, we will beat that sale price. Now, I love seeing all of the machines. I love seeing all of the products, but there is one product by far that I think that every quilter should have, and that is Easy Precision Piecing by Skelly, Shelly Scott Tobish, my favorite quilter of all time. She is so experienced and knowledgeable, and she is so loving towards the art of quilting. And if you tuned in for her segment, you know that we learned so much, and I'm gonna tell you guys, that is only a fraction of what's in her book. I am going to, as soon as this is done, I'm grabbing my book from home and I'm shipping it to Canada because I want her to sign it just because I love her so much. So Shelly, if you're out there watching and you'll sign my book when you get home from your road trip, I would love that. So that typically has an MSRP of $32.99 and a sale price of $29.95. But if you call in, we will beat that price. Now, they also talked about their fabric treatment solution. Uh, this is the bundle with the solution and a spray bottle. It is an MSRP of $40.99 and a sale price of $34.99. Uh, if you call in, we will beat that price. So the next item was the Precision Piecing Starter Kit. Uh, this one comes with a small bottle of the solution and the comes with the Easy Hold Fabric Glue. It also comes with the pen that helps you get flat, flat seams. So I definitely recommend checking this one out if you've been struggling with your points and your corners and you're just trying to get precise, that glue helps a ton. That has an MSRP of $34.99 and a sale price of $26.99. And if you call, can you guess what I'm about to say? We will beat that price. Now, if you are somebody who struggles with wrist fatigue when you are uh, treating your fabric with starch and you want something that's gonna do all the work for you, I definitely recommend checking out this Acorn E Sprayer Combi Pack. It's their newest product. We have it back here in the studio. We love it. We use it all the time. It has an MSRP of $100.99 and a sale price of $85.99. And of course, we will beat that price if you call in. Now, you might be saying $85.99 for a sprayer bottle, but you can see that it also comes with that treatment. So it's kind of like a two-in-one. All right. After that, we had Michelle Umlauf from Sewing Machine Artistry representing Sulky and Clover. She came in and she taught us how to make thread lace. Uh, and we have some sales on the Sulky Blendables thread that she used to make it. So this is the Designer Crossroads Denim 6 Spool Thread Kit. It is $39.99 MSRP, sale price of $35.99, and it is qualified for the special event price. She also showed off the Flying Colors 30 Weight Blendables 10 Spool Thread Kit, MSRP of $64.99, and a sale price of $49.99. Uh, and look at those beautiful variegated options. I think this is a very elegant looking pack of thread. So we also have the slimline case with cotton blendables thread collection. As you can see, you get this and you get pretty much all of them. It really builds up your thread collection fast. So that has an MSRP of $307.99 and a sale price of $249.99. If you're one of those people that loves silky thread, I recommend getting this case or the next one to collect as many as you can at a special event price. So the next one is if you do not want to commit to the larger spools, you can try to get some of the smaller ones. It is an MSRP of $161.99 and a sale price of $129.99. Uh, 
and it qualifies for special event pricing. Now, she also showed us some Clover products that she uses to do half square and quarter square triangles. Uh, the prices on those vary. Customer service does have a list of all of them. So if you are interested in them, definitely give them a call and we can help you get them ordered. All right. What is next? I think that's everything for day two. Yeah. All right. So uh, now we are going to do a giveaway for thread kit number 27. So go ahead and pull up the giveaway tool and yourself, Alex, and we will drum roll. Ready, set, go. Shelly McLean, congratulations. Let's see, Shelly M. Okay, you are Orifil Thread Kit number 27, and you are entered to win the giveaway that's going to happen in just a few minutes. I am trying to keep these organized. 25, 26, 27. Maybe I need to go back to kindergarten and learn how to count. All right, so let's go ahead and recap day three once Alex gives us the next giveaway word. Do we need two words? We do, we do need... Two more words. Two more words. And do you want to also tell them about the Quillet Expo in Lebanon? Oh, yeah. I would love to. Yeah, so while you figure out that uh, that word, I'll talk about the Quilt Expo. So, um, so sewing parts online um, doesn't... What happened? <laughs> you got it, Alex? All right. So sewing parts online uh, doesn't do expos very often, but we decided, you know what? We missed them. So we decided that we are going to be at the original sewing and quilt expo in Lebanon, Tennessee, which is just outside of Nashville on October 5th, 6th and 7th of this year. We are going to be there representing the Grace Company. So if you uh, need to check out some Grace long arms and, and test drive them for yourself, come on down and hang out with us. If you just want to check out what's you know want to meet sewing parts online people uh come check us out we're gonna have a lot of fun uh melinda is going to be there as well from the grace company so if there's any specific questions you've wanted to ask uh melinda virtually on these lives but you just haven't been able to uh you can come meet her in person you can come hang out with alex and i we would love to meet you and hang out and talk sewing for a little bit so if you are anywhere near nashville i highly recommend uh, planning a trip to Nashville for the original sewing and quilt expo. If you need more info on that expo, just Google OSQE Nashville and it'll bring you to their website and you can see all about it. All right. Is that the, is that the next one thread? Yes. All right. So you guys see it. The next surprise word is thread and that's for Orifil thread kit number 28. Let me write that down so I don't forget it. All right. Start putting hashtag thread in the comments and I will recap day three. Okay, ignore that sewing parts online. So the first product that we saw was a really beautiful machine. That is the Juki Kokoshi DX 4000 QVP sewing and quilting machine. At the beginning of Kelly's segment, I made a joke about how you could watch videos on it because it was so advanced. And she didn't think it was very funny. And I was like, well, that's a bummer. And that's because I realized halfway through your segment that you can actually watch videos on this sewing machine. It, it, it's absolutely insane. It could do so much more. It has the interchangeable feed dogs, which I've never seen anywhere, has the built-in walking foot. And that walking foot is adjustable. That is insane. It's got a beautiful seven inch display screen. It's got beautiful uh, knob functions that you can see the tension on your screen and everything is, it's all automated. It's a really beautiful machine, huge throat space. I think that if you've been dreaming about getting into uh, your, you know, the, the machine, the dream machine, this is the one for you. Definitely call us and check it out because the MSRP is 5,999 with a sale price of 3,999. So that's $2,000 off already. If you call us, we can beat that, that $2,000 discount by even more. So definitely check it out if you are interested. All right. So the Grace Company came on and they showed us the Little Rebel, which is going to shake up the sewing and quilting industry this year. It is a piecer. So you can sit and you can straight stitch sew and piece your quilts. It is a sit down quilter with built in stitch regulation. So you can sit down and do free motion on it. If you want to throw it on a frame and use it as a long arm, you absolutely can because it does all three things. Now, the Little Rebel has a huge throat and heart, harp space. So the throat space is 13 inches. The harp space is 8 inches. Huge, can fit king-size quilts, anything that you dream of in this machine. 
And it, there are three different packages I'm going to show you. The first package is the Little Rebel, just a little rebellion package. It's the machine and a My Comfort Cutter rotary cutter. MSRP of $3,499, sale price of $2,499. And if you call, we can get you a better deal. Now, I do have to let you know the Little Rebel is on pre order only because it has not been released yet. We are expected to get a, our first shipment in the last week of September, beginning weeks of October, somewhere around that time frame. So it's going to be shipped out pretty soon. And we only have a few left from our first shipment. So, and we don't know when the next shipment is going to come. So if you're thinking about getting this machine, I would recommend at least considering ordering it during this event to A, get the special event pricing and to make sure you get into the first shipment because it could be a couple months after that until we get our sec second shipment. So... Also, the Little Rebel package number two is the Shaking Up the System package. Now, that is the Little Rebel with a whole bunch of fun swag. MSRP of $3,219, sale price of $2,750, comes with a cute little coffee mug, the My Comfort Cutter, True Grips, some stickers, a ruler, and some finesse thread that matches the machine. Really great price on this. If you call in, we will beat that $2,750 over the phone. The next step up is the Little Rebel Full-On Anarchy Package. It has an MSRP of $3,732 with a sale price of $3,189. Now, this one is the Little Rebel and the brand new Cutie Breeze Quilting Frame. As you can see, this is a really cool frame. They've, they've really improved upon their original Cutie. I believe they said that it's easier to assemble as well, which is pretty awesome. And as you can see, it also has the handlebars on the carriage, which I think is going to be... A definite improvement. It also comes with all the swag that the last package came with, and you can add software to it. So you can add automation to it if you'd like, and that makes it the full on Anarchy with QCT6 package. Now, QCT6 is going to be their new software system for automation. It's going to be more affordable, more accessible for those of you who just don't have the budget right now to in invest in one of those 21X with all of the QCT5 and all that stuff. This is going to be a fantastic option for you if you're trying to say budget conscious. So uh, sale price of $4,999 with that QCT6. And if you call, we can beat that price. Now, next after the Grace Company was our friend, Amanda Mateo. Uh, she is the queen of Jelly Roll rugs. She showed us the Jelly Roll rug patterns. We carry each one of these for uh, $9.99 sale price. Now these are all separate, but they're all the same price. So we put them all in the same picture. You can pick which one you want to do, or you can do all of them if you'd like. And definitely reach out to Amanda on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever, for some tips and tricks, maybe even take her class if you would like. Uh, and you can also get the Clover Fabric 2 Maker. It has an MSRP of $19.99 with a sale price of $16.99. As you saw during her segment, this really does half the work when you're first making your uh, fabric tubes. So really fantastic tool. We want to thank Amanda very much for putting us onto it. We're really excited about it. And I think a couple of us back here are going to start making some Jelly Roll rugs soon. If you want to make some Jelly Roll rugs, you Amanda suggested that for your first Jelly Roll rug, you should get pre-cut batting because it, it makes the process a lot easier and enjoyable. And then when you if you decide you want to make more, then you can start getting some regular batting and cutting it yourself. But we carry some batting options. This one is the two and a half by 50 yard, two and a quarter by 50 yards, MSRP of $44.99, sale price of $34.99. But we also have the two and a half by 25 yards. Now that one is an MSRP of $16.99 and a sale price of $13.49. And with all of these items, you know it, we can beat that price over the phone. Next was Chris Marchini. And we are super excited that he came on to show us about crumb quilting and to talk about his patterns that we are now officially carrying. So Chris has a bunch of patterns. Check them out on the website. If you just type in Chris Marchini in the search bar, all of his patterns should come up. If you need help finding them, call our customer service. They will get you a good discount on them. And you're supporting Chris, who is our friend. And uh, he is running his, him and Amanda both are running their own small business. And we love to support fellow small businesses. So after Chris was... Uh, Richard from Baby Lock, he was showing us the Sasha Co machine. As you can see, it's a very fantastic specialized machine that creates mimics, hand quilting and, and embroidery. Beautiful. You can do so much with it. I was not expecting him to show us about how he does smocking with it. I had no idea that it could even do that. And according to Chelsea Swindle, smocking is the way that you win a uh, blue ribbon at the state fair in Tennessee. So should, maybe Chelsea should think, because I know her birthday is coming up. So if she's watching, maybe she should think about getting the Sashiko so she can finally get that uh, blue ribbon at the fair. 
So that has an MSRP of $3,999 and a sale price of $2,499, which is a killer deal right now. But if you call and you want that Sashiko machine, we can get it to you cheaper than that. Woo. All right. So we have to do two more giveaways. So let's do uh, the hashtag thread, which is or uh, Orphil thread kit number 28. And you guys know the drill. We're going to drum. All right, Alex, you ready? Set, go. Oh, no way. Mary Jo Carlton. I told you, Mary Jo. I knew it. So if you, you don't know who Mary Jo is, uh, Mary Jo won the uh the long arm frame during christmas in july and we just talked the other day via email because she was needing some help with her bobbin case which by the way mary joe I, I hope that customer service was able to help you out and i said wouldn't it be crazy if you want another long arm that if that if that's the case then she needs to go out and she needs to buy us a lottery ticket a powerball ticket when she wins the powerball she can buy all of us little rebels all of us sashiko machines Anything she wants to do, Mary Jo, if you win the lottery, help us out because you are clearly one lucky lady. So, Mary Jo, let me write your name down. Congratulations. Congrats, Mary Jo. All right. So, you are number 28. Let me put that in order so I stay organized. And we have the last one, which is number 29. So, we are going to go ahead and use the same. You want to just use the same word since people already entered and we're about to do the finale giveaway anyway? No. You have another word? Okay. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what's happening right now? Oh, that's so sweet, Alex. <laughs> that's very sweet of you. Well, if you want to win or fill a uh, thread kit number 29, you're making me blush right now on, on camera. Oh my gosh. What if my mom sees this? I'm so embarrassed. Okay. So uh, if you want to win or fill thread kit number 29, go ahead and put hashtag we love Brian in the comments. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys about a minute to start putting that in. Alex, do you want to pull up the number tool that we talked about? Do you know where it's at? Oh, it's in the YouTube It's uh, chat. Man, so while we wait uh, for Alex to pull it up, I'm sure she'll find it quickly. What's everybody's weekend plans? I am moving starting tonight, actually. So I am, <laughs> I don't want to do it. So if any of you want to come help me, I would be more than happy to, uh, supply you with some coffee and maybe order a pizza or something. Uh, so I'm going to start packing my apartment tonight and I have to be out by Monday by the end of the day, I believe, but it's not all bad because I'm getting some more square footage, which means that I have more room for my sewing stuff. In fact, uh, that's the reason why I'm getting a bigger apartment is because I just ran out of room for all my sewing stuff. So I hope some of you guys can relate. This is not true at all. That's that's not what happened. That is, I wish that's what happened, but all right. So uh, Alex, do you want to set it to one through 29 and let me know when you're ready to pull it up? I am ready. You ready? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. Okay, this is so exciting. Okay, let's take the overlay down. And um, so this is the moment. So there are 29 spool, uh, uh, there's 29 kits next to me. And one of the names on this is going to win the grand prize. Oh, wait a minute. No, we have to do the giveaway tool for number 29, huh? Oh, yeah. I skipped oh, yeah. that. that okay, do that first and then we'll do it. Susie Gabbard. Okay, Susie, you are number 29. Good luck, Susie. I'm just putting Susie G. All right. So, ooh, this one has music in it, huh? So we we should still drum roll, I think. You think, Alex? Yeah, I think I'll play the music. I think so. Let's do it anyway. So let's see who's the winner. Number one through 29. Three, two, one, go. Twenty-two. Who is that? <laughs> that is Carol L. Congratulations to Carol L. 
Carol, you are the winner of the sewing room makeover worth over $10,000. Bam, 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 bam. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, all of the winners, I'll recap for you one more time on how to claim your prize. Go to www.sewingpartsonline forward slash sew creative live. Click the giveaway section or scroll down to the giveaways and fill out the form. Submit all your information. Carol, we will need to talk to you on the phone at some point next week to get your information, verify who you are, and we will start getting your stuff shipped out. Everybody give us about a week or two uh, to start getting everything shipped out. And I just have a few more parting things I want to say. So first thing, we uh, would love if you guys showed us some support by subscribing to our YouTube, following us on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. We would really, really appreciate it. Um, if you want to uh, be a part of our community on Facebook, it's a really big group of loving people. There's about 4.5 thousand people who are ready to help you out if you need it. So just find the Sewing Parts Online community and request to join and we'll get you added. Now, with all of that said, I have to say a couple of thank yous. So first of all, thank you to my uh, co-host, my best bud, Alex, for being so fantastic running the back end. You did such a great job for your first time running things in the back. I am so grateful and proud. You did really, really good. So thank you. Thank you. So a few more people I have to ask. I made a list. I feel like it's like my, my Oscar acceptance speech. Um, so I do have to thank uh, Rachel and Evelyn and Natalie and product specialists for answering everybody's questions and uh, staying on top of us. We really, really appreciate everything you do for us. Uh, customer service for taking phone calls all day. You guys work so incredibly hard and I have been in your shoes. I know how hard that job is. You guys do fantastic. Every single one of you do. Darla and Ashlyn, thank you for keeping us fed and making sure we weren't having mental breakdowns back here all week. You guys are amazing and awesome. We love and appreciate you. Jeremy, thank you for being a fantastic boss and, and allowing us to put on these events and allowing us to donate all of these thread kits. We really, really appreciate you. We love working for you. Um, and thank you to George and Terry who own the company. We love Sewing Parts Online and we're so glad, glad that we get to share our love for this company with everybody who watches our So Creative live events. I also want to thank uh, Haley, as she is our product ordering manager for keeping everything in stock so that people don't have to wait for the things that they ordered. You are so hardworking and we love and appreciate you. And I hope you know how grateful we are for you. Amanda, uh, thank you for the uh, lozenges for my throat because after this, I don't think I'm gonna be able to talk for a week. I'm really, that was very sweet of you to hand those to me. And I wanna thank last but not least, uh, everybody in the warehouse who is gonna be working really hard for the next week to get everything shipped out in a timely man manner. You guys do a fantastic job. We are so grateful for you. And last, last but not least, in fact, probably most, thank you to everybody who tunes in and supports us. You know, we're, we, we are appreciative that you even spend five seconds watching and we hope that you get something out of it. Even if you don't want to give away, even if you don't buy anything because it's just not right for you. I hope that you guys get a sense of knowledge out of it and a sense of inspiration. I hope that our presenters have inspired you to try new things, to up your sewing and quilting game. Uh, and I, I just I really appreciate you. So that's all I have to say. Other than that, Alex, is there anything else we need to do? And just special pricing has been extended. Special pricing has been expended, extended until Monday at 5 p.m. Central. So if you're still on the fence about a few things, call us. You have until Monday at 5 p.m. Central. All right. I think that's it. Let's go get a pizza, Alex. Well, that's